The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Titles and trophies are on the line at the U.S. Juniors and Senior Championships in St. Louis. With the rest day and a chance to recoup on the horizon, players left it all on the boards. Christopher Yu maintains his lead in the juniors with his third straight victory. The standings are knotted up in the seniors, with Larry Christensen holding on to a narrow lead. Despite stellar play in the girls' juniors, Sophie Moore Suzuki has been uncatchable and unstoppable, winning her fifth game in a row for a full point lead. Front runners have formed. Will they pull away? Round six of Sensational Chess, coming up next. Welcome back everybody to day six of the U.S. Juniors and Seniors Chess Championships held at the St. Louis Chess Club. We start the day in the gorgeous forest part as we are waiting for the players to arrive. After the rest day, the players are re-energized and recalibrated, ready for another day of battles over the chessboard. Let's go to the studio and start today's action. Hello everyone and welcome to the beautiful city of St. Louis, host to three national championships, the girls championships, the juniors, and the seniors, brought to you live from the St. Louis Chess Club and Scholastic Center. I'm Yasser Serwan, along with Dorsa Derek Hi, Sharmi. Yasser, how's it going? Wonderful, it's great to see you back. Thank you very much. Lovely to call the action with you and Christian today. Yes, three national championships, wow. <laughs> Wonderful, right? Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. Yes, the first five rounds featured some amazing fighting chess, it's just great to see. And we have three clear leaders in each of our championships. Dorsa, do the honors. Who is leading the girls, the standings? Well, five out of five, amazing performance. Sophie Morris Suzuki is just having a having a tournament. Perfect, <laughs> perfect. Jennifer Yu and Talia Cervantes tied for second, but a whole point behind. Remarkable. And in the girls. Uh, pardon me, and in the juniors. <laughs> we do have a girl playing in the juniors. So. Yes, we do, Carissa, yep. <laughs> yes, uh, well, Christopher Yu is having another wonderful tournament, four and a half out of five, uh, followed by Mishra, three and a half, and Andrew Hong with three points. So and, a lot of fight. Yes, indeed, and in the seniors. In our seniors, still a lot of stuff are going on. <laughs> uh, but Larry Christensen is uh, in clear first with three and a half points, um, followed by, well, we three people uh, tied for, or fighting for a second. Exactly. Uh, Dimitri Gurevich, Vladimir Kopian, uh, Maxim. Delugi. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. And our format for these three national championship stores. Kind of a classic format. Uh, it's a 90 minute for the first 40 move, then people get 30 extra minutes, which is really nice. Right. And uh, then there's also the, the classic 30 second per, per um, first move. move and, you know, just extra Increment. time. Increment, yep. No draw offers before the 30th move and... The traditional scoring system. Yes. One point for a win, half a point for a draw, no points for a loss. And we've had five rounds of play, but now we have four more. Are we remaining scheduled or so? Well, it was a very nice rest day for you yes. guys. <laughs> sure was. <laughs> and then we have round six, seven, eight, and nine. Boom, boom, boom happening back to back and from today until, well, Saturday. Potential playoff for round nine, but the way this tournament's going on, going on I don't really know. <laughs> exactly. And we're very fortunate to have Christian in studio. Christian, good to see you, my friend. You're going to drill down on our tournament leaders. Good to see you guys. Uh, welcome to the show, Dorsa. So far, the tournament has been filled with thrills and spills, and these are the best juniors and legends of American chess that we are calling uh, the action from uh, the St. Louis studio. So far, a lot of exciting games, but let's take a look at where the leaders are standing in all three sections. And we're going to start with the U.S. junior girls section. We have a dominant player 
player in that one, Sophie Mori Suzuki, the only perfect player remaining in all three competitions. Well, what else can you say about that scoreline? Just five victories in a row. Dominant performance today. She will be playing Ru Yang Yan tomorrow in round number seven. That is the big clash against the rating favorite, Jennifer Yu. A big opportunity in round number eight against the struggling Anne-Marie Vela. And in round number nine, well, that one is a big clash as well. Definitely an interesting road ahead for Sophie Mori Suzuki. And there you have it. There she is getting ready for her sixth potential victory. Wow. If she, <laughs> Do we have a Fisher Prize in this tournament? Because I know um, we do have in the U.S. Championships. Unfortunately, not for this event. But boy, that would have been nice. Five out of five so far. I have to say this young lady is just simply impressing in this event. The best tournament of her life. And let's take a look at where our leader is in the junior section. We have... Christopher Yu. Well, he started off with a winning round number one. After that, a tame, a draw with the black pieces. But boom, boom, boom in round three, four, and five. A hat trick of victories. And right now, he is one point ahead of his nearest rival. And let's take a look at his road ahead. Well, a difficult road ahead in the junior section today. Justin Wang will have the white pieces against Christopher Yu. After that, he will be placed facing in round number seven, Brodsky round eight. I, this one is a big, big clash against the surging Abimanyu Mishra, the youngest grandmaster in history. And round number nine, a potential opportunity for him with uh, the white piece against Carissa Yip, who is unfortunately struggling in this event, only one point out of five. And also we have the legend so let's take a look at where our leaders stand in that one and this is our leader this is larry christensen well he picked it off where he left it last year he was the finalist in the tie breaks last year against kaidanov and right now he is the leader after the half a point three and a half out of five up to this point and let's take a look at his road ahead in the last Four rounds today, a big clash against Vladimir Akopian, the rating favorite going into this event, the newcomer, only 50 years of age, and this one is going to be a big clash. Round seven against Novikov, eight against Shabalov, and round number nine against Mr. Gurevich. And as you can see, all these players are having quite good tournaments. This is definitely not an easy road ahead. And there she is. That is Carissa Yip with her good friend, Rochelle Wu, who is uh, ready to face also another good friend, Jennifer Yu. Guys, we have so many amazing games today. We sure do. And Dorset, yeah. do the honors, lay the table for our viewers, and tell us about the pairings for the girls. Let's go for it, yes, sir. Well, uh, we do have a few interesting matches coming up. Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, let's take a quick look at uh, Sophie Mori Suzuki's game because I have to say I'm really hoping for six points for her. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not hoping right? for six points? She's just having such a nice blast. And she's paired against um, Rui Young Yan. Right. Which is, um, I mean, she's having a decent tournament, two and a half out of five, but nothing compared to Sophie. Uh, Jennifer Yu is hoping not to see Sophie <laughs> score six points. She's at four. She's uh, playing Rochelle Wu, uh, who we just saw on the screen. And Alice Lee, Alice Lee, pardon me, against Talia Cervantes. Those are our big matchups. And in the juniors, what are our big matchups for the juniors? Well, uh, I believe Christopher Yu is our... Uh... Tournament Our, leader, yeah, yeah right? up against Justin and, Wang. Yes, beautiful. And then we had um, Mirsha, Mishra playing versus... Dagupati. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be another <laughs> that, key matchup. Absolutely, absolutely. And in our legend, the seniors, yes. who is Larry Christensen playing? Well, one and only Vladimir Yakopian in our... Absolutely. Uh, legends and now Vladimir is entering the tournament as the highest rated. Yeah. So for Larry Christensen, this will be a stern test. Max Delugi on board five against Joel Benjamin, also very good, and Nick DeFermian up against Dimitri. We you called know, him Dima Gurevich. And I here is our say, legends. Um, I was looking at Larry's score um, scoreboard, and it was like. Draw, draw, win, win, draw, draw win. win. You know, it's technically time for a win, so exactly. he's got one. <laughs> and right. 
There are lots of fights, lots of fights, and what are they fighting for, Dorsa? Well, uh, in our girls' section, they're fighting for, uh, they're fighting yeah. for a whooping twenty thousand dollars and six hundred. First place does get a, a six thousand dollar payday. Nice. And and there is also, uh, yes. Well, let's let's take a quick look at our uh, uh, sure well, forty thousand dollars yeah, surprise 40, for 40. them. Uh, with the first place having twelve thousand dollars and uh, second eight thirty five, yep. and it's really nice because you know the tournament that you play, and even if you're still having a terrible tournament, you still go home with a thousand dollars. Exactly. So, now, and of course, they also get a scholarship. Or right, something. both both girls and uh, our juniors do get a very nice ten thousand dollars scholarship to the institution of their choosing and this is a very generous donation that is funded by the Duane Barber Foundation and the U.S. Chess. And I just got to say it's Duane and Susan Barber Foundation because uh, Susan is a wonderful uh, wife of Duane. She's very, very supportive. And in the seniors, uh, how much are they fighting for? Dorsa? I think there's a scholarship here. Yeah, no scholarships for the seniors. <laughs> but there, the first place does go home with a $20,000 payday. Very the nice. Total price fund is $75,000. Woof. The 13,000 second, 10,000 third, and round six has started. Let's begin with the game between Ru Yang Yan, and she's up against a Miss Perfect, uh, Sophie uh, Moore Suzuki, and we have a nice. open Sicilian. Yep. And still uh, things are to Maroxi. be determined after C2, C4, Maroxi bind. I have to say, yes, sir, I do <clears throat> play this as white, and I really did like it. Mm -hmm. It can get a little um, edgy, but it does feel like a, a nice choice for white. Now, what do you think should be the tournament strategy for Sophie? She has five out of five. Do you think she has to, do you think like, what's her mentality? Is she gonna like push, push to win, get the full perfect score? Well, normally speaking, six out of six, you're thinking, yeah, like, <laughs> let's go for it. Right? But on the other hand, she actually has two chasers. Yes. Who are only one point behind her. And it's more like, well, let's secure victory first. This was always my thinking. Let's secure victory first, and then we can talk about legendary, you know, <laughs> things. And so I would say, if I'm in uh, Sophie's short shoes, I'm simply trying to uh, get a solid opening position. And the Maroxi bind, although I must say it's with the move A2, A3 yeah. included, I'm not, I'm I'm not a big fan of this uh, move A3. To, but I mean, I think with pawn on e6, because g6 didn't happen, maybe that's why um, she doesn't feel the need to play the b3 early on. Mm -hmm. But. Well, there's no attack yet uh, against the pawn. So the move bishop to, uh, uh, from f8 to e7, by the way, this again, very solid move. Uh, no, no, no problems there. Uh, I always liked the systems where you played an early d6 and mm -hmm. knight. Uh, to d7 to e5. I was always very provocative in my approach with black, but nothing, bishop e7 is perfectly fine. Black is preparing to castle, and I think white will so shortly castle as well. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that yep, one. I just and wanted they just to. Did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanted to go to Jennifer uh, versus Rochelle for a quick second. Whoa. Okay, this is a very sharp. Um, English system with G3. Yeah. E, e, we, we saw a number of games from the Candidates Tournament, which was uh, featuring uh, Ding, Laren, and Nepo from the very first round one. And that was with like Knight uh, C2, Knight E3, E2, E3 preparing, Knight C3 by Jennifer, and she doesn't want to see the Queen going to the h5 square. So we might see, for example, knight f6, knight c3, queen e5. There's also so many moves. The flexibility of both players' plans are really broad at this point. 
f2, f4, d2, d3, bishop, g2, b2, b3. Lots of lots of plans for both sides. We'll keep an eye on that. And just to uh, build up on uh, that one, yes, sir, because there were some very important STEM games that I want to bring to your attention. Sure. Uh, one of them is a, and with, we have some uh, Windows pop ups, forget about <laughs> that. But I thought it was a nice commercial. <laughs> we have there. some Windows commercials uh, <laughs> on, on this specific uh, tablet monitor, however you want to call it. Now, the big STEM game is the one between Shanklin and Karyakin. And actually, mm -hmm. Karyakin, after this game, which Shanklin won with the white pieces, was in a must-win situation at the World Cup. And we know how that ended. He actually won that game and eliminated Shanklin later on in a tie breaks. But still, from a theoretical point of view, uh, this particular line was revived by Sam Shanklin with the white pieces. He put a lot of pressure in this line. Bishop to g2, bishop to c5. A lot of pressure on the knight on d4. I want uh, to kick it backwards, right? Gain some more space with the black pieces and also potentially open up the d file for my upcoming rook. White says, no, no, no. I'm going to keep this knight in in the center, play the move d3. Let's see whether this is going to come on the board. And by the way, these are not the only moves. Nevertheless, right. it does seem like this is the main line and what we could potentially see on the board. Queen to d3, castle, castle, rook to d8. It seems like black is developing nicely with an attack on the knight on d4. But now white can force, uh, almost force this queen trade with the move knight to f3. Now, if you go to queen to e7, unfortunately, after queen to c2, it does seem like white has the more, more harmonious piece placement in the position. a3 followed by b4 could potentially come as well. We see a bishop landing on b2 and creating a lot of damage on the long diagonal uh, in the position as well, especially with the queens still on the board. So after knight to f3, rook takes d3, knight takes c5 was played in that game, rook to d8 and b3. And despite the fact that this position looks quite equal and it doesn't seem like white has a lot of pull, it's not as easy to find placement for your pieces as black. Knight to a6, sure, you can put the knight on a6, but where is it going to go after that? And my plan is quite easy as white. I'm going to go bishop to b2, rook to c1, rook to d1, and then I'm going to make use of my pawn majority on the king side as well as in the center. And if I manage to get the king to e2 and then start pushing my uh, e-pawn down the board, well, your pieces, especially the knight on f6, might find it uncomfortable to uh, find a good position. So definitely an intriguing situation right now. And we do have an early d3, so not bishop to g2, allowing the move bishop to c5, but immediately hooking this pawn, as you were mentioning. Yes, sir, white has so many ways. F F4, F3, D3, Bishop to G2 right. with a move D3. This one, I have a feeling, is going to be a very complex battle. And I have to say, you are talking about strategy. What is Sophie Mori Suzuki's strategy? Well, Jennifer Yu's strategy is to win. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have any alternatives at uh, this point because she is trailing by one point. So she really wants this victory. And tomorrow, let's not forget, she plays against Sophie Mori Suzuki, but she plays with the black pieces a big opportunity for her to strike with the white pieces in this game. And uh, we know that she will take the necessary chances to do so. Absolutely. Thank you, Christian. I'd like to turn our attention to the juniors for a moment. And we have uh, Justin Wang. He's up against uh, the leader, Christopher yes. Yu. Knight f3, very nice start, d5. And where is Alejandro when you need him? <laughs> c2, c4, d4, and we have a um, a bank, a reverse Benko Gambit, something that he specializes in with black. You're getting it as white, and after uh, c5, d2, d3. I once played against Victor Korshnoi, I was black, and I have played in this position f6. He played against me a3, e5, g3, and I took the pawn. Hmm. I just asked Victor, okay, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, a pawn up, you prove your compensation. Benko Gambit players will love White's position. I took the pawn, hung on, and had a very nice victory as black. So we'll see if Christopher bites the bullet and captures the pawn in that one. 
And I was just going to say that I wonder, Liang. And Christopher like, was on the white side of uh, this position just a couple of days earlier, right? Against yeah. Balaji. Yeah, exactly. Last round, instead of d3, he played the move e3, the Blumenfeld gambit. Exactly. That turned into a Blumenfeld. That was what an encounter that was. I saw. What that surprised? Mm -hmm. What surprises me, uh, though, uh, Yasser and Dorsa, is that Justin is actually spending some time right now. Why is he doing that? Isn't he prepared for this? Uh, if he isn't, then he might get himself in trouble because we know uh, these positions are very double-edged and easily black could take over the initiative. Well, we do have D2, D3 by Justin, so it's now Christopher who's thinking, should I be capturing this pawn right away? Should I be playing F6, Knight, uh, F6. Uh, one of the things that's really interesting about the Banco Gambit is oftentimes both players are content to leave the tension. Normally speaking, white does not like to capture on c5 because after it takes uh, these types of positions, black gets to develop bishop takes c5. Funnily enough, white would rather not have his A2 pawn. Like, it, just put it off the board uh, or something to that nature. So, interesting that Christopher is waiting. I wanted to say that a wonder Liang, who yes. started yes. so badly, he's playing the white side of a Karo Khan. Very topical. The black side. The pardon black me, side. black side of a very, very topical Karo Khan these days. I remember I was the uh, ladies' uh, coach at the Olympiad. <clears throat> in Baku, and um, Katya, Katya Nemsova had a wonderful victory as white, which Robert Hess had prepared with her that very morning. And I was sitting there fretting the whole time, worried about Katya's position, and she had it all worked out. Nice. A very, very nice. uh, awkward uh, situation for both players. It looks very strange for black to be playing these uh, H6, G5 well, uh, I mean, advances. To the best Please. of my understanding, <clears throat> this is all preparation from black side, and exactly. um, David is thinking pretty deeply about it. So, actually, <laughs> pretty deeply about and it, so squeezing see. the head. Right. So, um, I mean, I've played crazy the G5s and H5s and F5s here and right. there, which were all prep, and it worked out. So, I feel like so, as long as um, a Wonder has his prep, uh, memorized yes <laughs> I think this will be a fun game for us to see how it turns out absolutely and I wanted to throw uh, this one this open Sicilian oh, over to Christian <laughs> yes uh, because uh, we saw it earlier in the tournament this uh, night off with Bishop e3 e5 and this early h3 g4 Christian mm -hmm. uh, it was becoming quite topical these days and tell us what the theory about this double-edged line reveals. It is, and uh, they're also extremely complicated because black has so many setups that uh, he can start with. Bishop e7, bishop e6 is one of them. Bishop e6 followed by knight to d7, leaving the bishop on f8 is another one of them. Bishop e6 with the knight coming to c6 is another one of them. They're so confusing when you look at these lines. I remember I tried to study, uh, uh, to study this idea when uh, I believe it was a book by an Indian grandmaster that came along a couple of years uh, ago. I'm okay. trying to remember what the name of uh, him uh, was, but he was recommending this and also analyzing uh, and giving some notes from Vishwanathan Anand. So definitely a very topical line. This h3 g4 is becoming as well white. Now, h6, it does seem like right now we only have three games in the database, and it was Seturama. Now I remembered because I actually saw his name here <laughs> with the black pieces, nice. with the black pieces, which right. is quite intriguing because uh, that book is from uh, was from White's perspective. This one is a game between Ganguly with the white pieces and Seturama with the move g5. Only two games uh, at this point, Sankalp, Gupta versus Petkov as well. So we see a lot of Indian players. It's it seems like mm. uh, this is uh, some sort of uh, national tendency <laughs> that's uh, going on right now in India. Take on g5, we expect knight takes g5, makes a lot of sense. Taking mm. advantage of the fact that you already committed the bishop from c8 to e6, and now I'm going right. to immediately put as much pressure on it as possible. So knight takes g5, knight to c6 seems to be the best move, and the only move that was played in uh, this position, the engines are saying somewhere around equal, 0 0.3, 
and nothing significant. <laughs> Knight takes e6, f takes e6, and now the question is how are you going to target this pawn on e6? Also, how are you going to stop me, and you do have to stop me, from playing d5, because if right. black manages to get d5 in, get the pawns rolling down the board, and that's going to make it very uncomfortable for my pieces, the bishop on e3, we'll have to move the knight from c3, we'll have to move, you cannot allow that to happen. You, that's why bishop to c4 seems to be the main line, stopping the move d5, and at the same time, attacking the pawn on e6, queen to d7, and once again, the battle continues, rages on uh, for this important square, d5, queen to d2, followed up by castle, bring another attacker or defender, the way you want to uh, look at it, on the square, d5, very complex battle is going to be ensuing in this one, but I have to say, whoever is the player that is better prepared and knows better the, po the following plans, well, it's going to have a much easier time in this very complex position. Thank you for that, uh, Christian. Uh, I just have a question about, because uh, like these G4s are so up and coming in Night Dwarf in the past few years. Um, what about the Rook G1, G4 idea? If that wanted to happen without H3, when, you know, how would that be? Any recommendations, any yeah. thoughts, feelings? Uh, in, in which exact position? Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be knight f3, but it could also be... Um, like with knight e3? You could go like knight e2 if you want knight to e2? go like yeah. rook g1. G4. So many Those different are, uh, Yeah, so lines. because if you want to get g4, you either have to like get rook g1, g4, or h3, g4. So... I guess it's just a matter of style, honestly, but... Well, it's sort of like... Okay, let's go back, for example, to... Uh, this position, uh, the, the the starting position, <laughs> the knight or, and you know, for so many years, bishop g5 was like considered the most important mm -hmm. move, yep. and uh, before that move became the most important move, f2 f4 oh, was I've also uh, considered uh, to be crucial with the idea of getting in an early e5. Now, much much later, the English. Uh, players began the English attack with bishop e3 and f3. But in this exact position, after a7, a6, h2, h3... I played that a while. <laughs> uh, ...became back popular. And yes. then Alexander Shabalov, amongst other names, played rook g1 and tried to get in what you were saying. Yeah. Uh, that, that's where they got in the rook g1, g4. And I tell you, uh, the, the white players have been breaking their heads on the night off. And I think I was just seeing the world champion Magnus Carlsen even like just saying, I give up. I don't know what to do. I'll play A2, <laughs> A3, anticipating B5, B4. But uh, the vagaries of fashion and opening theory are such that uh, you really have to be incredibly sensitive, uh, attuned. And in, I'm just amazed that the top grandmasters can keep up with all of the developments, because it's just sort of like you could get lost in, a, in, a, in an ocean of mm -hmm. variations. We do, by the way, have knight c6, and I liked uh, what you're thinking was something like maybe just takes, takes, and isn't it time, you know, like <laughs> right? to remind yeah. uh, that we do have an open uh, G file, but again, these moves, d6, d5, as Christian was mentioning, uh, you gotta keep that square uh, fully controlled because, you know, black might be yeah. able to use a z6 pawn. Sorry, wanna, uh, no, I was. Uh, please. So like, well, I used to play close Sicilian forever because I just love playing a four. Knight c3, uh, yeah, four g3. Yep, yeah. yep. And then you know I was starting. Okay, I'm growing up. I need to start playing a little bit more uh, nice chess. So I started learning knight f3. Why lines did the, the actual <laughs> open Sicilian? And um, the first thing I was told is black wants d5. Your job is to block that. And I was like, okay. So all I'm <laughs> the main thing that I try to um, create my openings around was to stop that d5, and that's just something that's because of the pawn structure. Something that's going to just keep happening and happening and happening all throughout the game. So. Right. Yeah, and that uh, it, especially with the double pawn on e6, uh, the fight yep. over that d5 square is such that you're it, it, it's it's. That's the theater, of uh, 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 the theater of the battle, is who controls that square d5. Uh, again, um, well, let's ju let's jump over to Christian for just a moment. 
Well, guys, uh, it cool. does seem like we have an answer uh, as to the question, Jennifer. who knows the theory better and the nuances of the position better in this game? Between very important game, by the way, between Jennifer Yu, who is one point behind Sophie Mori Suzuki, and Rochelle Wu. And it is Jennifer who knows the positions better because Rochelle played this move after the move D3. And by the way, I really like this move uh, D3 because, for example, if you don't take on D3, Take on d3, queen d3, bishop to c5, bishop to g2, would transpose to the line that we discussed, that right. stem game between Shankland uh, and Karyakin from the World Cup. But if you don't take on d3 and you say, okay, but I can also play bishop c5 first, right? And right. we're going to get into something very similar. No, because I don't play the move bishop to g2. I have this extra wrinkle in the position. I can take on e4, and I actually like this position is much better for white, because right now it does seem like I'm forcing you to take on c3 and solidify, cement my knight in the center like this with this two pawn c3 and e3. I really like white's prospects at this point. Not only that, but this bishop very nicely opened up and the b file is nicely opened up for my rook. So it seems like all my pieces will be finding their ideal squares. So d3, bishop to e7 after quite a thing was played in the position, but this unfortunately doesn't uh, correspond to the requirements of the position. The requirements <laughs> of the position was to attack this knight as fast as possible with the move right. bishop c5 and then follow it up with rook to d8. You can no longer do that with the bishop on e7. Not only that, but the queen and the bishop are sort of fighting, competing for the same squares, especially this square e7. You would love to have the uh, configuration bishop to c5 and the queen on e7. The queen, for example, and it's going to get attacked. You know that once these pawns get off the board, I will have the move f4 coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. So the problem is that with the bishop on e7, queen to c7 more or less looks to be the right square for the queen. But imagine a rook coming on the c file and then all sorts of uh, jumpy knights, knight b5, knight mm -hmm. d5, taking advantage of the fact that this pawn on c6 is pinned. So. The way I look at the position, this move, bishop e7, despite the fact that the computer is not giving a huge edge, is an inaccuracy. And let me show you a couple of moves later on. Bishop to g2, by the way, was played. e takes d3. Now you can start with castle, or you can just simply pick up the pawn. I think the cleaner version is to just pick up the pawn on d3. Castle, castle, right? And we got to pretty much the same position that right. we had in that stem game, but with the bishop on e7, not bishop on c5. Now the problem is, you're going to have a very hard time attacking this knight on d4. What you don't want to see as black is this move c6 to c5. I understand you're kicking my knight away, but you're leaving behind so many weaknesses. Specifically, this square d5 is going to be a weak, uh, big weakness, but also check this out after you play the move c5. This monster on G2 is going to control the long diagonal and create severe dangers on that diagonal for black. So most likely you will have to get the bishop to C5 at some point, but that's just a loss of tempo. Right. And we know that that loss of tempo will matter in uh, the long term. So I'm definitely seeing Jennifer Yu in pole position to take the advantage out of the opening. now. Let's take a look, and by the way, this is a huge gain for both of these ladies. You see, Rochelle Wu is not that far behind. Right. She's on three points, sole fourth position, with a win over Jennifer Yu. She would uh, equalize her scores. She would jump to four out of six. Sophie Mori Suzuki is still in a dominant lead, one point ahead of Jennifer Yu. But let's not forget, Jennifer Yu and Sophie Mori Suzuki are meeting tomorrow in a huge clash. Now, let's take a look at what's happening in another one of uh, the contenders in the junior girls section, and that is Talia Cervantes, who is also on four out of five, also exactly. one point behind the leader. And <clears throat> we talk a lot about strategy going into this, not yet championship rounds, but still we're past the midpoint. So there, each and every point becomes extremely important. Now, what's Talia's strategy? One point behind the leader. Well, with the black pieces, you have to go for a victory, especially against Alice Lee, who unfortunately for her has been struggling in uh, this event. Let's uh, put it uh, mildly, has been struggling because she lost three games. So B6, this is the position she chose a Grunfeld, uh, Talia, that was, but uh, it does seem like it did not surprise Alice Lee. Right now, Alice Lee has one hour and 33 minutes. And Talia, despite the fact that she's a pawn up, 
she has only one hour and 13 minutes on the clock. And I have to say, this is a pretty well-known position. And uh, I'm a little bit concerned about Talia's knowledge of what she needs to do right now. B6, if I remember correctly, is not the correct continuation. Right. Um, I'm more familiar with like no, queen d5 no. and queen d5 exactly yeah. yes queen to d5 followed by queen to a5 right. put some pressure on uh, the square c3 and then cover the b file but not with the move b6 but with uh, the maneuver knight to d7 followed by knight to b6 the knight would be perf not perfectly placed but quite well placed on b6 defending the weakness on a c4 as well as potentially getting ready to jump to a4 and create some dangers in white position. Uh, this move b6 uh, doesn't meet the requirements of the position once again, doesn't meet the requirements of uh, the theory right now either. So it does seem like white after this move b6 got an advantage and Alice Lee potentially knows it because she is very well versed in uh, theoretical knowledge and she does seem to be surprised by this move, b6. Thank you for that, Christian. Uh, your commentary of doesn't the, the, the move doesn't fit the requirements of the position really makes me smile because uh, when I was starting chess, the Soviet players, they would annotate games. And that was like their uh, favorite phraseology. This move doesn't fit the requirements of the oh, position. My. I would always think to myself, what does the position require? <laughs> yeah. you know, like, 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 let's throw that right back at them. Uh, turning our attention to the game between Larry Christensen, our tournament leader in the Legends, yes. versus Vladimir Okopian. Uh, we have a Nimzo Indian um, Rubenstein with E2, E3. And, you know, it's funny for me that so many players like putting their knight on E2, where I really just, for me, I find it to be the more passive square than knight f3, but knight e2 certainly is a mainline variation, d5, and we're gonna get one of those uh, classical isolated queen pawn positions oh, yeah, after the move at castles. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly, but uh, queen takes d5, now the queen's gonna go, I don't know. Uh, oftentimes it will go home to d8 or even to a5. How about the other way? To h5? Yeah. Okay. Um, normally speaking, on the h5 square, strangely enough, it can actually become oftentimes a, a target, mm -hmm. especially, I like it when the knight is on f3, I don't like it when the knight is on e2. So for example, after queen h5, we'll start with the move a3. Okay. And just to invite you to go backwards. All Let's right, say. we'll say bishop d6, I want okay. to check <laughs> Yes, exactly. And this is kind of what I mean by uh, being a target in the ah. sense that of knight takes. Uh, and maybe you're, you're, you're happy to trade queens and maybe you think that this is not that, in, like it's even, Stephen, but I have a little yeah, bit exactly. more activity at the end of the day. You can always liquidate that pawn in that scenario. <laughs> Exactly. Another, uh, if you don't like a2, a3 is white, you could also play the move Ooh. queen c2, which oftentimes leads to ideas of either knight g3 or knight uh, f4. But I'm sure queen h5, by the way, is perfectly playable. Perfectly playable. It was playable. just played. And in fact, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, your choice, Queen okay. H5. Uh, very uh, nice. I just play this as black, so I always like had like, okay, do I want to go where? Do I want to go? Do I want to go H5, A5. Well, let's go H5, so I can try to get something happening exactly. on that D4 pawn. But it's not. I mean, it's not my dream position to be honest. Uh, right. But yeah, the pieces like if I could have the bishop from C8, honestly, anywhere else. I would I would love this position, but mm -hmm. it's like I need like five more tempos to get my pieces out. <laughs> right. So that's just I don't know. It feels a little uncomfortable. And so far, I believe uh, Larry has been blitzing out, so he's been very comfortable with the it? opening. Uh, it's so one twenty eight. On uh, so yeah. So one. small on my screen. I think uh, uh, the producers are doing their best to. To, to accelerate my blindness, you know, like they put the, the, the names in like this incredibly small script.
trip. Uh, uh, that or Leonard has, you know, an angst against me. Leonard oh. just sets up my <laughs> computer and just uh, oh. nails me. I uh, want to turn our attention to the game of Gregory Kaidanov uh, versus Alexander Shavala. No D5. Because, again, this is a, a page right out of the very recently played um, Candidates Tournament, C2C4. I think it was Richie Rapport. I'm going to have to ask uh, Christian to help me out on the two players with Bishop F4. Who were the, the two there, players? Uh, I, I believe it was actually Duda who played this against Richie Rapport That's with what the I mean. white pieces. Yes. And he actually got a he got a crushing good, advantage. Good, good position. He ended up having this break c5 that. Uh, I, th that did I it think for it him. was a d6. Right. Or no, was it knight to e7 first? Because I know he was uh, he was not finding the right plans. That's for sure. Uh, right. Or at least he wasn't aware of what exactly the right plan is. And at some point allowed this idea of uh, c5. c5. Yeah, right. which was very exactly. powerful. Very, very powerful. It was, uh, and again, that was uh, Duda versus uh, Richie Report. We'll keep an eye on that game because, again, uh, Gregory Kaidanov uh, doing quite well. I also wanted to just check in on Maxim, another one of those players who yes. is tied for second at the seniors. Uh, I am seeing a trend. <laughs> a lot of the, a lot of our t tournaments um, top players in the standing, they are having a nice timing, because Maxim has full full time uh, an hour and a half. Um, and playing quickly. Yep. And when we're going a little bit farther, it's Joel Benjamin who starts to think a bit more, a bit more, mm -hmm. and a little bit farther. One more move. Yeah, and here Joel Benjamin has been thinking for. I want to say 15 minutes at least. Right. Yeah, so. Very normal, uh, practical approach by White here. Uh, the problem with black setup is actually this knight on c6. This knight on c6 is misplaced. You're right. And uh, you really want to mm, uh, deal with that. And it, you, you, you could return the two bishops and just, you know, end up trying to fight and find a better square for the knight. But what black wants to do is kind of punish white for giving up the two bishops. So a, a move like, let's just say, I'll put down bishop e6 for just a moment, and something where... Bishop e6, bishop d6. I know, I want to play bishop d6, <laughs> right? but I don't want to encourage knight b5. Oh, yes. If I play bishop d6 and I get knight b5, then I'm afraid... I will just lose the two bishops yeah. and I'll be slightly worse with a Carls Carlsbad pawn structure. So I may end up having to play a move like a7, a6, okay. a move that uh, Magnus Carlsen, for one, will have no trouble playing as black, and then put the bishop on d6. If I can do that with black, then I'm kind of a happy camper. I think I've uh, solved all my opening problems. But uh, Joel Benjamin, you were saying, really is slow, slow play at, at the moment? At this moment, yes. After bishop e2, if you make that one yes, move. Bishop I'm e2. seeing Joel Benjamin. Well, nope, he, kept, he did not no, think that, that, that That's actually <laughs> yeah. our analysis. Um, I, he I, does. He ha, he's uh, down to an hour and nine minutes, so he's been thinking for a good 15 minutes here. Okay. And yeah, if that pawn was on c6, this would be a dream position. <laughs> exactly. Easier but, to play. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll keep our eye it's, on the left. Legends, what have you been looking at, Christian? I'm looking at the, the junior section, guys, because uh, in my opinion, this is another big, big game of the round. There is Andrew Hong versus Carissa A, because Andrew, we know, with uh, the white pieces, has been spectacular in this event. Not only that he won his first uh, two games, uh, but um, he got advantage, crushing advantage, out of the opening in all of them. So I was definitely having my eyes on and see what he's going to bring to the table, because Carissa decided to go with the King's Indian defense. Once again, a very aggressive approach. And she got completely crushed by a wonder Liang with this idea of bishop to e2 followed by an early h4. She had no idea how to respond to that one. But mm -hmm. it does seem like for this one she came prepared because she blitzed out her moves up to this point. She was expecting h4 and I'm sure she had something prepared for that. But Andrew said no. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that line. I know you've spent a lot of time and uh, pretty much solidified your repertoire against the move h4, so I'm going to surprise you first. I'm going to go bishop to e3. This is the move that he played, and after already an immediate thing, a six-minute thing for Carissa, she played the move c5, so she did not expect the move bishop to e3. Right. d5, e6, 
And now we see a transition from a King's Indian structure into a Benoni structure. Now, mm -hmm. I myself, am, uh, I am a Benoni player. Nevertheless, I do believe it's quite a suspicious line, quite a suspicious <laughs> opening, and I do not recommend it to any of my students. If they do want to play it, I'm going to be like, okay, you do your research, you do your uh, theoretical um, um, research work. as well, work as well, but y you should expect that you're most likely going to have worse position out of the opening. The question is how much worse? And let's take a look at what happened. Bishop to e3, knight to f3, take on d5, take on d5, knight to g4 once again after a seven minute thing. And I see this move and I know it's not the right direction because I've never seen this move knight to g4 in this particular setup. What black needs to focus on is finish his development first. And then you can start focusing on all uh, of these gimmicks with knight to g4 followed by knight to e5. So first you have to get the knight to d7 in order to be ready to do that. Knight to g4 was played, bishop to f4. Now if you go knight to e5, I'm just simply going to take, mm -hmm. if I manage to change the pawn structure mm -hmm. from uh, this with the pawn on d6 to this with the pawn on e5 and a nice defended passer on d5. This strategically is just a very bad version for black. The best black can hope for is to somehow fly a knight to d6, set up mm -hmm. this, uh, this blockade and then play the move f5. You're very far from achieving those goals and you have clear problems that you need to solve first. This pawn on c5 is a big problem. By the way, the engine is saying plus 2.5 at this Ooh. point. So it gives white a decisive advantage, crushing advantage. So after bishop f4, she played the move f5. But now I just simply take on f5, which he did, Andrew did. Uh, and I'm looking at the position and I'm seeing a very bad version of the Benoni. Not only that, it's supported by the engine's assessment as well. It already gives a plus 1.1 and not with a move that I would be thinking about. In general, when you take on f5 uh, as white, you expect either g takes f5 or bishop takes f5. Right. Rook to f5 seems to be the best move by far to support this idea of knight to e5, but you know this rook on f5 is going to be in the way, and at some point it's going to get targeted by my bishop coming to d3. I don't like the prospects of black's position. For example, if you go bishop takes f5, I'm going to simply make a natural move. What is your knight doing on g4? You right. would love to get it to e5, but knight d7 to support it doesn't work. You're I'm losing the pawn on d6. If you go rook queen to f6 to defend the pawn on uh, d6 and then prepare to move knight to d7, well, unfortunately, after h3, once again, if the knight goes there, I take, take, and I change the pawn structure. Once I change the pawn structure and this one becomes a uh, passer on a d5, I'm going to get it to d6. I'm going to have a crushing attacking uh, potential after the knight lands on d5. I, I really don't like what Black is doing, what Carissa is doing. Not only that, but it doesn't seem like she understands the position. And uh, this is quite concerning right now. This doesn't really feel like her style as well, in, in my experience with her. But um, just talking about... It feels like her style, you're saying? It doesn't, no. It, it doesn't, yes, no, yes. No. And I mean, to be honest, I mean, w when you're kind of at the, what did you call it, the cellar? Yes, <laughs> I feel in like, the cellar. Yeah, yeah, she does. She does. She has no chance of you know winning the tournament. So right. I feel like she might just be like, "Well, I've been thinking about this opening. Let's go." Just you know, your spirit is kind of crushed a little. You're just not really having a good tournament. So I, uh, I don't know. I just, I feel bad for her. <laughs> I was well, it's a again. bad opening. It's a, yeah. a full stop. I mean, if yeah, you're going to play, uh, I think it was David Bronstein who first said that if you play the King's Indian, it's like you're giving your opponent pawn advantage. Yeah. Well. So, I mean, that's like pretty strong, right? <laughs> um, okay, and, and but then we'll if you see. go for a, a transition into a suspicious Ooh. Benoni, then you give your opponent a pawn and a half advantage. Pawn and a half, <laughs> right? Okay, so uh, she has recaptured with the bishop, but all the problems that you've been pointing out about this pawn on d6, about the fact that the knight on g4 uh, is not going to land comfortably on the e on the e5 square indicates to me that Carissa's just got uh, outplayed in the opening. Yes. This is not a good position for her. And after either h2, h3, even castles, 
you got to be concerned about knight d6, uh, pardon me, uh, knight b5 hitting d6. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but she's going to play in the Olympia team, right? Yes. So, well, great. So this could be, you know, a nice, like, hey. That's like what a, we've, we, yeah. we, we spoke about, that it was a training for her, that yeah. she wanted to, uh, a stiff challenge to get her ready for the Olympia team. I'd just like to break away yes. from these games for a moment to go back to the game uh, between Ru Yang Yan and uh, Sophia um, Suzuki, because I've all, <laughs> my whole life, I, <laughs> I, I, my whole career, I want to say, I have played as black um, the hedgehog, uh, which yeah. is what she has on the board. And I've been doing this stuff, well, just, the hedgehog. I, the so hedgehog. You, so you're a Shuba enthusiast. Well, his, his book came out much later uh, from uh, my um, praxis. Uh, there are I had a coach in uh, my early teens whom uh, with I only trained the hedgehog. <laughs> this is I, I was going to his place and yeah. for three hours he was just showing me hedgehog games. One after another. And I had to play them and I have to say it was quite depressing for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> because I was always on the defense, always waiting for white right. to find the right way to strike. And uh, if white, by the way, doesn't do anything, it, what does black do, right? If I manage to contain your breaks with b5 and d5, then we're just going to be sitting around and shuffling the pieces, and white can at any point just simply offer a draw, and you cannot do anything about it, right? This is what concerns me about the hedgehog. What is your opinion of the hedgehog? Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my view, uh, there was a very fam famous game. It was actually played on the radio uh, in Sweden. Wow. Yeah, That's between yeah, Played between on radio. Yeah, between Ulf Anderson and Bobby Fischer. Oh. That's okay. why you should remember <laughs> it. Bobby Fischer was black. All right. In a, in, and what uh, what uh, um, Christian just said? Do you play for d5? Do you play for b5? Bobby Fischer in such a position played king h8. Oh my. Yeah, and let's just put a move on the board for just a moment. King h1, and he played rook g. <laughs> Just shuffling a little. He's playing for g5. Mm. I like it. The, the, the famous attack, yeah. g5, yeah. knight e5, g4. And Bobby went on to win a very, very famous game. Another approach that black has in this position is attached to what you just described as the break d6, d5. And the way to do that is you play bishop back to d8. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I'm just going to put a move on the board just so I can exemplify what I'm trying to suggest, is the bishop goes to c7. And it's funny, you're cramped, but you now suddenly have this threat. Let's make another poor move for white for just a moment. And this is the break that you do. You, you, you want to take on h2 with check. You're threatening to take twice on e4, and things of this nature. And then finally, the third approach you can take is to play for this crazy b7, b5. Oftentimes, you throw this move in. Mm -hmm. You then play d5. You sacrifice a pawn, and uh, that's an approach. You do not play. You let me repeat myself. You do not play what Sophie played. This is what right. Did she play? Yes, exactly. Oh. Rook okay. e8, knight right. b3, h5, huh. h4. And uh, that that seems to be her preparation. Because right, because she's blitzing is... it right out like that. But okay. all my career, like you would never run your pawn <laughs> to h4 because it begs the question. Could I play queen f2? In, uh, Tickle the pawns are a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm a pawn grabber. I want to capture either the h4 pawn or the b6 pawn and ask you, why did you encourage this type of play? Now, I understand that if you defend the b6 pawn and if I take, you could capture this pawn. Fair. Like, like Because that is a, um, you win your pawn back and it's a tempo against my queen. But very, very often, this pawn on b6, well, you know, it could get tickled. Uh, and I think, well, we have some moves. What do we have? Bit, yeah. We so do. Bishop it went f4. Happened fast. <laughs> After h4, bishop f4, knight e5. Yes. Oh, she played bishop f1, h4, bishop f4, 
95 say, takes, I... queen f2. Similar idea, double attack. Why I wanted to give up my dark square bishop, I'm not, I'm not sure. What, what were you about to say, Dorsa? Oh, I was going to say, after pawn h4, the first thing I want to do, I just want to, I just want to play pawn h3. Just stop that pawn movement and just kind of be like, all right, g3 is weak, but what do you want to do with this? Well, that's the problem. I think that uh, you're inviting <laughs> the, the, the approach of knight to h5. Oftentimes, when you're cramped in these uh, Maroxi bind, um, if you all you need is really one good square for your pieces, the knights, black knights, are often on the wrong squares and they 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 conf they, they fight uh, for the same square. Yeah. The knight on g three is actually but, a pretty good. But yes, please say it. Even if do I, it. <laughs> even if knight h five. Yes. I, I'm trying to go by your logic of let's eat pawns. Yes. <laughs> bishop g five. Bishop to g five. Because if bishop pawn. takes, I took the queen. Okay. I eat H4. All right, just a second. Let's see what we've got here. Bishop to g5, eat pawns. <laughs> nice. Um, let's go knight g3, take, take, queen oh, g5. Oops, queen sorry. Queen takes d6 could also queen be Queen takes a, d6. I was a, thinking at the end yeah. of the day, so yes, you're right. Queen takes d6, queen g5 takes h4. Uh, but at the end of the day, what I was thinking I was going to try to do was take your pawn on c4. I see. So that there would be essentially lots and lots of trades. Now, at the end of the day, you might be happy. You might be thinking as white that you've got some advantages and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, let's just catch up with the players yes. and see where they're at. Uh, because this was a very uh, surprising approach by Ru Yang. She played bishop f4 Oops, takes. Spoiler yep. alert. <laughs> bishop f4 takes, takes queen f2. And something similar. I, I wouldn't have been that eager to give up my dark square bishop. Uh, Christian, help us out here. Has this line uh, been played before? I was looking no, uh, I, I was looking at the database and they were indeed following uh, a couple of games and with bishop, h5 bishop to f4 indeed was the novelty wow and this move surprised us as well because right. knight to e5 bishop takes e5 it doesn't make a lot of sense to just simply give up your dark square uh, bishop, bishop just like that so Bishop to, after h3, knight to h5, bishop to g5, exactly what you guys were looking at. This is indeed uh, one of uh, the main uh, propositions in this particular line, a game wow. between Oleksienko and Mohammad, uh, <laughs> played in 2016. And uh, this one was quite an interesting uh, game because I was looking through the engine's recommendations and they didn't seem clear to me at all. So for example, bishop takes g5, queen takes g5, knight to g3, if you take on h4, I just simply take on f1, pick up the pawn on c4, and it's quite um, easily um, visible the fact that black has no problems whatsoever. So you have to defend this pawn on c4 somehow, and that is to just simply sidestep this attack of my knight with the move bishop to d3. Mm -hmm. And now the complications are starting to pile up after specifically this move b5. And I have a feeling that Sophie was very well prepared. Uh -huh. Now. The way I look at this position is maybe from an objective point of view with the best moves for the next five, six, seven moves, white is going to be able to have a slight edge. But if you make a slight inaccuracy and there's ways in which you can uh, make a bad move at every single corner because right. you see this, there's a lot of pressure on c4. If you take, I have queen a7 coming. Oh. This is another consequence of this move, b5 opening up, this threatening uh, diagonal towards the king, king to h2 and now knight to e5. You feel it coming, right? Now I have a checkmating threat in two knight moves. Takes knight takes f3, three, followed by queen to f2. So, for example, if you just take on a6, yes, good luck. Let's sign the score sheets yeah. and go home. <laughs> take on uh, f3, queen to f2, checkmate. So you have to be very careful, and this is what Sophie Morris Suzuki was banking on with her preparation. I really like what she did in this one. Bishop to f4 surprised her, but knight to e5 makes a lot of sense. This is what we have. Bishop to c6 is indeed on the board. And by the way, the best move 
And it does seem that after bishop to c6, first of all, you cannot take on h4 because knight takes e4 is just going to give me a crushing advantage. Um, I, I regain my pawn, but also the pawn structure is much better. I have the two bishops. They're opening up. Your king is very unsafe with the two bishops on the board. It's not looking good. You cannot take on h4. And after bishop to c6, look at the clocks, guys. There's a 30-minute difference between the White's box. clock and Sophie's clock. One hour and 31 minutes. She hasn't spent a single second on her moves. In fact, she gained what? one minute. <laughs> Confident play by our leader, Sophie Mori Suzuki, and look at her posture right now. That's I know what I'm doing. You don't. Right. Well, Bishop F4, giving up the dark square bishop voluntarily, that's... Um, well, sus. Not, 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 not what, uh, what you do with white in these Before positions. Before we move on, I just wanted to mention, because it's always funny to uh, have an extra um, language handy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, um, the hedgehog in Farsi is juge tiri. Again? <laughs> juge tiri? Juge tiri. Okay. That, I just wanted to bring that up. Cause, Hedgehog? Sounds like yeah. jujitsu to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you do jujitsu. Nice. That's pretty good. Oh, what about in Romanian? Is there a specific name for a hedgehog? Aric. Again? Aric. Nice. So in chess, like, would you just say hedgehog or aric? <laughs> I, I say hedgehog. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I don't think in Romanian anymore. I actually think mostly in English nowadays. Nice. Yeah. Right. It took me maybe five to six years of living in the U.S. to start thinking in, in the language. Exactly. Nice. Uh-oh. See, the problem is I'm, I'm late again. It so. does seem like we need you. Dorsa, we need your prediction. Uh, I will go see. with Sophie. I'm going to uh, do see. Christopher no, Yu. No, can, no. can I change my prediction, guys? <laughs> <laughs> can I change my prediction? Yeah, right. <laughs> Moderators, no, nothing. Uh, for the girl, for the for the ladies, I I I have to say Talia. She's just one of my dear friends. We're on, we were on still chess team together. I, I just. For me, it's Talia, even though I... I sh girl, well, she's doing quite well in the event, so that's not so a bad one point out of, uh, <laughs> And you're joining two others, and, and it's about friendship, too. Yes, I mean, you know, you, you, you got to keep see, that oh, uh, friendship oh, going. Oh, yeah, I thought, uh, yeah, I, I think Alejandro also had Talia, his students, he kind of had to... Ooh, the boys. I kind of want to go with Mishra, because, like, you know, he's the youngest GM, he's still right. on the top. He's, he's not, he's half a point And you point? would make... Uh, Join me on the dark side. Oh. You, you, you would make Christian <laughs> happy to it. have a little company there. Well, let's All go right. for it, Christian. And... Um, in the ladies? Uh, pardon me, in the, in the legends, in the seniors? <laughs> I really want to go with Larry. But of course, you're welcome. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, come on, he's leading the tournament. He's up uh, against a Kobe in today. See, yeah, but I've also, I also, I really game. like his personality. I remember watching some of the interviews, I was like, man... He's awesome. So I know. I, I think I know. I'm going to go. And since nobody has picked him, let's go for it. Good choice. Good choice. Not Absolutely. Not Thank not you. Thank I'm going to just jump to the game of Jennifer Yu for a second because oh, I think uh, I think you described the, the whole setup for white, for Jennifer very well, and how black has to be very, very careful. Uh, the position's even. Mm -hmm. Materially speaking, the position's even. But there's an imbalance. The imbalance is that white has a king side slash center majority. Black, on the other hand, has a queen side, pardon me, a queen side majority. Now, what uh, Christensen mentioned, Christensen, Christian, I apologize. <laughs> I, after Larry, I, I got thrown <laughs> off. Uh, black oh. does not want to u utilize her majority early, yes. like right now. She likes to uh, bring it later to the end game. The problem is if you move your majority too soon, this oh. bishop is doing is a monster bishop. Yes. So what uh, Christian said, pardon me, uh, just a second, let me just get these uh, moves on. I don't know why my, my screen is uh, jumping everywhere, is that from Jennifer's point of view, she's going to try to use her majority. She wants to play f4, drive the queen out of the center, which mm -hmm. she did, and then she wants to follow it up with a natural e3, e4 bishop, and suddenly white looks like she's material ahead 
because of the imbalance. She's using her majority. Black is not able to use hers. So it's very easy as black to literally fall behind and almost it gives an appearance like you're down you're down material mm -hmm. because white's yep. playing with this extra pawn in the center white's using her trumps jennifer is using her majority rochelle is not using hers and as a result she's on the back foot this bishop is passive And there we see our uh, production crew, uh, Marcus, Marcus Batten. Uh -oh. He's the one with the black hat, the <laughs> nice. black shirt, we'll the nice. very nice camera. But by the way, that you know, it seems to be attached to him. I mean, wherever I see Marcus, <laughs> the, the camera goes with him. And he's on his way to Zagreb, uh, Croatia, I believe, Ooh, on Friday as we get ready for the Grand Chess Tour. Uh, really a summer of chess here in St. Louis. I think it was Alejandro, we're talking when is his next break, and he was like, I have like three days off in November. <laughs> <laughs> but that dog, he goes on Friday to Rajeha in Croatia. Uh, he's going to spend a few days as he gets ready for the Zagreb Grand Chess Tour. And uh, I told him, like, think of some great questions to uh, interview uh, Magnus Carlsen yes. uh, as he joins the Grand Chess Tour. If you had... Magnus in studio today. What would be a question you'd like to ask Magnus? Oh boy. Are you gonna play? <laughs> well, of course, but everybody is gonna, <laughs> gonna ask him that. I don't know. I just, I'm really curious about how he's, who he is. Like, I mean, because Norway didn't really have that much history of chess. So like, you know, how did he just, who did he look up to? Mm. Like, when was the moment he knew, okay, I'm gonna be the world champion? Does it? Yeah. See, you got to Alejandro is your coach. You got to <laughs> feed those kinds well, of questions to Alejandro, uh, so he actually. That that feels slightly betrayal. That's my new coach. Now. Uh, I understand, <laughs> but I mean, you know, we, we 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 can say to Alejandro, we got these great questions oh, yeah. for you. Anyway, I do like Jennifer's position. I um, do too. I like the F4, the E4. Those are beautiful. But yeah. I'm getting so many Sicilians today, like. Yeah, this is the game of uh, Balaji is there a uh, versus game? Mishra, your choice, yes. right? You went with Mishra, and after knight c6, pause, or who, who went into a pause? The times? No, uh, knight c6, uh, hold on, knight takes e6. Yes. Okay, I, hold on, I've got to update my board, yes. I apologize. Knight takes wow. c6. Okay, so lots of so after knight c6 takes takes, bishop c4, as you described it, Christian, a big fight, a big fight for the D control over the d5 square. And that is my question right now. Rook g1. Let's continue fighting for that square. Castle. What about long castle? And exactly. they're both thinking pretty deeply because they're both below one ten, um, an hour and 10 minutes. I'm assuming I want to move. And, and this is where it becomes ambitious if I go d5, d5 mm -hmm. right? Sacrificing next change. Let's go for it. It's not our pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. It's exactly. It's not our pieces. Uh, well, white will be defending for quite a while. And don't forget, I mean, mm -hmm. always in the opening, you have to ask a very, very salient question. What am I doing with my king? Am I castling long? Am I castling short? And I'm leaving my king in the center. But in this exact situation, white's king has to go long. I agree. Center mm -hmm. is too dangerous. Yeah. King side's impossible. But I don't think you're going long either. That's the problem. Yeah, so yeah, let's, yeah. It's let's keep be... going. Let's keep going. Oh, so, sorry. for example, if you go bishop to e2. For example, yeah. I don't think I'm picking up the pawn on e4 or going d4. Uh, I'm thinking actually at bishop to b4 first. Exactly. And once again, setting up this pin, how do you defend against that? If you try to get away from the pin with a move a3, then I take on c3, take on e4, and the king is not going to castle anywhere in that position. So, so sorry black, to, definitely a lot of compensation, but we do have a move. Yeah, sorry Possibly. to interrupt you. Sorry to interrupt you, Christian, but the position just blowed up mm -hmm. because Mishra just played rook takes h3, inviting Rook takes g7, and this is a different way of fighting for the d5 square. Rook check will actually for force white to bring his bishop back so that but no you can, castle, yeah, oh so that this you looks so good for white for black, right? Right, I mean, uh, black seems to have a very 
nice early initiative. I don't think he cannot opening. take on G7. I yeah. think he has to do something else. No just taking on G7? Maybe just set up shop for Longcastle for White. Queen, just, just yeah, but this of kind it. of uh, goes back to maybe a moment like this, where uh, you know you, you 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 might start thinking about Queen D3 in castles, with or without capturing on E6, so that you know your your, your bishop still on F1 defending H3. None of this happened. It went quick. Oops, excuse me. We went quickly for Rook takes H3, and I gotta say I I like black. You approve uh, of this pawn? Oh, big time. Well, again, because if you just look at the activity of the pieces, one more move, castles, mm -hmm. and black's development is complete, and you're one move and two moves away from completing your development, and black is threatening, he's got issues, uh, white's got issues. Black is threatening a move like d5 with or without knight d4, even on a good day, rook takes e3. Uh, I see uh, Mishra coming out of this opening with the initiative. I like black's position. Wow, so okay, I. keep that in mind. Sorry, I wanted to uh, jump to uh, Christopher's game because we haven't seen it Ooh. for some time. This was the reverse Benko Gambit, I remember? I remember? Yes, yes, we were talking about, I think we left it somewhere here. We were talking exactly, about the from very season. early yeah. after D2, D3. He took right away, takes. I have another one. <laughs> and this is actually, uh, again, uh, we're missing Alejandro because Alejandro uh, could speak very eloquently as to when you should capture the pawn and when you shouldn't. Uh, normally speaking, you would prefer to leave it, leave it as an open question, whether you want to take with the knight or take with the bishop. After a move, for example, like g3, and when black plays the move, knight c6, threatening e5, then you want to take with the bishop. Uh, but he took with the bishop right away. Let's see if it makes a difference. It kind of does and knight to d2. So now you have uh, no choice but to put the knight on d2. Knight c6, knight b3. I'm kind of liking black's position if I can get e5 comfortably, which I think it's up and coming. No question you're going to get it comfortably. I'm liking this for black, though. Um, OK, well, the idea from white's point, why did white sacrifice a pawn? White sacrificed a pawn in order to bring his rooks to the B? <laughs> yes, exactly, as well as the A files. So let me make a bad move for you. Oh. Like, you don't necessarily have to do this, but now you see, you kind of get a visual of what it is that white is banking on. White is banking on the fact that his rook is, oops, sorry, my, my mouse is everywhere. Uh, the knight on c5, the bishop on g2, all attacking pressuring the queen side. Mm -hmm. And it's not that easy to shake the pressure. For example, a move like b6 invites queen a4. So this is what white is hoping. And uh, from black's point of view, hey, I'm a pawn up. What could be bet better? e5, yeah. bishop f5, e4, and uh, let's go. That's a game that we will keep our eyes on. But Christian, um, what other games have caught your attention? Well, I'm looking at this uh, game and its development, uh, the game between Gregory Kaidanov and Alexander Shabalov, because once again, is this Bishop F4 making its uh, dent into the <laughs> mainstream theory in this position after Knight to C6? It's so weird to me seeing this move Bishop to F4. It has been played compared to Bishop to E3 or Knight to C3. Knight to C3 25,000 times has been played 25, only in these 25,000 wow. times or in the database, in this database. Bishop to F4 only 20 times. So uh, you can imagine uh, the difference. Bishop to F4 once again was the proposition of Richie Rapport actually in 2021 against Fabiano Caruana and then of Duda against Richie Rapport in the Candidates tournament that just finished. Bishop to f4, a6 was played and uh, I believe it was d6 the game between Duda and uh, Richie Rapport. e5, bishop e3, knight e7, knight c3, knight g6 and this is where that c5 happened on the board and actually that gave white tremendous advantage. Alexander Shabalov, after quite a long thing actually, he was surprised by this move, bishop to f4, played the move a6. 
Now let's take a look, Knight takes c6, c4, and it does seem like this is just simply a better version for white, because a6 in mm -hmm. this uh, configuration doesn't make a lot of sense, doesn't help black's position at all in uh, my estimation. Queen to d2 was played, e5, bishop to e3, knight to e7, sure, you do get the knight on g6, but it seems like you have lost a lot of tempies to get to that point. Queen to f6, a6, that's already two tempies. You don't have a lot of control over the dark squares right now. So this is what concerns me. H4, after the move g3, bishop e7, came as a thunder in the position right now. Yeah, sure. You wanna go castle, h5, get your knight to h8, and good luck surviving what's coming on this side. Look at this position, how sad is this knight on h8. Definitely you cannot play chess like that and expect good results. So knight to f8 came on the board, but the way I see this position, you're so far uh, behind in development. I have the two bishops, I have uh, the better structure and more space, and simply I don't see any attributes that uh, could sway me from giving white a decisive advantage right now. So. Bishop to h3 is an option as well. f4, I think uh, Gregory Kaidanov is just dominating the battle of the opening and the ensuing, the dominating the ensuing battle of the middle game right now. Clear advantage for white. Thank you for that, Christian. I'd just like to turn our attention for a moment to the game between uh, Pedro Espinosa and uh, Brandon Jacobson as uh, Brandon has actually kind of climbed his way back into contention a little bit. And uh, I think Pedro actually misplayed it. The move queen d2, that doesn't meet the requirements <laughs> of the position. Oh, what does right. the position require? It requires white to castle and get his king out of danger. Knight f3 castles ASP. Let's get it going. He played the move queen d2. And this delay of getting his king out of the center was met with the move knight a5. And this is really an awkward move to face because you're looking at knight b3, forking the rook and the queen, but you're also looking at uh, the, the potential weakness of the pawn on c4. Uh, to deal with the threat of the fork, rook to d1, Brandon said, aha, now you're welcome to trade take my pawn on d6. Why did I want to get the king out of the center? Why, 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 why? Because if I don't get the king out of the center, well, sometimes my now. king gets stuck right? in uh, the center. So uh, after queen c8, knight b5, uh, Pedro is hoping that Brandon agrees to making all of these trades, uh, trades on uh, c4, and trade, 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 and then castles, and he'll have an equal. But uh, look, at, look at Pedro with a shirt. I mean, uh, there's some swag look, look, there. I'm right? telling you, Levon Aronian <laughs> might be a little bit uh, Topol jealous. Also has a, so I've seen some nice wardrobe on him as well. Really? He's, he's throwing around the good looks. <laughs> <laughs> Might have not been by the chess boards, but I've seen some nice Hawaiian okay. pattern. Um, I'm looking at this position, and I'm not liking what I'm seeing as far as Pedro is concerned. Uh, the Yes, yes, but it's not over, and actually the he, fun is just about to begin. Oh. Yes, that's what I meant. Bishop takes if f3. I take on d6. Yes. Okay, so first of all, this would be terrible. This would be egregiously well, but, bad. Bishop but, takes, knight takes is a tempo against the queen when the queen moves, and I'm not even sure where the queen is supposed to move. Knight takes comes with a tempo, so you're welcome to grab this rook, but I'll grab this rook. Uh, this is not what you wanted. G takes f3 is also not what you want. G takes f3, knight takes c4. Once again, we are making these trades, but on black's terms. Uh, you see these double pawns over there? Yeah, not good, not, not good, not I good. I wish I didn't. Good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, avert your eyes. This is not the structure that you want. What about intermezzo? Any, fun, any funny business here? Well, there? that's the intermezzo right here is knight takes d6. Mm -hmm. That was what Christian... Uh, and now we have to pause because we've got, what do we have? We have all kinds of 
Oh my gosh. Um, so many things. I know. With the queen hanging, with G2 hanging, with E2 hanging. Uh, I wish I could get away with just eat G2, eat H1, eat C8, eat, eat everything. But <laughs> Well, one of the things yeah. that you always have to do whenever you start calculating is your priority is check. Yes. You must look at any move that delivers a check. There's no checks, so that's good. So your second priority is without a check, can we make a capture? You know, I've been telling that to my students. I'm All the so time. happy that they give me confirmation. <laughs> well, well, what you can do is you can go on YouTube as, as they upload the stream, is you can just capture that little thing. <laughs> right? and say, this is what this is. I will. Uh, yeah. So, and, and, and the first captures you look at is, you know, the, the, the biggest, the queens, the rooks, the knights, the bishops, the pawns. And you just look at the capture. So uh, we've just captured a knight. We've now captured a bishop. Oops, that was a big girl. We took a queen. We took a rook. And at the end of the day, what is the body count, right? You have to do this. I, I go through these calculations, and it happens really, really, really fast. So at this moment, I've got a, a knight mm -hmm. and a rook uh -huh. against a queen. Yep. But because my opponent's king is still stuck in the center, I continue for a move or two further just to see, uh, can I get something? Maybe like knight takes c4. Coming knight up takes c4. Point. Because is this knight trapped? I'd also look at rook e8. Mm -hmm. And let me just go back. You guys are good, man. I'll give you that. Uh, <laughs> that was, in fact, the, the best variation. In oh, the go for it. Thank uh, you. Bail is out. Yes. No, you guys are good. I mean, directionally, at least, you know what you're doing, I have to say. Knight takes e6, bishop takes e2. Look for the captures. Look right. and calculate the most um, um, critical variation and right. forced variation. Exactly. Right? Knight First. to h8, queen yeah. takes d8, knight takes c4, castle, rook a, e8. And you will see later on why this is the best move in the position. Knight to d5, knight takes d5, queen takes d5, knight takes c3, f takes c3, Dang. once again. Liquidation, liquidation. And now imagine this rook from f8 would be on e8. Instead of that, you would have a hanging pawn and a weakened right. pawn on f7. Not only that, but the rook on a8 would be the target of white's queen. So now you understand what rook a to e8 accomplished. This is the position most likely that we're going to see after rook to g8. It does seem like white doesn't have much more than just a simple equality. Black's position is just simply too safe. And you don't have, as black, any structural weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what the queen needs to dominate this type of imbalances. That's not the case right now. This position is completely equal. Knight to d6 is on the board. Now, bishop takes e2 is one way. Knight to e4 is another Ooh, one. And then knight wow. takes... Very interesting lines, right? right? Not, not the typical queen move that you would right. expect just to get out of uh, this attack. Queen to c7 or queen to e6 actually it does seem like uh, white is going to be better after just a simple bishop takes f3, recapturing the piece. So knight to e4, knight takes c8, knight takes d2. Once again, we calculate the most forced variations. G takes f3, knight takes c4. This is the position that we need to assess. The computer is saying that the position is somewhat equal. Okay. Maybe a slight pull for white, specifically after the move b4. You Whoa. have to defend the pawn on b2 uh, with a tempo. Knight takes e3, take on e5, take on a5, or take on e3. Very complicated battle, even in this endgame, but a lot of the pieces are getting liquidated. Right. So this is definitely what I think Pedro wants to see from this position, a slightly better position. Uh, and uh, not a lot of pieces left remaining on the board for Brandon to complicate matters with. So I think Brandon, after knight, uh, excuse me, Pedro, after knight takes d6, should be quite happy with the outcome of the opening. Remember that Pedro, as he entered into uh, the free day, did have a victory over Carissa. Very, very yes. nice uh, win. So his, his sails have a little wind, and uh, we'll keep an eye on that. As we prepare for break, it's our time to tell uh, everybody about Q Boutique, Dorsa. Yes, yes. What's our special today? Well, it seems to be a very, very cute... That is it, yep. <laughs> uh, Four-inch black modern tulip chess set. Oh. Tulip chess right? oh. 
Yeah, that's uh, the design. It's very unique. It's kind of modern twist on a traditional handcrafted. Uh, it is from ebony and boxwood wool, and uh, it's kind of a um, 15. Wait, yes, 15 and half inch. Uh, with two inch squares, it is online on cubeboutiquesandglues.com and uh, fun fact, tulip in um, Middle Eastern countries like Turkey, Iran yeah. is the, the, um, the flower of the royal Really? So, it's a national flower of Holland too, the tulips. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, Holland is the And I know here they're very pricey too. <laughs> <laughs> so they're royal, there right. you go. <laughs> so it's like Holland and uh, Malaysia are two of the great flower growing countries of the world. And you think that Holland is very small. No, 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 they have fields of flowers. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous. We're gonna see you on the other side of the break as round six of the national championships continue. How did you uh, prepare for uh, this event? We know it's a very prestigious event. What was your training routine coming into this event? I've been studying chess, uh a lot uh, since the pandemic started uh, and basically U.S. senior always in my mind uh, this is like the main goal basically for the next like six months uh, I'm thinking about this while I'm studying chess. I didn't have much time to prepare because uh, I uh, just came from Europe uh, where I played uh, for U.S. Uh, national team, uh, senior team in the World Championship. Uh, as always, nothing changed. I play some tournaments before so that uh, to work for to warm up, uh, to be ready. Of course, some some uh, preparation, uh, like always. This is a professional professional life of chess player. Something, nothing special for this. Uh, uh, event was kind of trying to convince my managers and my my wife and my family that that's something that you know I should be doing and once they got on board I'm basically just try to look up who is gonna play and uh, basically find uh, something to encourage myself that I can you know, I can fight those people basically playing non-stop it's a little bit different tactics that I used to so I just got back from Italy and, and I played uh, for the US team at the World Seniors and uh, then I played the World Open right after that. So basically I played for the last three weeks nonstop. Yeah, okay, so. Getting back, reviewing what's uh, the top games in the world, what the opening strategies are. Uh, when I see what colors I have against my opponent, then I'll get to spend some time trying to work out how the openings are gonna go there. Nothing special, you know, just as usual. I watch the games and trying to analyze and trying to think. Um, you know, that's it, nothing unusual, you know. Uh, the main thing is, I think in these tournaments, you want to be as alert as possible at all times. You know, could go four or five hours of hard, intense concentration. And I found the worst thing you can do, and I've done this so many times, is to cram for big games. Staying up till four in the morning, you know, over preparing and just wearing yourself out. I'll try to avoid that this time. Well, you know, life gets in the way of things. So I've been doing a lot of things. Uh, you know, I'm not a, a full-time professional player anymore. So, um, you know, maybe I have a little catch up to do, but I think that's probably true for most of the players. So I, I think it really comes down to, you know, which, which player, you know, summons up the energy to fight in the, in the, in the fourth hour. It remains to be seen whether what I've done was actually what I was supposed to be doing, but uh, let's, uh, let's not speak too much about it for now. <laughs>
Hello and welcome back to our live coverage of the national championships. Dorsa, let's take a look at the pairing, starting oh. with the girls' championships. What's... What games do you have for us? Our marquee matchups, if you will. We've seen some really, really nice games so far. Um, I feel like a very interesting game is the Jennifer Yu versus Rochelle Wu game. Right. Because Jennifer is just a point behind, and as we've talked about it before, she is facing Sophie uh, Marie Suzuki tomorrow. Right. So if she does win this and Sophie does not end up winning her game today, it could be a really nice fight for Jennifer tomorrow. All right. Uh, another key matchup that we've been looking at has been Sophie's, uh, Marie Suzuki's game versus um, Rui Yang Yan. Absolutely, and, and in the juniors. Yes. Well, we've been talking a lot about the Justin Wang game versus Christopher Yu. Right. So that has been a very interesting um, match. But I also have to say I'm very interested to see how will my recently picked <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mishra end up doing in his today game. Against Dagupati and of course Christopher Yu against Justin Wang. That's been the um, reverse Benko game. That, that's been yes. a cool game. And of course in the seniors, it's about Larry Christensen, our tournament yes, leader. Yes, of course. He is facing the highest rated and also the newcomer of the 50 plus. <laughs> Vladimir Legends. Kofian, right? Yeah. Um, so that's also going to be a very, very nice matchup. Now, another one that could be real fun, just from the games that we've been seeing, was um, we were talking about this one game. Who was it? Uh, Gregory. Uh, Gaidana yeah. versus Alexander Shabalov. This is the position. I'm really liking that position. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, very uh, unusual. Um, open Sicilian with a bishop f4 that we saw that uh, uh, Christian Duda played yeah. in uh, the uh, candidates. But there you see a very nice picture of all of the playing hall, and that's just one side on the other side. Mm -hmm. And all the players are mixed too. It's yeah. not like just you know the seniors against the wall over here, or the girls against That's the wall over there. That's what it used to be, though. Right? Yeah, I know, and I like this mix. I mean, it's sort of like when you get up and you go around and see the games. And the I spoke with the seniors, and they're all like really happy to see the juniors because. It's inspiring to see the juniors and the girls. They're, they've been swinging for the fences, and that's why we get these oh, big, see, big, score, <laughs> big, big scores uh, in their games. Yeah. Just having the game Justin Wang um, yes. against uh, Christopher Yu for just a moment. We just had this move, knight d7. It might look a little bit strange mm. to drop the knight back like that. But the idea behind this move is actually to prep b7, b6, and bishop to b7. And with the move knight d7, the pawn on d4 is further protected. So in other words, you might say, okay, I'll play b6, oh. but then, you know, I'm giving up, yes, I'm giving up my monster bishop, but I am winning back the pawn and I'm doing so with the tempo. So the move knight d7 is kind of, what you want to do is neutralize this long square, long, Diagonal bishop with the move b7, b6, and bishop b7. Now, if you can get in those two moves, black will not only have a pawn in the pocket, but uh, white's pieces will actually have difficulty finding good squares. And I'm thinking you should probably trade off a pair of knights right away. Knight c5, takes, takes. And again, you get this very usual, well-known Benko gambit kind of pressure for the pawn, and by getting rid of that knight on a d7, you're opening up the b-file for the rook. So that's something to keep in mind. One game that blew up during our break wait, wait, was wait. the game of uh, uh, Wonder Liang versus David Brodsky. When we left it, it was all very conventional yes. stuff with g7, g5, a uh, ton of games has gone like this, I told you about my yes. Katja Nemsova story. So all of this is pretty standard stuff. Uh, help me out, where is that knight trying to go? I mean, I get it, that's the knight is, I thought knight e1, uh, black wanted to, uh, white maybe wanted to play pawn f4? And he does, oh, he does. Oh, all right. <laughs> And he just, just thought, prep. yeah, um, well, by, ha by bringing the knight to d3, you're thinking you're gonna play pawn f4. Yes. But then maybe you wanna recapture with the knight. Ah. as well as the bishop. In the meantime, by also 
uh, when as soon as black put his bishop on this diagonal, one of the things you start to think about as black is let's break up the team, the d4, e5 team. Let's break up that team by playing pawn to c5, hence knight to d3 is kind of like, uh, I'm going to shut you down over here. I don't want to see you play c5. In the meantime, I want to play f4. So this battle of ideas brewing. b7, b6, c2, c3, c5. Look at this clash. This is really good stuff. Knight, drop back, f4, c4. Let's sacrifice. Take my knight, please. If you take, I'm going to take another pawn. And then when you drop back with your bishop, Let's say I've picked up three pawns. I'm not even sure I need to take this pawn, by the way. I've picked up three pawns, and the king is really exposed. A wonder said, I'm not interested in your knight. Takes f6, takes. Huh. And David said, you know what? If I take this pawn, your king has no pawn shield. Bishop takes, knight to e4. Bishop back to e3. Uh, I'm not feeling it here unless, unless a wonder can bring his knight very quickly to f5. Uh, he's going to have a real hard time proving uh, compensation because black's king is a little scary. Uh, bishop? Once again, guys. Yeah? It does seem like you're really good at chess. Because <laughs> because Thank you. Okay, well, so what, uh, what we're thinking is that uh, bishop takes g5, bishop, back to, bishop g5 back to e3. You've got to start thinking, how? how? How do I get my pieces over to the king's side, right? This knight on e7 desperately needs to go to f5. And if I could play knight f5 and queen h4, might get some uh, um, compensation, but... Christian, jump right in here. Should black be playing for e5? No, for knight to f5. Knight and to f5. Yes, with the idea of a bishop to g6. So bishop to g6, bishop to g6 prepping. G6. Also okay. putting some pressure on the f-file, right? Because right. your rook on a1 still cannot contend for uh, dominance on the f-file. So you still have some uh, moves to make until you can bring that rook to the other side of the board next to the king. So exactly. bishop to g6, I really like this move. Quite a key move to maintain the balance. And in fact, the assessment after bishop to g6, it seems that black has enough compensation for at least a balanced position and equality. Really? Yes, yes, after I'm... bishop to g6. This reminds me, by the way, we've seen a big uh, game between Lenier Dominguez with uh, the white pieces and Levon Aronian during the American Cup when Levon Aronian played probably for the first time uh, in his life the Karakhan. <laughs> and uh, he put some pressure with the black pieces. This, exactly, this is exactly what we're seeing in this game as well. This pawn sacrifice, nevertheless, I have a very strong knight on e4 and another one joining the fray via f5. A lot to be played for still in this position. Nothing is concluded. Now, Brandon Jacobson, I have to say, is spending a lot of time on his decision right now. Knight to e4, bishop takes e2 and go into that end game without the queen. Now, I want to catch you uh, up with uh, this guy. This game between Andrew Hong and Whoa. Carissa Yip. Because Carissa Yip right now, well, I mean, she did get the knight to b4, but after the move castle, where is this knight going? All I could see a uh, potential trajectory for the knight is knight to c2 followed by knight to d4. The problem is that you have to first open uh, this diagonal for the bishop to support the move knight to c2. Knight to e4 was played, but what if I just simply take, take, and go bishop to g3? I don't want to take on d6. Now, why don't I, don't, why don't I want to take on d6? Most probably because of the move rook to f5. Wait. And now knight to e3, unfortunately, to defend the pawn on d5 doesn't work because bishop the bishop on d6 is just simply hanging. So I will recapture on d5, and it does seem like that gives my pieces enough uh, cooperation and enough activity to be just a fine position for a black. Knight to e4, good move by Carissa, but what if you just take, take and go bishop to g3? 
how are you going to play this position? I want to take on d6, but I want to take on d6 with the knight. That also is going to open up this square for my bishop to jump to c4. It just feels like white has more harmony uh, infused in his pieces. Right now, Carissa still in trouble. But it doesn't feel like white got that grip. Like for Maybe example, not that if much, you, if, yes. if you continue this line, and let's just say bishop takes d5, mm -hmm. knight takes d6, bishop to d4. Yes, yes. I'm kind of thinking, you know, I mean, I, a, a moment ago I was really feeling it's very a lot concrete. of danger. It's very concrete, right? right? So if you manage to stabilize the position as black, if you get a queen on d7, Something a rook good, on d8, right. right? If you manage right. to stabilize, then black's pieces are looking nice. But do you have time night, to night do that? to b5. Okay. Do I, you have time to do that? I was, I, was ca yeah, I was being a pawn grubber. I was going after the pawn on b2. Absolutely, and, absolutely. Rook and, to b1. And, Again, it's, it's a matter of speed right now. You go back to g7, <laughs> Then I have ideas of knight to c7 or bishop to d6. The position remains very complicated. Nevertheless, indeed, the trajectory of the last few moves, and we saw at the beginning of the game, uh, at uh, the in the opening phase, white was just crushing mm. in uh, that particular position. Right now, it does seem like Carissa has developed her pieces and is getting closer to uh, establishing that balance in the position. And another big game that I was having my eyes on, yep. and maybe you guys can take it from here, is this one between Tell Alice me. Lee and Talia, because Talia is one point behind the leader, Sophie Mori Suzuki, and check this out. We said b6 was not a particularly good move. This was the reason. Knight to g5 immediately ask questions. Not only that, but take advantage of the consequences of the move b6. One of the biggest consequences that this diagonal has opened up. So for example, right now, if you follow it up with queen to d5, bishop e2 would be a big problem. Bishop e2 followed by bishop to f3. You cannot defend the bishop on e6 and the pawn on c4 like that. So you have to go bishop to d5, but then I continue with e4. And once again, after bishop to b7, bishop takes c4, this is starting to look really good for white. You have to castle, nevertheless, it does feel like I got what I wanted. I have a beautiful center, the development is coming up nicely. It's definitely looking like white has established um, dominance in the position. So, h4 was actually what was played in the game by Alice Lee, but unfortunately for her, after h6, h5, g5, it does seem like this whole sequence favors a black. Let's take a look at why. Castle, bishop takes g7, king takes g7, knight to e5, c5, a very good move by uh, Talia. Knight takes c4, and I understand, you eliminated my dark square bishop, right? Mm -hmm. But we look at the pawn structure, and all the pawns are on the dark squares. How are you going to get to my king on g7. Do you have enough pieces? It doesn't look like uh, you do. You no longer have as white uh, the dark square bishop either. And what I do have, well, I have a big lead in development as black. I will go queen to c7. Your knight on c4 is a little bit shaky. You have to drop back to uh, d2. If you try to stay in the center, thank you very much. I'm winning some more time with the move knight to d7. Another tempi in the position. And after you castle, I'm looking at this pawn on h5. Is it a strength or a liability? My answer to that question is, in the future, this pawn on h5 is going to become a liability for white. So that's why I think the sequence that we've seen in the past few moves definitely favors Talia. Wow, okay, uh, that's, that's very good, obviously, for uh, Talia. And I, let's go to the game of Sofia for just a moment because, again, uh, Talia's chasing the tournament leader who is leading by a full point. And let's see what's going on here. So when we left it, we, we saw uh, Ru Yang Yan giving up her dark squared bishop. Yep. A maneuver we really didn't like, but she had an immediate follow with the move C4, C5. She's eyeballing this pawn on a7 a6 yeah. like let me play bishop takes a6 and capture the pawn takes on c5 now doubtlessly you know she's got uh ru yang has a, a she she 
uh, captured on C5, but you've also got to calculate like what would happen if I play bishop takes A6 because does that come with a tempo? I think she declined it. I'm not 100% sure. I think she must have declined it from this exchange sacrifice. Yeah. Maybe there was something about this exchange sacrifice well, that she didn't yeah. like. <laughs> so she didn't take on a6. She recaptured with the knight. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Okay. Even though my pawns are split, that does give me the leverage I need maybe to establish a rook on d6. By the way, uh, pawn that alert. That guy is still... Uh, queen b8 to a7. An invitation to trade pawns. Do you want to take my pawn on h4? I'll take your pawn on c5 with check. No, thank you, said Ru Yang. Knight just, back. Yes, please. Uh, sorry, instead of queen a7, because queen a7 just feels like a little unnatural to me. Why not I just go to queen b3? I queen could try b3? to get, eat the other pawn, perhaps. Sure. Or like, well, I'm, I want to try to activate the rest of my pieces, because queen a7, I mean, it has a clear threat, but... I feel like it's a little too obvious. Mm -hmm. And knight a2 or anything else to just defend that c5 pawn would come pretty naturally as well. But queen b3 now, you're kind of questioning, all right, opponent, right. are you sure you want to eat on h4? Are you sure you want to <laughs> eat on a6? What do you want to do? Right. I, I would probably uh, kick the queen. I don't like this queen okay. uh, landing on my uh, doorstep. I would probably offer a queen trade so that if you did take something similar to the game, yeah. I'm trying to, uh, White at least is trying to get the knight to b4 to lift the blockade of uh, the bishop on c6. If I can go c5, c6, c7, I'm, I'm gold. And I suspect queen a2, and again, I, I kind of am telegraphing my punches. I want to play queen a2, rook d6. If you go back with the queen, well, then I can... You know, if you do, if you do, uh, refuse to trade, fair. Maybe something like this. But it does relieve the pressure off of my h4 pawn, at least. Of course, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Queen a7, maybe not such a good move. I'm not quite sure myself. Knight a2, I like what White is doing. Pawn mm. goes to h3. Well, we talked a moment about uh, the game of Alice Lee. A pawn on h5. Uh, Christian said it's going to be a future liability. Pawn on h3, I would suspect after g3, this pawn on h3 is uh, all but a goner uh, long term. Uh, but uh, okay, our, our tournament leader, just a little bit on the back foot, I feel, uh, at this moment. And guys, yes. that opens uh, the possibility of Jennifer Yu potentially catching sure. up with the leader if Sophie Morris Suzuki loses right. this game. So let's take a look at what happened in that game. And if you were here from the beginning of the broadcast, we were talking a lot about this knight on d4 and why right. instead of bishop to e7, bishop to c5 initially was the better alternative. Also, at some point we mentioned, especially at the beginning, this idea of uh, playing the move d3 first and not bishop to g2. Now, for example, if you go uh, bishop to c5, take on e4, take on e4, bishop to g2, knight takes e3, and we were giving this as an improvement for white because uh, this knight on d4 right now is uh, cemented in the center. The b file is open for a potential attack on the b file as well. And it just feels like white's pieces are better. Now, let's take a look at what happened in this game. h3, this is where we left it off. And now Rochelle played the move bishop to b4, not going after the knight mm -hmm. on d4, but actually going after knight on c3. But We've seen this. If you do take on c3, that's actually going to improve my position. Right. If you take it with a knight on f6, if you take it with your dark square bishop and also relinquish uh, the two bishops, well, that's actually going to improve my position as white even more. So this is what's happening right now. It feels like Rochelle just simply doesn't understand what she needs to do in the position. And I have to say, after b6, rook f, d1, it just feels like white's pieces uh, are just simply much better. Once you play the move c5, I'm going to have another square that I can target it with my knight, knight b5, knight c3, knight to d5. These two knights beautifully defending each other. Nevertheless, 
They're also called superfluous knights <laughs> because this knight on f6 doesn't really seem to have a job anymore, right? Exactly. Uh, except defending and also potentially could become uh, the part of an attack after g4, g5, right? So I'm seeing this bishop, dominant bishop on the long diagonal, the bishop on b2, and I'm seeing the superfluous knights. I feel like white has developed uh, its initiative quite nicely, and Jennifer Yu is definitely in pole position to potentially catch up with the leader. Yeah. Absolutely. And here are our standings coming into this round six. Sophia, Morris Suzuki with a perfect five out of five. Jennifer Yu, Talia Cervantes chasing her down a point behind. Uh, and uh, both Jennifer and Talia's position I have to say, a little bit better for them, right. Dorsa. I feel uh, like uh, it's more comfortable. Jennifer's position, most especially, because I like uh, to show uh, uh, what flashed yes. through my eyes, a kind of a combination that instantly got my attention is once you see Ooh. this bishop, you kind of go, ooh, that's like really, really, really nice. Well, smelly. Yeah, exactly. And you start thinking to yourself, no, you can't get away with this yeah. type of thing as uh, as black. Um, so I, I like Jennifer's uh, position a lot. I, Where I would you like to, to take us, please? It's not exactly chess related. <laughs> okay. Uh, were you ever in a situation that you or you're playing like your best friend or like you know blood relative or whatever and, and you're just like man i love you so much i just can't attack you <laughs> right no no first of all i like to say that whatever mistakes you can make in chess i've made them at least twice oh, that's <laughs> just so nice. to be sure <laughs> that it was a mistake the first time around okay. right you know like i don't just blunder my queen to a discovered check the first uh, time. I do it a second and a beautiful. third, just to make sure, just to make sure. And so everything that could possibly go wrong in chess has gone wrong for me. Wonderful. Exactly, <laughs> including just what you said. Uh, I've always had extreme difficulty playing against somebody I would call a brotherhood pairing. Right. You know, I once, I once went on a, a summer's tour in 1975 with a dear friend, a bomber, Bill McGarry. Uh, we went on the summer to, we, uh, from Seattle to San Diego to Las Vegas to Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> and it was like we played each other. Every tournament? Every tournament. Oh, I, no. <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. I oh, hated uh, that aspect <laughs> uh, to chess, playing a pairing that you yeah. least want. Oh, yes. And, and I really, really, really suffered. Later, I kind of, as I matured as a person, it was like, look, I love you, you know, everything's good. But we're then, just playing a game. Oh. We're just playing a tough game. And whoever wins, you know, yeah. buys dinner. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> right? I mean, that's the way it goes. I, I was paired to play my brothers in like three different tournaments. And I was Your like, brother. Whoa. Oh, that's terrible. The first one we played, you know, seriously. But I was playing seriously because I was, you know, like about to like, get my like seventh WIM. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I, I was on my WIM um, title hunt. So I was playing seriously. Right. And then he just, he was just like, I just couldn't play. So like, I just couldn't think. And he's younger than me. So the next mm. time we played, um, I couldn't think. So I was just like, I was black and I was thinking. And I was like, oh my God, I'm just going to play something defensive. If he wants to attack, he can attack. But I'm just going to, and then he wouldn't attack and I wouldn't attack. And the same thing happened when I played so one of my draw? yeah okay. I I played one of my best friends a few years back in like your like world junior championship, and I was like oh god I'm black again like I don't want to attack she doesn't want to attack and after the game it ended in a draw we played also? like a dead draw like queen's gambit queen's Indian like everything locked up, so I guess what I'm trying to you know um, also think about this like a lot of these uh, kids a lot of these juniors and girls are friends, friends with each other with, so it's yeah. really hard to actually compete against your friends and you know want to like beat them up exactly and, uh, uh, yeah Christian. They're, they're doing a great job but still for me it's uh, I needed some time to get over that. I don't know if I'm still over that, but... <laughs> right. right. Uh, Kristen, uh, jump in. How do you handle what we in Seattle used to call the brotherhood pairings? Oh, uh, brotherhood. Uh, playing against somebody you really is your, your, is, is your best bud. Oh, I play so much better. 
I, I, I want to beat them so hard. I mean, but that, that not only gives me one extra point, but it also gives me bragging rights wow. uh, in that relationship for the next, uh, I don't know, one year until we meet each other, right? Le leaving your f your best friend in tears. You Absolutely. had no problem yes, with that, not? you know? Do you at least buy them dinner <laughs> or drink or something? It's just about the bragging rights, you know? Because wow. we like to trash talk a lot. Uh, I beat you so many times in that. I dominated you and whatnot. And this is the type of relationship ah. that I have with my friends friends and they say the same thing. We like to trash talk a lot. So Here a victory is like my gold. Friends would be <laughs> it's really gold. I lose my friends, dude. Uh, by the way, while we were talking, uh, Sophie uh, oh, understood that her position was actually becoming desperate because essentially white is ready just white. to play bishop takes, retreat with a bishop, have a pawn in the pocket, and again, night before is breaking a blockade, so Sophia lashed out with a peace sacrifice. Bishop takes e4. I'm anticipating, well, thank you very much. I'm going to yeah. take that piece. Pretty much. Knight takes e4. Well, if knight takes e4, that might be just terrible. Uh, queen e3. I was, I was about to uh, look at this peace sacrifice, oh, but that's three pawns. But maybe she has a better, way, maybe. better idea of knight to g4. Yeah. Queen got a move, then Whoa. pick up C5. It could get actually pretty interesting. Hmm. I'll have to admit, okay, I didn't think second. that much about uh, Bishop takes E4 when they were queen. talking about it. I'm, I'm really, okay, I'm afraid of Rook takes C5. Fair. So let's look at Queen C2, because if not Ooh. anything else, C5 goes away. Exactly. Now I'm ready to take this pawn, True. and so let's look at Knight E3. But now... Still, c5 is... c5 is hanging. I'm not getting the very nice two pieces. And the crazy part is if... We, no, you could take this, but you could also go back. Uh, bishop takes e4. Have we, have we missed this as a tactic, Christian? We did not, no. No? Um, Good. No, bishop takes e4 is... Well, actually, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> Never mind. Forget nice. about what I just said. We yeah. did, and white did as well, or maybe did not understand all the nuances. Black seems to be doing just fine. Now, not more than just equality, but check this equality out. So bishop takes e4, take only four, knight to right. g4. This is the variation that That's the key we move. were looking at. Now you have to be extremely precise as white, and it's very uh, difficult, diffi easy to stray away. For yeah. example, queen to c2 makes a lot of sense. You defend the pawn on c5. Right. After knight to e3, you're in big trouble. In fact, this position after queen to f2, knight takes d1, rook takes d1, queen takes c5, or rook takes c5, this is, despite the fact that you have two pieces for a rook right. and a couple of pawns, and you're getting one back on Unfortunately, H3. you get one back on H3. You do have the double pawns. Your pieces are just all over the place. They're not very well coordinated. Okay. And we are about to enter an end game. And we know that once the queens are traded off, the two pieces the two pieces against the rook. In the end game, the rook becomes a bit uh, stronger. So okay. now let's take a look at potentially queen to e2 in this position. Allow rook takes c5 and now queen takes a6. Now, this Whoa. makes a lot of sense. Why not, right? right? If you take on a6, I will take back with a bishop no, and this is just... There goes your attack. It's winning for white. Right. Very easily uh, winning. Now, rook takes c1 comes on the board. Queen Good takes check. a7. And we go into this variation in which after knight to c3, rook to c1 or rook to a1, how do we assess this position? There's a very Crazy. unpleasant bind Right. On the king side, this pin on the first rank is going to be very difficult to get away okay. from. Um, I'm seeing the position, I'm seeing the assessment, which is saying zero, zero, zero. Wow. But from a practical perspective, I have to say, I would be quite uh, concerned if I was white. I would start looking for any sort of perpetuals against the rook on e8. For example, queen to d7. You try to run away. I go queen to c7, and uh, so on and so forth. So right. still a very complicated battle right now. Also, you have to be careful. Rook to b2 is coming. <laughs> oh, so for example, rook to b2 is a potential move in uh, the position, rook to a8. Apparently, the assessment is saying that once the queen is on c7, this is already winning for black. Wow. So you have to be super careful. Bishop to e4 was the right move. Now, 
instead of G3, it seems like G4 would have been better. Ah. Well, the idea being, if you take, now I go G5. G5. I don't take on E4, I go G5 first. There's no more knight landing on a G4 disrupting this mm. control that I have given by the queen on F2 on the A7, G1 diagonal. There's no more attack coming against my king on G1. This is looking good for white. So G4 was a big, big move in the position, creating some unpleasantries in black's camp. So unfortunately, she did not find this. Bishop takes e4 is on the board. 37 minutes for Ru Yang, 52 for Sophie Mori Suzuki. This is and was a big moment in the game. Yeah, instead of uh, g4, because g4 felt, I, I mean, if you don't see g3, bishop takes e4, I don't think g4 is something you would think about. Mm -hmm. So how about instead of touching the g pawn, what about knight b4? Because knight is on a2 to go to b4. Knight b4 was a good move, yes. Yeah, because yes. that's the one piece I know where I want to put, so maybe <laughs> yeah, let's exactly. do that first. <laughs> I, I, I also uh, tend to agree with you, Dorsa, in this one. Knight to d4, at least from a practical perspective, is definitely the move that creates the most problems in black's position because now you would once again love to keep this bishop on this diagonal and try to get some bishop takes c4 at some point uh, working, but what you have to do is go bishop to a4 and then you have to contend with rook to d6 ideas and how to defend on this side. I really like this sequence that you are proposing, knight to b4 followed by rook to d6. You take on g2, that's fine. I will take back on g2 and you don't have enough pieces to create any huge uh, attack on the king side. Nevertheless, from a strategical point of view, I also have to be careful because if you manage to stabilize as black the queen side and get a knight to f4, in the absence of uh, the g pawn, the knight on f4 is just going to be cemented mm -hmm. on that very aggressive square. So I don't want to see a knight landing on f4. This is what yeah. I'm saying. Uh, very intriguing position, guys. Absolutely. Thank I just want to take a quick look at the Alice Lee versus uh, Telia Cervantes game because, I, I mean, this is almost a dream come true for Grunfeld defense players, and it's so weird for me to see this type of position normally in a Grunfeld. Knight f3, bishop e2 castles, or bishop c4, knight e2 castles. White's king has vacated the center. It's almost, you know, you almost never see a queen so dominantly positioned as uh, it is currently with the um, king still in the center of the board. After queen c3, there's no way that white can really tolerate this queen for much longer. You've got to play queen c1 and you know, uh, go into some kinds of endings, which Grunfeld players are very happy to play, especially with the pawn on h5. Oh, yes. Looks good for Talia. But also, check Oops, the sorry. last few moves. Uh oh. Yes, yes sir. Like, the last go few through moves? the last few moves. Oh. Every single That's move nice. improves Black's position, while White is on the defensive end. Knight to e5, knight to c4, backwards, queen to c7, knight to d2, backwards, yeah. queen to c3. Now you have to hunt my queen to exchange it. Exactly. Everything just seems to be going in black's favor. Exactly. All the, the, the entirety of the last sequence. I, the trend, as we say. The yes. trend is the friend of black here. And, oh, that's a big surprise for me. Jennifer, after the move, rook d1, bishop d7. I, I'll go along with that. That's okay. But Jennifer made a move I would really not have made myself. Knight to b3. I always like, when I'm seeing this diagonal, I, I, I mean, that's a clarion, oops, excuse me, that's a clarion call for me to be attacking. Like, I would really much rather position my knight in the center of the board where it's defended defended by the pawn on f4, defended by the bishop on... Knights improve the more they're defended. And the move knight b... d4 b... That, that, that strikes me as a voluntary retreating move. I'm not Can't a I fan. Can't I just pawn c5 after that and just let it... Yeah. Just Maybe she has some ideas based on bishop takes. So, like, if you do play pawn c5, and I'm not saying it's a bad move, uh, there is something you may have to contend with, like I could take, and if you take with a knight, well, I'm winning an exchange, maybe I'm not happy about the exchange, but, well, it is an exchange. Uh, and if you take with a pawn, well, I'm not sure you're happy about Fair. getting your 
king side all. I'm very wrecked. happy with my knights, though. I understood. I understood. Um, but uh, for me, to my eyes, Christian, uh, Jennifer needs to work on her attacking skills. The move knight b3 is a step, in my opinion, away from the action. Yes, your eyes are definitely not deceiving you. Yes. Uh, yeah, so knight to b3 is not the right direction. Exactly. No. Knight to b3, probably knight to f3 was in fact the best move in the position, at least according to the engines. And it makes a lot of sense because not only that you're eyeing that e5 square, but maybe even knight g5 at some point to change the character of the Ooh. position, open up uh, things in uh, that way, that fashion. Definitely knight to f3 would have been the better try. Now, if you want to go to d2, right, because that's the only reason why you would play the move knight to b3, right, destabilize right. the knight on e4, why wouldn't you do it from f3? Exactly. It, it just has so much more potential on f3, and this is something that we as players and as grandmasters, uh, we like to maximize whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Potential of our pieces. Knight to f3 was the right approach. Knight to b3, assessment-wise, it is, in fact, black who is better right now. Whoa. After the move c5, not an easy move to uh, see, by the way, because you do allow the move bishop takes f6. Right. Knight takes f6 would allow me to take on a8, and that's just going to give me a winning advantage. That's fair. But if you do take with the g pawn, on the other hand, and once Which again, is a big this risk. is not easy. This yeah, is not yeah. easy to play c5 and allow bishop takes f6. This is what I'm uh, saying right now. But once you take on f6, the king is quite safe, in fact. Ooh. Not only that, but after the move f4, we see a weakness on g3. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, get to that weakness? Well, potentially king to h8, followed by rook to g8, now that the g5 <coughs> is open. So this position still remains very complex. Rochelle does need to find the move c5. Mm -hmm. Big, big position, big moment for these two ladies. And let's not forget, Rochelle is on three points, if she wins this one, she will equalize the score of Jennifer Yu. Jennifer is on four out of five points. If she wins this one, well, potentially we'll get closer to Sophie Mori Suzuki with a big direct clash between those two players coming up tomorrow. Absolutely. But Christian, if I may ask you the question, uh, the move C6, C5 exposing the rook in the corner begs yes. the question, why is c5 necessary and why not move the rook first? Yes, you can so also do you rook can play c5. Mm -hmm. You can also do go rook ad8. Then I would assume this is what she wanted. To this go is what Jennifer wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, it's it's not the best. It's still not the best. It could have been much better after right. this move knight to f3, knight to e5. Right. This is not the right way, uh, the right direction for oh, white. Rook takes d2 and now I can go bishop to f5. Once again, take a lot of um, control over the square e4, potentially offering the trade of the bishops with the move bishop e4 in the future. It's complicated. It remains complicated. Three results right now, and uh, it does seem like slowly, but surely Rochelle is getting back into the game. Okay, well, Wonderful. very good. We'll keep our eyes uh, on those developments. What do you have for us? What um, your eyes? I was just looking at our legends, uh, the leader Larry playing versus, well, another <laughs> potential leader, <laughs> right. uh, Akopian. And I realized that, um, you know, Ooh, way. <laughs> night, night and Ponenge. Right? I mean, the vacuum uh, <laughs> cleaner came on the board. And yep, yep. Okay, so we left it way, way, yes, way back after here. after Queen H5. I was Queen H5. talking about it, and you were like, well, Queen H5, what if those queens get traded? traded which is exactly yeah. what happened. Bishop went back to these. Interesting that Larry uh, played Bishop E3. I might have been anxious to try D5 myself. Bishop E3. Knight to d3. Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to get uh, the zen of what's going on here. That's a funny way of uh, usually in an isolated uh, queen pawn position, you don't see a central pawn duo. And by, suddenly by appearing. the way, guys, c5 yes. is on the board in that game. What, what's on the board? C5 is on the board in Jennifer Yu's game. Oh, oh. not rook, take, rook no, to d8. Not rook d8, the best move, c5. And we're in a, a very intriguing uh, night ending. 
Uh, normally speaking, night endings, uh, so much in the night endings are about um, past pawns that are further away from the center. Yes. But oftentimes, night ending is also about activity, specific, specifically the kings. And we can see that white has just played the move king e3, thinking about king e4, d5, and on a good day, the king would trot yeah, right would down the I'm, long diagonal. I'm quite the happy with white's position. Uh, with, with, with the space. Yeah, space, the pawn structure, mm -hmm. the king activity, the potential for the knight, everything seems to be just... But if I could get in, wow, uh, king, I don't know, should I, maybe I should be playing with my knight instead. I'm. I'm a little bit unsure about this position. Uh, it does feel like whites for choice. I just don't know if it's... How much? Yeah, if it's yeah. severe or not at the moment. And it might just be happening that uh, sometimes when you do get in the, in the move D5, let me just put a move on the board for just a moment, that sometimes you just kind of hit a, um, a door. Although this king does dominate. Hmm. Uh, definitely a, a, a game we want. I want to keep an eye on. I just also wanted to uh, take a look at some of our um, players in second place who are doing very well. Dmitry Gurevich versus Nick DeFermian. Uh, Nick, two bishops, but wait a minute. He uh, Dima has sacrificed a pawn, f4, and Nick is saying, show me. You know, yes, I understand you've got a bishop and you've got a good knight, but two bishops, rook, king h1 should be better for white. Uh, Joe Benjamin, uh, pardon me, Max Delugi oh, versus Joe time. Benjamin. Oh boy. What happened? The, the time? Black had 17 minutes. Oh. What? Go one more. So, you go one, one more. 17, 17 minutes. Oh. Boy, Joel, uh, really <laughs> down on the clock and in awkward position, too. Uh, White's majority is very, very nice. The knight kind of oh got stuck on c6 here. I like White's advantage. Can uh, we take on b7? Can we take on b7? I don't know. I, I, I stopped just because I rook saw the move rook b8, but there is. No, rook Ooh. takes c6, I was thinking. But that, that oh, one is also a move, yeah. Rook takes c6. Rook takes c6. Wow. Rook takes c6. I think rook b7 is the only move, right? Okay. And then rook takes c6, bishop takes f3, and hope that bishop e2 puts me in an awkward position. And maybe it does. Hmm. Maybe it does. Yeah, Th this looks like it's okay for black. Whew. <laughs> for a moment there, I mean, it, visually, rook takes <laughs> c6 looks like a cruncher. But yeah, I think it's okay. But then again, your question, right? What about bishop takes d5? Right. But perhaps this is not the best you can get as white, right? Rook takes b7, bishop takes c6, rook b8, and we get into this endgame. We know that white probably doesn't have any problems, and maybe even no. slightly better, but not much more than that. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll keep an eye on that. And finally, Igor, we... <laughs> How could we not go to the two Igors? <laughs> I mean, you got, you got Igor uh, Novikov, uh, who's been playing well. And by the way, um, what's interesting is in all of the discussions, the interviews, as the seniors come up and they talk about their games, they're oftentimes saying Igor Novikov is like the premier expert. And he knows so many variations of the Nidorf mm. that they really respect his preparation. So for those of you who are watching the show who want to play the Night Earth, you might want to take a look at Igor Novikov's games and use him as a guide because everybody who's come out here and spoke about uh, their games with him uh, have nice things to say about his uh, theoretical Wonderful. knowledge. We saw so many G and H pawns flying today. Um. And then finally, and I did want to turn to Christian on this one because this game between Craig Gregory Kadai 
Kaidanov, <laughs> pardon me, Greg, and uh, Shabadabadu, Alexander Shabalov, has blowed up. And this is a crazy position uh, going on here. What's going on, Christian? This I is, mean, what just is, happened? Black is completely busted for a it while busted. now. For a while now, but what? to be honest, really? White had an even better opportunity right now. He played the move C5. Okay, good move, decent move. Uh, keeps the advantage in White's camp, but Bishop takes C6 was actually decisive really? right now. It seems like this is a plus 3.1 advantage for White. I had no White. idea. If you take with any of the pawns, especially with the D pawn, queen to D6, Don't invades, rook to B8, no. rook, queen takes C6, this is over. Right. You cannot do that. You have you to take, take with the, with queen. the queen. Exactly. Now, queen to D3. Now, it's and a this very, is a three-pawn advantage? It, it's a three-pawn advantage. And it, only what? with perfect moves by black. Because, for example, if you play something like castle, Very check this out, move. f5, let's go. Let's keep going. Where do you put the queen? You don't have where to put the queen. That's the problem. You go queen e7, b4 is coming in the position. Bishop to c7, bishop to c5 comes in the position as well. Wow. This is just simply dominant. Every single move is coming with tempo. And let's take a look at if you do something else, for example, instead of uh, castle, castle, maybe you start with the take, move queen to on e7. Just we, take we, on f4. You open up the g-file. Ha ha ha, thank you and very castle. much. Yeah. Yes, sir. I know, oh, but I'm not you worried have about a death F wish. I mean, come on, f5. Queen e5. Queen e5. Yes, let's go. I got to oh. check. You're congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I want you more checked. than just a congratulations. I want a diploma. I want a participation. Congratulations. You gave me a check. Uh, That's certificate. about it. <laughs> what else? Where is your attack? You have nothing. I don't know. I mean, a recognition of excellence. <laughs> No, I mean, that really? Be, I mean, it's yeah. a three. I mean, I would have th no, thought right now after D5. Right now it's close to four. I would have thought after D5, D5 I was in here with a with the shot. 5.6. What? Yes, sir. 5.6. Terrible. Terrible. It's over. Wow. But even the position that we have right now, it's not that easy. Nevertheless, black is having something to well, work with. Well, that's what with. I thought. And that is the that it pawn was on C5. Okay, so the current position. Okay, I agree that bishop takes e6 would have been maybe, uh, instead of c4, c5, I mean. Uh, but the current position, uh, g g give us some insight. Is it still, like, plus 3? It's plus 1.6. That's pretty decent. Okay, and uh, give us some lines, uh, Christian, please. What would you like uh, to do as white? And... Uh, you you s start me start me off. Right. Like how 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 do you continue right now? Do you take on e5? Because it, there's a big moment right now. You right. can change the character of the position by taking on e5. Right. The structure right. is changed. Uh, you can also go queen to d6, change the character of the position like that. That maybe is the most conservative approach and try to right. go into uh, a much better end game. That's one way of doing things. You can go bishop takes e6 and. Strive for variations that we've seen previously. The problem is, Does B4? once you take, take. Now, this diagonal is open, yeah. so now I can invade with the queen via B3. So that I'm, might be a bit problematic. OK, go back. I, I would find myself drawn to the move B4. B4, all right. Continue like this. Bishop C7. And knight to, to D5. Oh, yes. Yes. Because I'm, I'm You're drawn... playing nice chess, but at the same time losing your advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to play d5, d6, dude. Uh, that's work okay, with that's me on okay. this I'll, one. I'll take, I'll take. Uh, I have to take with a pawn, Probably. I guess. No, I'm not going to move my knight. Oh. I'm going to invite you, you to take you, on you, d6. You, you got off the uh, d6. Yeah. Die. yeah, and now I'm starting to take advantage uh -huh. of your weakness. I played on the d4, queen side. I played c5. You did play the move b4 and c5. You weakened the king a little bit. Exactly. So you have to be careful. And wow. There, he's still in the game. This is what I'm seeing from uh, this uh, last few moves sequence. Alex Shabalov was pretty much dead if bishop to a6 would have come on the board. Right now, he's still in the position, still in this game. And the clock situation is quite close. 31 minutes for Kaidanov, 32 minutes for Alex Shabalov. I have to say, Kaidanov doesn't feel like he's in his best shape.
-hmm. in this tournament. He has been uh, drawing all his games, actually, 50% right now, but he did not manage to convert any of his advantages. He didn't get into much trouble himself either. Nevertheless, he's not himself, it feels like. Right. All right, well, thank you for that. I wanted to pick up, because uh, we kind of left off uh, with Christopher Yu for just a moment, our tournament leader in the juniors. He's had a phenomenal result, four yes. and a half out of five. He's up against Justin Wang. When we left it, I we just seen the move knight d7. Lots of moves have been played in that game. I was expecting knight to c5 to, in anticipation yep. of b7, b6. Rook f, b1, b7, b6. C5, okay. and Justin took a completely different approach. Huh. Takes, takes, and Bishop takes E7. Hmm. Nice. Rook takes, and he has to maintain this pin, otherwise True. the bishop is hanging. But Christopher, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got, I got my shots too. Queen E7, as well as Queen takes E2 on tap. And we are catching up to the players. Um... And once again, as is so often the case in these Benko gambits, uh, even though we're in an ending where black is a pawn up, white has got this nasty little threat of knight to d6 uh, in combination with the bishop. Uh, is it enough for the pawn? Uh, your take? Uh, would you rather have the initiative or would you rather have the pawn? Uh, a pawn eater. You're not a pawn. You you you, you like you, no. you, you. Would you no. describe yourself as a, a tactician, an attacker? You like to attack. Um, let me let me let me. Um, I like to attack, but but the pawn. I I, I would go with the pawn. And you know, um, Cubitic actually has this really cute um, king and queen chocolates that you can eat. Oh really? Yeah, but there's no pawn like that. Although they do have a. Um, like baking stuff that you right. can make. Um, it has like a king, queen. So you can make a chess piece. Exactly, yeah. Right. So if you wanted a pawn, mm. <laughs> if you actually wanted a pawn that you can eat, I weren't hurt. <laughs> My niece and nephew recently made me a birthday cake where they had the chess set. Oh, nice. Yeah, they put it on. Uh, unfortunately, the chess set was only 32 and not 64 <laughs> <laughs> pieces. But I ate the 32 chocolate pieces. Nice. I, I had some help. Um, what's your take, uh, Christian, uh, or do you have another position that, that caught your attention? I, I have a big position, guys. Oh, oh. Sophie. Morris, Sophie Suzuki is winning again. No! Oh. She's winning again. Wow. Not this lady her, is going to go to six out of six in this tournament and wow. run away with the event. Let's take a look, and we were mentioning this position after knight to g4, queen to e2 was the best move. Nevertheless, not Taking easy to find, a6. right? Because take on c5, take on a6, and all that craziness uh, right. that was ensuing in that variation with a king stuck on the first rank. We've seen that already. She was drawn, that is Ru Yang Yan, to uh, the defense of the pawn on c5 with the move queen to c2. The problem is that after knight e3, which was on the board, Queen to f2, knight takes d1, rook takes a d1. By the way, queen uh, on c3, not queen to f2. Now I can just simply take on c5 with the rook. You go to e3, you have to go to e3, I, I, otherwise I have discovery checks galore mm. in the position and you're just simply going to lose. And I see this position, I see the knight on a2 completely out of the game, and I'm wondering why don't I just play the move a5? stop you from going to b4. If you give me another move, for example, if you take on h3, after queen to c7, this knight is almost stuck on a2. You're in right. big, big trouble. At the same time, you cannot generate any sort of initiative with your pieces. Mm. Your king is still weak as white. So after a5, I'm thinking knight to c3 makes a lot of sense. Try to activate the knight. Try to find a good uh, placement for the knight. The problem is that what if I just simply go queen to e7 or rook to b8? Pretty much any of uh, these moves you take and then I go rook to c8. It feels like it's so much easier to play with the black side, right? right. The bishop spent some time taking this pawn on h3, now facing this block of pawns, um, especially spearheaded by this pawn on e6. Mm. 
it's not getting activated anytime soon. Mm -hmm. At the same time, black species are waiting to invade white's position. The rook is right. going to come on the second rank after he moved the knight from c3. This is all Sophie Mori Suzuki in this game and in this tournament. Wow. Check that scoreline out oh, after well, five. I mean, <laughs> what else can be said about this perfect scoreline? Right. This is the tournament of Sophie Morris Suzuki's life right now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, remarkable. <laughs> right? Well, we, when we're talking about A5, I just wanted to, like, what if, if I right now, what if I just want to, like, torture my opponent a little, <laughs> a little bit and Not don't to take, take the pawn? Yeah. What if I just play, like, A5, so don't just play Knight B4, just... It's not like you can stop the C5 stuff. Well, can't I defend the pawn? Well, I would happily bring more attackers on it. Oh, you mean something like Rook C7 yeah. and just... Be Wow, that's a. Just to make remarkable. sure that my it just hurts. <laughs> you wanted to, you you, you want to control the <laughs> yes. night. You want to control yes. the night. Wow, um, yeah, that's a intriguing idea. I, I I was just I was just so sure of rook c five and queen e three. No, no, it's okay. You threw <laughs> you you threw me off completely with uh, such a suggestion. Um, one thing I would maybe be just a little bit weirded out about whoa, whoa. Dorsa uh, is this idea that... Two pawns? It, yeah, you're huh. giving me two connected pass pawns and I kind of would feel like I, I bailed. And if you don't take the pawn, well, then I've got like knight and then Let's it's see. a different ball game. But A5, uh, just kind of controlling the knight, something... Uh, I mean, if you can do that, do it slowly, I mean. Um, Sophia's really, really, really doing well. And uh, we're going to go to a commercial break. And as we do, we wanted to tell you that we asked the juniors, what were their goals? These are their answers. What are the goals and ambitions that you're bringing to this tournament? Yeah, you know, obviously I'm just looking to play some good games. I think unlike prior years, I'm not really um, looking for a particular result. I'm just really trying to enjoy chess. Um, for me, this is you know one of the one of the few tournaments I have planned for the year. So you know, it's not something that I'm putting myself um, under too much pressure for. I mean, obviously I'd like to like win some games and, and play really well. But um, more than just like a result, I really wanted to like play good chess and um, and just be satisfied with my uh, my play. This tournament, okay. I mean, I hope to play good chess. Obviously, just get a. It's it's a pretty tight tournament. Anyone can win. I'll want to fight, fight, fight for the top spots at least. And okay, another personal goal is to get to twenty five hundred. I'm pretty close. So well, I, the, I'm playing against like some of the best juniors across the U S. I just want to play my best and prove the like. I can do well, and I just hope that I can use this opportunity to the best of my ability. Most mainly, just take it game by game, and not not I'm not thinking too much about the end result, but more just move by move and staying in good shape. This is a very strong tournament. I I'm, I think I'm second seed in this tournament. I hope to win this tournament. I'll do whatever I can to do it. Well, I I mean I'm not having I'm not really having any like specific goal for the tournament. I mean. Not, not really anything specific in terms of results. Um, not, nothing crazy. I'm just trying to take it one game at a time. Um, focus on what I can control. And that's about it, just doing my best and being happy with what I can do. I'm gonna be honest. I don't really have much of a goal except not to lose too badly. Um, I think that's like a fair standard to hold myself to. It'll be a good tournament. And this will be really embarrassing if I end up playing really badly. <laughs> But I'm just going to say it now.
everyone and welcome back to our live coverage of this round six. It's Sophie. <laughs> She's so caught over. Show. I know it's the Sophie show. That's what it's turning into. <laughs> as, um, as Sophie uh, Suzuki is five out of five, and she she did go for the pawn. By yep. the way, I mean, uh, I mean uh, rook takes c5, and here's our standings, and we see that she's. A clear point at first. Yeah, and then Jennifer Yu and Talia Cervantes are following her with four points each. And what's interesting is Jennifer is playing against Rochelle. Rochelle's saying, hey, wait a minute, if I can win, I can join you, Jennifer. Right. Jennifer's saying, look, I've got to win so I can keep <laughs> pace with uh, Sophie. And in the juniors, oh, I was going to say, there's a, not the standings for them as well. Uh, but to pick up where what we were talking about is after the move queen c7, materially speaking, white's not doing that bad. The problem is the coordination of the pieces, the minor pieces, that is to say, two minor pieces for the rook. Uh, you're thinking, should I take this pawn or should I take this pawn, which is kind of like awkward. I mean near my king. And the problem is the central squares, even though these pawns are doubled, they're covering a lot of central squares. It would be brilliant of us to be able to play knight b4, knight d5. If except, that guy didn't exist. It, exactly, <laughs> right. but that guy does exist. And that's why we think um, Sophia is doing very, very well. Should she win this? Obviously she jumps to six out of six, but this is not unusual for uh, girls' championships, junior championships. I've seen in the world championships, oftentimes you need a, a massive score, like eight yes. and a half out of nine or eight out of nine. Sometimes I've seen perfect scores, even nine out of nine. What was your <laughs> best uh, junior championships, youth championships? Well, I, was, I grew up and I was you know, raised in Iran up until I was 17, 18. And um, so I played some of the national events, like under 8, 10, 12, 14. I think that was eight, the end of it. 8, 10, 12, 14, right? That's <laughs> that a lot. That was the end of it. And I remember um, I was under 10 and under 12. Mm -hmm. I, um, I had two 9 out of 9s, and I was like, Nine out of nine. <laughs> and I mean, I had won the tournaments like around the heads, but I was just like, I really, really want. And there wasn't any want prize a money. Score. It or was anything. a trophy. It was just like, I want that perfect yeah. score. Right. <laughs> it was quite fun. How about you? Um, no, I, I didn't have those um, eight out of eight kind of scores. I, I, I won the World Junior Championship yes. with 10 and a half out of 13. Uh, which was a fine score, but now I'm seeing even much bigger scores than that. Um, my best, I, I, this was great, this was great. This is my, my, one of my favorite stories, is on a completely crazy situation. I was on a plane, and I was going from what, you say, Hamburg, a plane? a plane. Okay. I was going from Hamburg to someplace in England, and I don't even know, remember the place, Bristol maybe? I'm not really too sure. Anyway, I look, and oh my gosh, my seated mate that was sitting next to me was Anatoly Karpov. Oh, nice. <laughs> Random universe, right? <laughs> like bang, bang, bang. And we got to talking, and I said, Bobby Fischer had a 21-game win streak. He won 21 games in a row. One was a forfeit, so 20 games in a row. And I thought, wow, you know, like, Talia, that's just incredible. What was your best result? in terms of consecutive wins. And he goes, I once had 6-0. Six 6-0, zero. Six zero. I won six games in a row. I said, wow, well, you know, Linares, uh, 94, I believe. And he said, how about you? And I said, well, twice I've had 7-0. I won seven <laughs> twice nice. against grandmasters. And he goes, yeah, yeah, but they weren't that good. And I go, actually, they were. You were one of the victims <laughs> of the 7 0. <laughs> so it's like, yes. yes, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, hurt. <laughs> it was great. That was nice. like a, a, a beautiful moment. Christian, um, you've played a lot of these junior youth events. You needed big scores, right? No, absolutely. Well, in the Romanian youth events, I think I scored quite a few times 11 out of uh, 11. Ooh. It, 
especially at the, at the younger age, like right. under 10, especially I think yeah. I had maybe like two, three years when I wanted with a perfect score. In the world They're youth- They're not worthy. <laughs> but that, that was at the national level. In the world youth, I did win under 16 with an eight and a half out of 11. So not a super major score, right? You nowadays see nine, maybe nine and a half. Right. Eight and a half did uh, win. Uh, during those times in uh, general. So right. nowadays I have a feeling that we're seeing more and more of this type of dominant scores, especially scores. when you have a player that's just simply unstoppable. It's Jennifer, an you had an almost perfect tournament. Eight out of nine? Yeah. Well, uh, eight and no. a US championship. Yeah, 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 yeah. US yeah. championship. She won like 10 and a half, 10 out of 11. She had... I, what was it? Was it eight out of nine or was it... 10 out of 9, it, it 11. It was 11 rounds. I remember It was that 11? Much. Then yeah. it was maybe 10. Maybe that 10 was a monster score. I just know, like, I was looking, I was like, oh, she, she, <laughs> she won again. She, she just Beating keeps going. Beating everybody. So, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, it, let's jump into the game of uh, Jennifer and Rochelle because Ooh. we're kind of seeing uh, those positions. She did, by the way, Rochelle did play against the move knight b3. Uh, the move c5, uh, the most challenging, uh, and after bishop takes f6, g takes f6, whoa, bishop takes, rook takes, knight to d2, rook back, pawn to e4. We're caught up with the players, but I have to say, I'm actually not that impressed. You see these pawns and you, it's scary. It's scary, <laughs> yes. like our king is super exposed. That was your initial reaction too. Right, but then when you kind of dig a little deeper, this knight is not going anywhere. In fact, after a move like rook e8 and bishop c6, your knight is actually kind of tethered to this pawn on e4 and you're not going queen h5 and checkmating me. Uh, the queen will not deliver checkmate by herself, uh, which is why way back here, I think it was incumbent upon Jennifer to play the move knight f3 in order to go to knight e5. Uh, the current position, uh, I mean, it looks visually like it's, it's scary, but once you look at rook e8 and say, okay, go ahead and checkmate me, <clears throat> <laughs> You know, if I could magically uh, no. put that knight from d2 to d5, I would love that, but... <laughs> right. If our rook was on f1, by the way, one move that I might find Ooh. attractive would be something like this. Again, if my rook was on f1 and I could put my pawn on f5, my knight on e4 would suddenly be a, a, a Thor, a, a god of wonder. <laughs> but on d2, it looks pretty, well... Normal. Uh, jump right in, uh, Christian. Uh, Jennifer uh, missed her, missed her target. To give you uh, an assessment of the position, actually, not only that she missed her target, but oh. right now she's worse. Yes. Much worse after rook to e8. Uh, as you pointed out, rook to e8 just put pressure on the pawn on e4 to right. not allow this knight to get back into the game. Right. Of course, imagine a knight landing on d5, that would be an ideal scenario yeah. for white. You're not getting there anytime soon. I'm going to put a lot of pressure on this pawn on e4, and unfortunately, this knight is stuck to the defense of the pawn on e4. Rook to e8, bishop to c6 is one of the moves. You can even reinforce your attack with the move queen to d6. Not only that, but the queen on d6, is ready to jump to d4 and put mm -hmm. a lot more pressure on the pawn on e4. At the same time, it has some defensive tasks, and that is defending this pawn on f6. For example, uh, after a bishop to f c6, which makes a lot of sense, queen mm -hmm. to g4, king to f8, and queen to h4 could potentially become a little bit problematic. Nevertheless, it does seem like even this works quite nicely for a black after the move queen to d6 or even queen to d8. Nevertheless, you can prepare this whole sequence by defending first in anticipation of this maneuver, the pawn on f6 with mm -hmm. the move queen to d6. It just feels like everything is flowing in black's direction. Not only the position, but also the time. Right now I see Rochelle with 26 minutes, Jennifer with only 16 minutes and a lot of moves to make, 16 moves still mm -hmm. to go in the position. And if we go uh, back a couple of moves, Right. At this point, move 21, only three moves ago. Jennifer was up 
by six minutes. Oh. 35 minutes against 29 minutes, but she spent a lot of time on this decision. 20 minutes on a bishop takes e4, which mm. was indeed a very uh, consequential decision. Knight to d2, rook to e7, e4. Rook to a, rook a8 is on the board and Rochelle Wu is taking over the initiative in this game. All right, well, thank you for that. I just uh, checking in, always checking in on our tournament Actually, leaders. Sorry. Before we move to the juniors, can we take a quick look at Talia's game so that we can wrap up the, um, the lady section? Uh, One yeah, more. Yeah. <laughs> Almost there. Nice. Okay. Actually, we're right there. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And what's your, what, what, what are you thinking? I mean, since I picked Talia as a person to win, yeah. I, okay, <laughs> I was so, like a combination uh, the, the, on her. The, the last move, I think, was A5, and Talia's sitting there going, aha, I want to chase your yeah. knight back to, into purgatory. <laughs> uh, get out of here. Bishop A6. Now, that is inviting. You know, I... I, I have this like sixth sense where pawns are concerned. Spidey that isn't, sense. yes, my spidey sense that says, uh, what about the move bishop g4? Give me your queen. If you play the move f2, f3 to defend your queen, Ooh, love the things then I can pick up this pawn. I agree. I am losing an exchange, but that's one pawn because it's check. And that looks like a second pawn. So that's something that would uh, I immediately attract my attention. Now, if I could get you to move your queen, well, then I'm really happy because I can trade and rescue my rook. And at the end of the day, nobody is saving the pawn on h5. So I would think bishop g4. Bishop I would, g4 is very doable, I think, too. But I would be reluctant to play rook c7 because, ah. whoops. Yeah. Now, because now you have to start trading pieces, mm -hmm. and the trades are going to be beneficial for white, um, even with the fact that this pawn is on h5. Sorry, please. Oh, I was just going to say, in the game, Talia just played rook a8 after bishop a6. Oh, well, mm -hmm. then the move, a bishop a6 by Alice, is definitely worthwhile because rook c1. Ah. Probably queen b2. Maybe queen b2 keeps uh, the initiative going. Hmm. Bishop g4 is still incoming, so I'm still comfortable with black's position. I wouldn't say, you know, winning, but I no. feel like it's just black is maybe has an edge. If I can eat the h5 pawn now, we can, when we can, we talk can start again. talking uh, <laughs> about it. Yeah. Uh, rook, well, geez, if I have to play rook c1, queen c2, rook c2, bishop takes b3. I'm Ooh. not a big fan of giving up this pawn, but double, sometimes double. you've got to do what you got to do. Is this, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get scared and looking for a way of bailing out. This pawn on h5 is not very oh, good. She's reaching for a bishop. She's not reaching for a rook. I love how the camera is trying so, to zoom in. Ooh. Bishop to b5. Huh. Okay, let's see what oh. Alice has in mind. She's just played bishop a6. She chased the, first, the rook away. Yes. And then came bishop rook a8. Bishop b5, the first thing I'm thinking is I just want to go a4. I just want to kick your knight sure, away. Sure, which is why she played yeah. uh, a5 in the first place. You can't really stop my bishop g4, so I just want to kick the knight away, make sure I'm, I'm interfering with rook c1. And, yeah, then maybe Not I'll much. just bring bishop to g4 if need be. Okay. If that pawn proves worthy. <laughs> <laughs> How could it not? Right. How could it not? Bishop to G, Bishop to E2. Okay, this still work. It's mm -hmm. not. Uh, it's not like done and dusted. True. Yes. Now my rook on A8 also kind of feels like it has a purpose. And so uh, even if not Bishop G4, even if we decide to just kind of let that pawn on H5 be worried, I, I do like A4 in that case. If, you know, after Rook A8, Bishop B5, A4, whoops. Mm -hmm. Yep, sorry. Oh, <laughs> You're I'm, wishing for Bishop G4 too I'm much? I'm sorry, I, I really, uh, I, because it's the first move yes. I put in the position, yeah. the, the, the system <laughs> thinks that uh, that was the move that was played. Bishop B5, A4. Yep. yep. 
Okay. If uh, and then the knight knows, maybe even the f rook can just join the party. Rook c8, so you, rook your rook c8. Yeah. Yep. Now the a, the a2 pawn is weak, so your a1 rook is kind of preoccupied. Your knight on d2 is kind of looking funny. Terrible. Queen on d1 is same. Queen mm -hmm. on d1 is just stuck by the h. I I really like this as black. Agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to. You just have to look at the captures to make sure that it's all good. I think bishop g4 is a great answer, once again, to any captures. My but queen feels a little overloaded, too. Why can't too. I take and then take? Of course. Of course you can't. I, I'm, I'm trying to bail out of what wait, I think. Wait, What did she do? Oh, she grabbed the rook. Huh. I mean, it's still logical, but a4 just felt so natural because you, you had just played a5. Right. So... Just I'm not sure what, I, I think Alice has really gone wrong, like wrong, wrong. Uh, first of all... <clears throat> I was trying to come up with a good Alice in Wonderland mm, pun, but I failed. No, it's not there. <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, um, compare the knights for, for a second. So yeah. this knight on mm -hmm. F6 has a target, Deal. but it also has Ooh. some nice squares that it can jump to. Spicy. When you play knight b3, where's your knight going in terms of going forward? It's not going anywhere. C5. Maybe knight c1, knight d3, knight it's, e5. It's but all that just feels so wrong. Yeah. Now, if white's pawns were on f3 and e4, the knight would be misplaced. It would be um, it would be contained. So the move knight b3 is literally a step in the wrong direction because there's no further step. Also, the bishop on e2, we're, we're running into bishop g4 in so yeah. many variations. I mean, it would really have behooved um, Alice to play a move like, for example, a4, and a5, maybe bishop f3, so she could jump her knight to e4. So in, in, a, in a sense, what I'm saying is she misplaced her pieces. Knight there, she misplaced her bishop. Oh, again. That, that, that keeps you coming wish. up. Rook a8, yeah. uh, bishop to b5, and Talia's pieces are, again, I prefer your a5, a4 move, but this bishop looks misplaced. There was a reason I was their captain. <laughs> yeah. You were their captain? Uh, slow woman's team. Okay. Okay, let's Ooh. jump over to uh, Christian for uh, news. I want to hear about this captaincy. Just a second. Guys, the games Please. are hitting up in Please. all three sections, but I was uh, taking a look at what's happening in the junior section, and it seems like David Brodsky might be headed towards his first victory. And against a Wander Liang, the rating favorite wow. in this event. And we were mentioning this position, Yasser. You did not believe no, that Black has enough compensation. I didn't. And he did not because he missed a bit. He played this move queen to d7. We were discussing this position. You're still far away from involving this rook into play. So what Black has to do is immediately go bishop to g6 followed by knight to f5. That was the only way to maintain equality, maintain the balance, and have mm -hmm. the initiative play for you. After that, instead of that, he missed a bit with his move queen to d7, allowed bishop to h5, a very clever move. Not only that I'm taking away the g6 square from the bishop, but also I'm getting ready to develop my knight. Knight to e2, knight to f4, and this is exactly what he did. Bishop to f7, knight to f3, knight to f5, finally uh, the knight landing on f5, but it's one move too late. Bishop to h6, take on h6, knight to e2, queen to d7, queen to e1, and once again, I am a pawn up. I am a pawn up, and I do have a lot of pressure on your beautiful knight on e4, and it doesn't seem like you have enough compensation for the lost material right now as black. How do you develop your uh, advantage? How do you develop your initiative? I know what I'm going to do as white. I'm going to go queen to e2 and then rook to f1 Bingo. and ask you, what are you going to do in the meantime? Because exactly. I have a beautiful knight ready to jump to f7 if your knight from h6 moves away as well. You want to take on g3, and I really like this move rook to f3 because it nicely protects everything, the complex of pieces around white's king. Rook to f3 cements the knight on g3. You will never be able to take it on uh, g3 because after rook to g3, I'm just invading uh, next to your king. I really like what David is doing in this one. Let's take a look at... What's happening in the Justin Wang versus the leader of our event, 
Christopher Wu, and we have this position. It has simplified quite a lot. But one thing that has extra stayed pawn. the same, <laughs> there's still an extra pawn for black. Right. So how do we assess the, this position? I understand the material is very simplified. With some good moves, some very precise moves, maybe white has a decent chance of finding equality. But how easy it is. And I do believe that this move f4 was quite a good move, a very precise move. If you don't do that, I am going to be able to take advantage Check. of uh, that potentially rook to a1 followed by rook to a2 and pin the pawn on f2. You cannot allow that. That's why he played move f4, rook to a1, king to g2, rook to a2. You have to drop back to g1. For example, if you go to h3 after uh -oh. knight to f2, your king might get in trouble. You don't want to see that right. on the board. So king to g1, I understand you're cut. You don't have a lot of flexibility with your king, but what you can do is try to get this knight to g5 or to e5 and put some pressure of your own mm -hmm. on a black pawns on the king side at the same time. Once you remove the knight from d4, this pawn is going to go down the board. I have to say, I'm looking at the position. I know Christopher is a grinder. He knows how to grind this type of minimal advantages. I also look at the time, only nine minutes left for Justin Wang. Definitely a lot of pressure for the young player with the white pieces. Christopher might be headed towards another victory in this one. Remarkable. Uh, in the game between Andrew Hong and Carissa Yip, whenever I'm playing or one of the people who are doing badly in the tournament, this is the time for me where I get nervous. Oh. It's really weird. It's sort of like everybody's beating up on this poor person. Right. My turn and to beat up on oh. this poor person. And it's sort of like this is a game I really have to win because, she, because Carissa's giving away, like Father Christmas, the points. So I, when I'm playing somebody in the cellar, <laughs> I really don't want to give them chances. Fair. Well, let's take a look at what happened. This is a, the Benoni p position that we left it. We didn't like Carissa's position. We thought she's losing d6, and the move bishop to g3 was an issue. But bishop takes d6, a3, and look what happened. You play the move g4. Already, well, OK, in a Benoni, you know, uh, look at this. You're going to win it a piece. Uh, you're, That's you're what winning. I said, yeah. Carissa said, you know what? You can hey. win my rook. Who cares? <laughs> Take the rook. So he took the rook. All right. B5. And the position just blowed up. Like, you're what? Are, are I we mean, thinking import or export? Both. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Both. I want to take this bishop and okay. your king at the end of the day. You've kind of... Uh, expose your king to all kinds of uh, things and when you're in Andrew's position it's sort of like gosh I'm playing the tail ender mm -hmm. and uh oh I'm getting scared because I can see that if I lose a bishop there's going to be compensation yes. right you it, it, like this is going to be like one of those positions oh, where yes, you just course. know that things are gonna get real messy right Exactly, they're going to get re really messy. And knight takes e2 and queen g5 check. I mean, if you do something like this, this is just going to be game over on the spot. So, uh, what is the times of the players, um, Dorsa? Uh, oh my God, Carissa seems to have less than ten minutes. She's been in time trouble more, yeah. almost every game. She, and, and at this Andrew? moment, Andrew seems to have seventeen minutes on counting. Okay. And uh, nice time match for Andrew. Yeah, I did want to mention though, after Please. pawn to b5, yes. do you remember that story I told you I had that one student that I accidentally made cry? Yes, oh, good for you. <laughs> uh, uh, making, uh, turning them into champions. Uh, just, you know, the, telling the kid that, you know, there's always a but. You put, yeah. you know, you make this move, you have, there's pros, there's cons, and then he was like, but that's so weird. I don't want to think of chess like that. And I was like, Kid, that's just life, and then he just started crying. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> but guys, what's that's, alarming that's in that position about Carissa's time spanner is that they also have like 20 moves to go. Right, oh. that's what I was this saying. Is 21 in a wild Benoni with, well, you just it's, sacrificed a rook. Right? I mean, but there's it's, ink 
increments too. There is increments, but, I understand that, yes. But my point was pawn to b5, yes, it attacks the c4, but it's, it's the, uh, it, like the c5 pawn is still, you know, there is that butt with the c5 pawn. Can I just eat the c5 pawn? It's not so easy. I'll take on e2 with a check. Okay. You'll take. Kind of have to. Now, unfortunately, queen the desirable queen g5 check is not mate. Okay. Because you've got queen g4. All but right. I do take your knight. I feel like I have to move the queen. That seems exactly. To be the but only... then I'm kind of winning back the the, the whole rook that I just mm. sacrificed by uh, Ponte. In other words, yes, you can return the rook. But... And by the way, I don't think Carissa <laughs> is going to go for that. Really? What do you, you think? Take she's... on c5. Take on c5. Yeah. I think she's going to go for queen h4, knowing Carissa. Huh. I think she's going to try to go for the checkmate. Wonderful. Uh, checkmate. Wow. Just uh, say, okay, you're a full rook up, but I might as well try to checkmate you. Scary stuff. Scary stuff. Scary stuff. And, and now white has to go king h2, which once again, a very scary move. Queen to e4. The position is completely wild. Queen to e4. I see the checkmate that you're trying to engineer. Holy smokes. And that's the question. How do you uh, attribute your resources along the way, right? Because you only have eight minutes left on the clock. Are you going to spend... Four minutes to try to calculate this type of variations, or are you going to go knight takes e2? 19 moves. <laughs> That's left. a lot. Uh, so, what I'm saying is, Carissa's swinging for the fences. Yes. And you don't want to go down against the tail ender so that you start you know, feeling nervous. There was only one game in my entire career that would, I was ever nervous about from the start. I've had many times black pieces against Gary Kasparov, Anatoly Karpov. It was against Kamran Shirazi. Kamran Shirazi started the U.S. championship like 0-6, oh, and, <laughs> and it was my turn. I have to win. I mean, I absolutely keep pace with the players. I have to win against Kamran, and he was a very, very dangerous opponent. I mean, he could beat anybody on any given day. This was not his tournament. I ended up winning, but it wasn't until like, you know, three hours into the game Oof. when I knew I was going to win the game. Wow. It's scary, and Queen H4 would <laughs> terrify me as well. So, yeah, B B5, uh, jump right in, uh, Christian. What should Andrew play to tame the position down? There's no taming the position. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not taming the position. You, you are forced to calculate right now. So Bishop takes C5 is actually the best move in the position. Pick up the pawn, but more importantly, destabilize the knight on d4. I think that's okay. quite important. And after queen to h4, this is the line that we were discussing. King to mm -hmm. h2, queen to uh, e4. And now after f3, it does seem like you're forced to go queen takes e2. Once you exchange the queens, I'm going to be happy, right? Right. Because of I was trying to avoid that. Yeah, that's the thing. You you just simply it doesn't seem like you have enough time to avoid it. Now you can also take on e2 instead of queen to h4. Can, can, can I go bishop e? Oh, sorry. Bishop e5, knight, knight takes knight, e5. Knight I takes still e5. have that knight on c4. I know it's yes. attacked uh, by two pieces. It feels like it's already gone right. off the board, right? right? But it's not. It's still there. So gotcha. Sorry, you were about to say after bishop c5, queen h. For maybe just king h2. maybe just the normal knight takes e2 instead of queen to h4, and how do ah. we assess that position is the question, right? So exactly. knight takes e2, uh, you take on c4 next, and that was I go queen to e4 or queen to f3, let's say, right? Right. How do we assess this position? Well, it's an extra pawn for white for sure, right? Extra pawn after oh. bishop takes f1, yes. Do we take with a rook or with a king? I was thinking about maybe I should have I should have started maybe with queen g5 check. But that's okay. Uh, then the I rook go... on a8 is not protected, so that's another oh, tempo. Oh, excuse me. You're right. That's another tempo, right? So maybe right. I can go king h1, hide my king like that. That is true. No, 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 no. Uh, it's an extra pawn for white. Is it terrible? I don't know. Uh, We're she... playing for two results, it seems like. I Right now. Is it? I think so, yeah. Because b2 is hanging, Christian. But maybe I can take with a rook, just because okay. I want to prepare uh, b4. This is the dream position for me. I want to play b4, I want to stabilize the bishop on c5, yeah. and get the king on c1, and just say that I have enough. And by the way, none of this will happen, because, because? we just saw a move on Andrew board. played bishop g3, he got scared. Of queen h4. Of queen h4, and exactly. he said, no, 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 I, I'm trying to 
control, temper the position. But as, without the pawn on c5, that knight will live forever on d4 right now. Yeah. And that's a powerful knight. That's a that beautiful a knight. Say, I'm no, starting I'm to it. warm up to Carissa's <laughs> position. Thank you. That, well, that's where it gets scary, right? Again, you're playing the tail ender. Nobody wants to lose to the tail ender. But in this particular position, Carissa's got a really dangerous initiative. I'll just leave it there and say, I don't doubt that black, pardon me, white has defensive resources. But having the initiative with less time, and by the way, I just checked uh, with the engine. Yeah. Bishop to g3 threw away the whole advantage. Really? In yes. one move? Just like One that. move. Not only Snake. that, but if you don't play the best moves right now, you might be worse as cool. white. The knight on d4 is such a powerful piece. Not only mm. that, but you have to contend with ideas of bishop to c6 followed by queen to d5, or maybe bishop to b7 followed by queen to d5. It's so difficult, and don't forget, this bishop on e2 kind of has to stay here. You can take a pawn on c4, but then you have to return to e2 because knight f3 is coming on the board. Check, so yeah. there are so many things that you have to worry about. In this position as white, from a practical perspective, with the clock ticking down and only 12 minutes for Andrew, or maybe less than that right now, uh, well, unfortunately, with 20 moves to go, mm -hmm. or like 90 moves to go, this is starting to become a very difficult task. Exactly. I wanted to also just uh, point out, boldly point out the obvious. Yes. Carissa's knight on d4 Beautiful. is defended by the pawn on c5, mm -hmm. uh, which is also defended by the bishop on g7. Fair. And we're lauding it. We're saying it's fantastic. It, it creates all of these threats. Remember the game of Jennifer uh, Yu for just a moment, where she could have played against Rochelle, she could have played right back here after oh, bishop yes, e2. Oh, yes, that knight f3, knight e5 idea? Yeah, knight, yeah. oh, pardon me, rook d1, bishop d7, knight f3. And again, if we make just one move for knight e5, you see the similarity. Oh, the nice. bishop on b2 protects the knight on e5, the pawn protects the knight, and I the see. knight on e5 is awesome. By the way, now that we're here, let me just mm -hmm. check in on... Sophie, she didn't play your a5. Well, I mean, she could eat the pawn. Four? No. Strange move, right? Well, that's a very, very peculiar move. I thought that I thought our only discussion was bishop h3, bishop a6, or knight b4. a4? And Sophie said, well, wait a minute. This knight is a little stuck. How are you, are you ever getting your knight? Rook b8. Um, Sophie's playing great. She's just playing great chess. Guys, but I want to Please. take the camera sure. right now to Jennifer's position and let's take a look and see what her response will be because she only has one move and if she Bishop doesn't take H3, she's losing. There is only one way. So let's take a look at the camera of Jennifer Yu right now. Let's see if she's going to find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, you, we you, you have to yes. have an image of like 12 people in production right? <laughs> running down the street with oh. cameras behind them, <laughs> entering nice. the playing hall full of sweat, going, Ooh, I like Whoa. The soup. Not only the fact that she only has one move to survive, but she only has four minutes to and make 45 it. seconds to go. Okay, I'm assuming it's G4? No. It's not no. G4. G4 is losing. E5 is the huh. only move. And sacrifice a queen after bishop to g4 with the move knight to e4. e4. Yes, exactly. Whoa. Finally, the knight lands on the great square f6. You so E5 is the critical move. The if she finds exactly. it, she has good chances of survival. If she doesn't, she's busted. Ouch. And just for... Um, our panel here in studio, uh, g4... Bishop takes g4, rook g1, h5, I'm assuming, or f5. I was I was trying to uh, break the blockade on the g file. Didn't work, um, Christian? No, I don't think it does. So let's uh, take a look. How do we do things here? Uh, um, I, I love your solution. Of first e5 of all, what if I just go king h8? Oh, I was attacking your queen, and you don't even move your queen. Right. Okay. Oh, 
Well, that ruins it all. <laughs> He's a party pooper. He didn't move his queen. I was going to go knight to e3, but Maybe that's a really King good move. F8, yeah? Yeah, but I love your solution. You know, the moment you mention it, you, it becomes very visual. e5, uh, bishop to g4, right now, guys. It, knight e4. Find it? Um, just to continue the position, there's queen Oof. takes d1. Knight to f6, I kind of feel like I want to do it automatically. You're right. I guess I, I move my king. Now you can take my queen and take my rook. I think that's the, mm -hmm. the way you go. Mm -hmm. But that queen takes d1, I mean, you got to see some really nice tactics. Oh, we're about to see some really nice tactics if she finds the movie. Five. What's the time of um, the players? One second, the time. Two minutes and 47 seconds, guys. For who? What? For, for mean, what's that, a partial? <laughs> Two minutes and 30 seconds against 17 minutes for Rochelle. Ooh. E5, guys, this is it. This is this is a critical so moment. if not E5, then Jennifer Then it resigns. Not only that, but the tournament G4. goes to waste. Right. Because Sophie is running away with it. Right. Well, I feel like Sophie's already bye bye. She, she's one of them. Next, please. Well, 6 0, if she goes 6 0. But uh, the problem is, I think Jennifer has these false leads. Like, you might be tempted to think you could play f5, and the bishop's oh, yeah. trapped until you see bishop takes f5. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have to calculate that and then say, Shh. oh no, Oy. she played f5. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. <laughs> Why <laughs> jinxed it? What, what, what just happened? <laughs> Guys, but what, what about bishop takes f5? I know. Instantly. Excuse me, what is that? There's no other choice, but that's a great move. Bishop takes f5. But doesn't it that just finishes the game? Yeah. Yeah. What is I, it? She missed bishop takes f5. But. No. She did. There's no nothing. Way. There is absolutely nothing right now. That's but a blunder alert, I'm afraid. Uh, Bishop F5, she just forgot. We are in the what, third, fourth hour, or third hour of the, the game. We are entering bl blunder wheel, so. <laughs> time trouble. Yeah. By the way, Jennifer has been getting into time pr trouble very much like. Carissa? Carissa, yes. who's been getting into time trouble. But Probably, Jennifer yeah. has been playing very well in time trouble. The move F5. Oops. But the move f5, I mean, the first thing you want to think about is what if take. I mean, um, there's exactly. no other alternative. Yes, this yeah. is the puzzling. Because uh, if they don't take, the bishop is just gone. He's lost. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maybe she's seen ghosts. There's no way she missed bishop takes f5, but what was and her And she's plan? thinking, so. Could she be thinking? If... I don't know. I. I, mean, I don't know what she was calculating, guys. I, I'm really puzzled by this decision, f5. Because Any chance she grabbed the wrong pawn to play? <laughs> right. Uh, and she's, about, she's below a minute And now. after her opponent's reaction, bishop takes f5, she didn't bring, yeah. bring her move instantly. I think she just completely missed bishop f5. She, she was looking at something else. Oh. And a draw as well. Our first result. Our first result. Nice. Of, uh, a lot of the games in all of the rounds, it's, you, we, we've been seeing hours and hours of play before the first result. I remember in the candidates, like, like we had a result within eight minutes. <laughs> I'm not playing to have seven. <laughs> it was like, what? Oh. And all of these uh, rounds have oh, been really hard God. fought. Jennifer just played the move queen. But now that bishop drops in. back to g6, beautiful protection around the yeah. king. There is nothing here for white. Well, except a lot of uh, negative pawns. Exactly, yes. Jeez. Um, a, big, uh, a, a big blunder by uh, one of our pre-tournament favorites, Jennifer. And here, with this head-to-head -head result, uh, Larry Christensen moves to four. Beautiful. Vladimir Kopian, three and a half. As Larry keeps a slim lead, two players, I believe it's Max Delugi and Dmitry Gurevich might still be um, able to catch him uh, with wins, of course. Oh, yes, yes, you're right about this, yes. With wins. Uh, just checking in on Sophia. Um, I, the, the last Feels move by Ru Yang uh, was, you know, to give her knight. Uh, against rook to b2, give her a knight the square c3, but the knight is not 
any great shakes nope. once it gets to C3. It's not ask. going anywhere. Else, would you yes. prefer this position to play for a win, or would you prefer the, the uh, Rochelle Wu's position to play for a win? I, I mean, like, would you prefer to be black in this position and pl play for oh, a win? Oh, Rochelle's black? position is so oh, okay. much cleaner. I mean, she's got two extra pawns and all beautiful harmony and coordination and weak pawns on e4. Okay. Right. Uh, very, very nice. Let me just check in on Talia's game for a second. Talia's... Okay, I'm saying time, first thing. Looking good. Talia is looking good, guys. Right. Talia is looking really good. Well, first of all, knight to e4 was played, right? So what yes. if I just simply go bishop b3 now? Correct. And I force the trade of the queens, which yeah. will take oh, me into an almost could... winning it. D3? No, 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 no. The bishop on d3. The take on Yeah, F6. but there's a, there's a rook on a8. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you tricky dog. What, what do you D3? mean? <laughs> All right, but what if I go g4 first? Oh. g4 first? Yes. Queen. That's okay. Now I take. Ah. Stop <laughs> it. Still yeah, it. Bishop, B6 Bishop B6. back to B6. And now, <laughs> finally, I have to you recognize ran my. Ran yeah, I tricks. ran out of cheapos. <laughs> uh, Bishop B3, you were about to say I was going to be forced to trade queens with, with Queen, Queen B1. B1 right. But that's not nice. This is not a nice ending. And you have to also take back with the bishop. But Question. Yes. Instead of trading queens, can I just eat the A3 pawn? Probably. I love uh, the superiority of Black's pieces. I mean, again, I mean, Queen B2. She's going for it, guys. What has she done? She's hovering over the bishop, it seems like. I think you she's see the hand. Uh, I see this in Scholastics. I think she's going to go for <laughs> it. I, I, I warn players, don't get in the habit of doing what Talia is doing. <laughs> don't do this. It's really, really, really bad. Uh, yes. Instead, nice. it's on the board. That's my Be girl. sure about your move. When you're certain that you're going to play bishop b3, grab the bishop, do it immediately. But if you hover... Opponents will understand what you're trying to do? Bingo. <laughs> Why yeah. give them information about well, what you're going to play? It could also Especially be in the surprise move. Yeah, surprise, I agree, but like this one, I mean, bishop b3 was kind of coming. We can't really stop it, but... Bad, be bad, bad, bad habits. Uh, stop them early. And again, this hovering, and the worst is to make your move. Oh, and come And then back. keep your paw, keep your finger on the move. <laughs> I see that in Scholastics, too, and I say, don't. How about, the, I've had, like, really tricky opponents. Right. So, like, what about, like, you know, like, if you want to play bishop b3, like, first go, like, hover around the other rook for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Just to make your opponent go, what? Is she going to blunder? Right. <laughs> Move the actual. <laughs> I know. Okay. Oh, uh, man. Talia's looking really good in this yeah. one. Uh, where do you want us to go, Christian? How about the Carissa game? Well, I mean, I really feel like we should stay with the ladies' game, especially okay. our leader, Sophie Mori Suzuki, for the moment. And maybe we can pan the camera on her as well, see what okay. her reaction is. Because right now, she's getting close to just putting the finishing touches on her opponent. Rook to C2 is on the board. Knight to c3, and look at that focused young right. lady right now. What if you just simply go rook to b3? Rook. Keep keep the pressure going. Attack the knight. Right. Rook to d rook to b3 seems like a very compelling decision and move right now. And uh, looking at the position, the more pieces we trade, and the more we're getting close to an end game where I can pick up that a pawn and create a passed pawn on the faraway a. File. Well, the closer we get to that, the more closer I get to a winning position, a completely devastating position. Absolutely. The move rook b3 looks very, very compelling. Um, normally speaking, you'd love to double the rooks on the seventh rank as well, but that will only come in. And we Bishop have takes, just takes been told that right now there is somebody in the chat that says that if Sophie goes 9-0, he will be donating $100 to the ah, same issue. And to her. Nice. In her honor. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, let's look at some great results. Uh, of these kinds of winning starts, uh, six and a half out of seven uh, was Vessel and Topolov way back in what was then not the candidates tournament. That was the world championship. He became the FIDE world champion 
by virtue of a six and a half out of seven starts in 2005 in San Luis, Argentina. He won the event. What else? Wow. <laughs> we'll never one forget only. this one. We were here for that. Wow, we witnessed it in real time. Fabi, seven out of seven. I can't believe he didn't go eight out of eight, by oh, the way, because he was so winning nice. against Magnus, I believe, in that eighth game. Jennifer. Yep, straight. What you said, yeah. she won eight in a row is like depressing. <laughs> right? Yes. Right? Uh, to any 19. And yeah. Uh, Five and a half out of seven, he did one really, really nice. Really nice. Really nice. I mean, Fabi through the first half was giving him chase. Fabi, I think, was five out of seven. He was he was only a half a point behind. And normally thinking, Fabi might have felt like I'm in first place. Right? No, you were in clear no. second, Fabi. And right. here's Sophie, five out of five. Well, she's going for six out of six yeah. <laughs> right now. I mean, did she play rook b3? By the way, Christian? she has yeah. not. No, she's still thinking. She, she's by got the way, that rook focus. b3 is not the only move. No, right? of course not. Uh, another way to exchange the rooks is to go rook to d8. That's the easier way, the simpler way. Ah. So big moment right now. Still only four minutes, by the way, for Ru Yang and uh, eight moves, seven moves to go. I have cool. to ask, uh, who is the youngest participant? At like in the in the, the girls' event. Mishra is fourteen or thirteen. I think Mishra, Mishra is thirteen. In the, in the Alice Lee is Alice is twelve, thirteen. I think she's thirteen also. Oh, also, so. Right. so it's Mishra and Alice Lee. Okay, right. wonderful. Well, yeah. those were the two that came immediately to mind. Yeah, I remember Alice Lee was one of the, I think, the youngest participant in the American Cup, so I assume that she would be the youngest here, <laughs> but I wasn't so sure about that. Alice is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I mean, at 12 years old, uh, having her own video channel. <laughs> it's just like, it's just so, Alice is Pond Palace on chesskids.com. Oh, yes, I mean, yes, you know, I mean it's, just, it's just marvelous to me. And I mean, inspiring you know, children all over the world to take up chess. I just, she's got total respect for me. It's like, well done, Alice. I like Rook D8. Something about Rook B3, you know, that's, you know, that's not the lazy, lazy player's move um, because then you start so thinking about Knight B5 and Sophie's Knight D5. Game, right? yeah, yeah, Sophie's, uh, Rook D8 is a lot simpler. You don't have any tactics to worry about Knight D5, Knight B5 discovered attacks against the rook on b3. Rook b8 looks like a, a very, very powerful move. I, sorry, I, I'm i more involved, I'm more interested in what's going on in the Andrew uh, Han Carissa Yip game because that's exciting. This is really, really good stuff going on Carissa here. Carissa impress you with that nice b5 idea? No, I just admire people who can sacrifice rooks like it's no no big deal. Nice, I'll take that. <laughs> Queen d7, she she's eyeballing an opportunity, and as uh, Christian was mentioning, the the bishop, well, you got to be worried. There's a knight f3 check, so in other words, bishop g4 might just be met by queen takes g4, and that will uh, hurt your feelings. King h2, rook e8, bishop d1, king h7. Huh. Wow, where did she come up with that? I thought that whole idea of, you know, getting your queen on this diagonal was attractive. Maybe queen f5. Uh, king h7, okay. We caught up to the players. How many moves? What's the times, Dorsa? Um, well, both players have around four minutes. Uh, Andrew has three minutes and a half. Carissa has four minutes and 20 seconds. And they have whoa, 13 more moves to go. But there, there's increments. I'm not terribly worried about their time. Right. But this is such a nice game. Even if they had like an hour and a half, this would still get go. Whoa. Wait. Now, I, I feel like the last few moves, Andrew's, Andrew's doing well. He's improved his situation. Have I got that right, uh, uh, Christian? That. Uh, well, queen yes, d5. Yes, yeah. I, th I, I, I think you're right. Checkmate? Yes, I think yeah. you're right about that. I can go rook to g1. Obviously, I have to defend against checkmate. There's yes. not a lot of ways to do that. But a couple of games that I think sure, will be please. finishing very, very soon are actually the one between Pedro Espinosa oh. versus Brandon I Jacobson. I see the number behind you. And oh, one, boy. Uh, forget about the number. It's <laughs> only one minute and 20 seconds for Pedro right now ooh, ooh. to make his next move. And he doesn't have any next move because you have to take on d6. I take back. 
and now the bishop ran out of squares, you're going Ooh. to have to sacrifice it, and then this is just a piece He's to the down. good. Absolutely no compensation. We expect a resignation in this one. Okay. Another one in which we expect oh. a resignation is the game between David Brodsky and a wonder, and this position after rook to g7, actually queen to f6 was such a nice touch if mm. you would have found this. If you take, now I transfer the knight to h6 by force, and now I go queen to f8, rook to g8, knight to f7, you're actually losing the queen oh. by force. And by the way, Brandon Jacobson has won his As game. You Pedro it, Espinosa yeah. did resign, he had absolutely nothing to do at that point. So. Big moment in this one. He did not uh, play queen f6. He played queen to g3, queen to h5, but this is completely winning as well. As Rook well. to f1, we expect once again reinforcing uh, terrible threats on the f file. You have to defend against Yikes. that, but unfortunately, my queen is getting in, queen h4, <laughs> my rook is getting in. Look at the Domination. difference between the knight on e5 and the bishop on e4. We expect a resignation to come shortly in this game between David Brodsky and a wonder. And take it all back, guys, to the Carissa game because that Ooh. one, oh my goodness, f3, not rook to g1, and this gives Carissa a winning advantage after oh, knight Carissa. to f5. The tables have turned, guys. <laughs> Not a surprise, because this was a double-edged position. Very easy to make mistakes with an exposed king. Let's see what Carissa, whether she finds this move, knight to f5, and turns the tables on I, her opponent I, I right bet, now. I bet she will, Ooh, and I'll it tell is you. On the board. It is on the board, guys. Beautifully you, done. I, I bet she would, and I'll tell you exactly why. Please. Because... White had played queen f4 with the idea of maybe playing queen h4 oh, check. Nice. So not only do you block your opponent's threat, you open up the rook, you open up the bishop, like give me the rook, but you also bishop e5. Nice. And it's so good. And knight f5, it just like, it's a triple threat. It's ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you, 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 you stop your opponent from playing queen h4, bishop e5, bishop takes e3. That's a gorgeous move, uh, Carissa. And how big a, is it, did you say winning advantage? Winning advantage. Decisive wow. advantage right now, and decisive advantage if white plays well. Like if white wow. plays the move queen to c1, queen which is c1? not an easy move, yeah. That not doesn't, finding that move. Well, that well, doesn't come immediately well, to mind. Where am I going with my queen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Queen to c1. Well, if you take on c4, and to my eyes, that looks like the more natural ah. move. Yes. Queen takes c4. Exactly. So now I can just simply go queen to d2, check. Oof. Check. I'm invading. Can I have just... And he did. He did. He you, took you on c4, it. yes. Queen that's, takes a, c4. that's a much more natural approach. But queen d2, check. Just finishes the game. You have to play bishop f2. Let's just take a look. Queen d2 check. Yes. You can't move the king because the bishop on g3 is hanging. Yes. So you have to drop back. And you can't move the rook because the bishop on d1 is and hanging. And now we see the beautiful geometry in the position. Bishop to f2. Queen to d6 check. What? I wasn't looking that direction. I was exactly. looking at the bishop. Backward moves, guys, whenever you're on the attack are the, one of the most, some of the most difficult moves to see. And not only that you're giving a check, but also you're supporting bishop to a6. Oh. That is the geometry in the position that I was talking about. A shish kebab. <laughs> Thank Let's you. See. <laughs> I have to ask, can I just eat the rook instead of this check? Just c3 rook e is kind of... That's a yummy. It. It's not enough. But then I not take. Enough? Not enough. Oh. Then Don't I take go back. for the But maybe queen f4 now. He's, he's done it, by the way, bishop f2. Again, what are the time stars at? Um, Carissa has three minutes counting. Three. And Andrew has two minutes and 47. So they're both in Re time trouble. Pressure? But, trouble? Yeah, time trouble. Uh, that move, bishop a6, that is just such a nasty move. Queen d6. Queen d6 check. Uh, because the first thing you want to do is involve all your bits, right? So bishop e5 check kind of like makes an impression. Bishop d4 makes an impression. Uh, there's a couple of ways of going wrong, but could, oh no, queen f7 check. Well, but, but I bishop wanna, takes, oh, 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 yeah. I was thinking that I wanted to take this bishop, but queen f7 check uh, hurts my feelings. Um, she did something. 
She did not play it. She played bishop e5. She it, played bishop e5. It's so uh -oh. natural to want to involve everybody that but queen d6 was difficult. Bishop e5, sorry. I have to say, sorry. bishop takes c3, if queen takes c3, there was a cute knight e3. Because if you take my queen, knight takes f1 and... <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Sweet. I'm happy with this. Bishop e5 turns the tables one more oh, time. No. Again? Right now, the position oh, no. is equal, suddenly. Oh. oh, boy. Oh, hold on. Let me just refresh my board. I, I, I beg your pardon. By the way, again, two results, one in the seniors, a draw with our tournament leader, and yeah. uh, Brandon has won. And guess what? Brandon's with Christian. Well, nice. uh, Brandon, welcome back to the show. Congratulations, a big victory with the black pieces. How did you uh, live this game? Well, I mean, going into the game, I figure I'm not, I'm already not in the contention for anything at this point. So I kind of want to just have fun with it. Uh, hence my opening choice um, and just see where it goes. I honestly didn't really think too much about the game. I'm just trying to enjoy it at this point. But it felt, uh, it felt like after knight to d6, the position was actually simplifying. Were you... How happy were you to see that, I guess? Yeah, so this queen c8 was definitely a bit too ambitious. I mean, I think I, I overestimated my position. Um, I think instead of queen c8, I should just go rook c8 and play this endgame. And of course, black should be better with the two bishops. Um, and I think after queen c8, knight b5, mm -hmm. and all these complications, I mean, I think if, um, yeah, so instead of queen c8, I think rook c8 just is a lot more logical. Um, Rook to c8, right yes. now. So queen takes d6, queen takes d6, take everything. I guess white castles in the end. Um, but you were not yeah. interested in getting this. Yeah, I mean, of course, black is better with two bishops, but it's pretty simplified. I was looking for something better. I mean, it felt like I should have something more than this, honestly. I mean, it felt like all my... His, he's still not castle yeah, I should have something. But I just totally missed that after. Um, and by the way, just to interrupt you for a second, David Brasky did win his game against a Wander Liang. Let's continue. Results are coming in, huh? <laughs> Fast and furious. Yeah, so I mean, th with all these lines I missed, after knight takes c6, I wanted to go queen, let's say c7 or e6, doesn't really make a difference. Let's say queen c7, um, bishop takes f3, rook d8, um, queen b4. Mm -hmm. And here I thought, like from a few minutes back, I thought I had knight c6 here. Uh, knight where, sorry? c6. c6, okay. Bishop takes c6, queen takes c6 castle, and I thought a5 was winning a piece for me from, but from queen a few minutes back. B6. But yeah, queen <laughs> takes b6. I mean, I'm, yeah. Whoops. Easy to miss from afar, <laughs> yes. And it turns out, yeah, he just consolidates everything after queen b4, so I can't really go for this. Um, so I'm kind of forced to simplify everything with 94. Simplify, and but you still found this uh, very tricky idea to uh, leave the pawn on c4, actually. Not that one. Yeah, I consider this, but 97. I mean, like, black should have enough compensation for a draw here, but I don't think but I have anything more than, more than that. Yeah. Precisely, yes. Um, but yeah, in the endgame, I think it was still a bit tricky for him. Like, after knight b3, I mean, yeah, so I really like this idea of you uh, leaving the pawn on c4 and going knight to b3. Right. I mean, after knight b3, I think rook b1 is just too passive. He has to castle here instead of rook b1. Bishop takes b2, and let's say a4. Just keep the pawn. I don't know. It's pretty imbalanced here. It's probably around equal, maybe something like king g7, but I figure it's at least something to play for. Like, he has some weaknesses to worry about. Like, the knight on b3 actually does a very good job of, like, cutting, covering bishop d4. If I ever want to go, like, bishop a3, bishop c5, for example. Um, so even though knights look kind of awkward, they cover a lot of squares, and then c4 is always weak too, so I thought I'd have decent chances here at least, even if it's maybe around equal. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think after this it sort of started to go wrong for a while, especially after c5. I think c5 is, I mean, practically at least seems close to losing. I think instead of c5, I guess he probably just has to castle. Um, they take c4 and then like take on, take on c4 and go rook d1 and try to, try to hold this. Once again, it was about finishing development and getting all your pieces active for white. Right. To keep the balance. And after that, it did go astray for uh, black, for white. Yeah, I mean, that maybe his one last chance was after rook bd8. Yeah, maybe he has to try to like take and go, let's say, yeah, I guess take and king f1, for example. Bishop d4, knight e4, and try to draw one of these endgames. Um, which is maybe some, some drawing chances after, and then like 
or it takes b2, take, take, and like bring the king in, and then maybe there are some holding chances. But yeah, the way the game went, I think it was just, uh, yeah, it was pretty much over. Brandon, a uh, big victory for you still. Three games to go. How would you assess your chances to maybe catch up with the leaders? I mean, not very good at this point. It seems like Christopher is winning this game as well. He's playing really well. Um, so I'm not really thinking about that, but just trying to take it one game at a time. Especially given the quality of my games thus far, I'm definitely not happy with it. So just trying to hopefully play some better chess in the last three rounds. Still three rounds to go. Keep on fighting, and we'll see you in the next rounds. Thank you. Uh, well done, uh, Brandon. And we've got more results. Uh, Dorsa. Uh, well, David Brodsky did uh, win against Wander Leon, and well, it puts both of them at two and a half points. Wait, I think, uh, please correct me, but I think David uh, won the last two games. I think he beat Carissa before the rest day and now won uh, Wander. David Brodsky, no, definitely not. No, oh, no, no. De David apologies. Brodsky drew against uh, Carissa in the first round, if I'm not mistaken. Who did, or, or the second round. I, the second round. Who am I thinking about then? The, I my have apologies. to check I it. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, my apologies. Uh, right. It did, but guys, it did sound right. So many people. <laughs> let's get back to that Carissa game. Yes, and, and yes. let's do it oh quick God, because yes. a lot of things are changing with just, every single game. I just wanted to say that Sophie is definitely winning. Uh, Ru, uh, Ru Yang is in. Deep, Sophie deep yeah. is uh, destroying her opponent. Exactly. Uh, unfortunately for Carissa, so is Andrew Hong right now. Is looking really good after Rook to E1. Uh oh. Andrew Hong has turned the table, secured uh -oh. the position of uh, the king. And after Rook to E1, let's keep an eye on the camera because we need to stay with the players right now. Uh, he has to play five, five minutes. Oh. Carissa just played the move Bishop. Bishop B7 to C8? Bishop to C8 was the last What one. is she doing? Trying to set up some discovery attacks. Mm. Though, I don't like this. 10 seconds Ten for seconds. Andrew. He has rookie, rookie one, one, the best move in the position. He, he, now, he, he a went. crushing advantage for Andrew. Okay. Wait, crushing. crushing. What is crushing? Plus four. Means plus, plus four. four. Yes. Crushing advantage. <laughs> There's Wait. no more moves, it seems like, for a black. What happened? So, what, what happened to Chris's uh, advantage? She well, blew it. It, <laughs> it, 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 it changed but, hands with every single move. It's gone with the wind. <laughs> but was there a specific move that she just kind a of a number spun? of them? The most, uh, the, the worst one was Bishop e5. Right here, she was winning with Queen d6, Bishop queen d6, d6 a hidden check, resource, right? And Bishop a6 hitting the rook. You mentioned. Bishop takes c3, which was also a very one. nice one. Queen takes c3, knight e3, with a winning... Nice little fork coming in. Exactly. Carissa with, down to her last With the winning material. 30 seconds, guys. But in fact, she blundered with bishop e5, and I think rook e7 didn't help. The last few moves were all going in the wrong direction for Carissa. Rook e1. How much time does she have? 10 seconds. 10 Oof. seconds. Play, 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 play. Right something. now, 10 okay. seconds. Rook to d7 was her uh, choice. Rook d7. Uh oh. Five moves each. But the this control, move, bishop to c8, followed by rook to d7. It's Just all wrong. Simply don't connect with each other. No, wait now, a minute. Isn't give it? me that pawn, rook takes c5. Why yep. not? Yeah, I was about to say, doesn't that hit? The bishop on e5 as well as the bishop on c8? It does. And it wins the game. Seven seconds. And he did it with seven. Seven or six seconds, did six, he? Six. Six seconds, yeah. I have seen people go down to two and one. Oh my and God. each yes, time, that scares it's like, me. like my heart skips a beat. Oh, look at those pawns that he's showing Yeah, all in a row. <laughs> How do you continue the game right now with black? You uh. don't. The, the two bishops are hanging. One of them is going. Carissa, is, she's, now she's looking for a desperado. Uh, she's Where just is hoping, the desperado? I don't know. She's, oh, she's oh, just seven, hoping. Six. Five seconds left for Carissa. She has to make a move. Just Bishop, Bishop to d4. E, Bishop David 4. So she's looking at a queen d2 possibility. Uh. Don't believe it. I don't <laughs> believe it. But what if I take on d4 right now? Or what even rook c8, queen d2, rook f1? Can I just hold that? 
Sorry, there, there are some. Oh, I was just saying, what if rook takes the c8, queen d2, just rook f1? Would yes. that work? See what his choice will be. And uh, five seconds left, and he took on d4. Yep, took on d4. Safe choice. That is the move. Looks like a very good move, I must say. It's a great move. Rook because takes d4, unfortunately, rook, rook c7. E, rook, yeah, check. Check. And there's no way to put the king. Yeah. Nowhere to put the king. See, again, bad Maybe habits. Maybe bishop d7? Bad habits. Don't play with your pieces. Don't play with your opponent's pieces. <laughs> put them behind the clock. Rook takes d4, and rook, take, rook to c7, mm -hmm. and uh, Andrew... That is the move right now. Uh, ...will will win the game. And bishop rook. d7 Oops. actually is going to be met with a rook to e7. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Or maybe even queen takes d4 is Wait. Right at that point. Yes, queen oh, takes yeah. d4 is simplest. <laughs> is, is killing. Rook yeah. roller, nice. Rook c7 check, bishop d7, queen takes d4. That's Will he find it? Yes. No, queen ah. takes d4 first, which is nice. good enough. <laughs> oh, it's that good is enough. A, oh, nice. that's a brilliant move. Because after knight takes d4, rook e7 check, and this it's going it, to be guys. a mate. And unfortunately, queen g5, the intermezzo, is going to be met with queen to g4 back. Beautiful move by Andrew. He saw it all. Um, he calculated everything, and I think Carissa right now. Carissa recognizing uh, it's all over. It's all oh, over. Oh, and she, she resigned. Wow, she what definitely had her game. moments there. She just missed queen d6 check and what bishop a crazy d6. Game. That what a is crazy. crazy. Where do you like to take us, Talia? What well, other let's game? go to Talia. You said Talia. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say Talia? I yeah. meant Dorsa. You were thinking about it. That's was, all right. I was going to ask for Talia oh, anyways. But, but Talia is dominating uh, Alice, uh, Alice Lee. Her rooks, everything. Ooh. This is like a dream ending for black nothing All to discuss right. here that's <laughs> nice. just over next. over over next absolutely next uh that sophie feels pretty... whoa um wait a minute can i just push the a pawn and call it good i'm not so sure um huh. this pawn on i'm just the, the knight takes bishop takes and you just got to make sure that you don't oh, fall yeah, for no any trickies with Fair. bishop, you know, you know what I mean. You know, but knight, knight takes it. rook a one. That's the problem. Yeah. Oh, oh. You still have some huge problems on the first. I do, one. but uh, we're going to pause our analysis and go to Christian, who has a guest in studio. Thank you, Yasser. We are indeed with a victor of today's round, David Brodsky. David, welcome to the show, and what a game to come back. Uh, to our show, a game, a victory against a Wander Liang, an incredible victory with the white pieces. Did he surprise you with the Karka and his approach? Um, the Karka wasn't a surprise. Like I, I mostly prepared for e5, but uh, he, he likes to play this g5 in the Karka sometimes. Uh, but he actually, I, a6 was, was a big surprise for me. Like I'm trying to understand how he can come, why I want to combine a6 and g5. Like I can see the point, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm not sure it's worth the tempo. <laughs> And you kept up with your plan, bishop to d2, knight to e1, yeah. a very typical plan in this type of positions, yeah. and then target the newly created weaknesses on the king side with right, f4. Right. Let's keep it up, let's keep yeah. it going. I'm not sure where he made his mistake. I'm, yeah, and fg5 was nice, because if he takes in b3, then gh6. gh6, he has to go back to h8. Mm -hmm. And I thought I have a lot of compensation. Maybe I, I can do something more direct, direct, like bishop d3, or I can just, yeah, a takes b3. I have three pawns, his, his king is... H7 weak. is coming in yeah, certain yeah. lines. Yeah, no, I was wondering if I can even just go bishop d3 here. Like, this is looking really good. This is looking you. really good. I just, you know, I, I've seen enough. At <laughs> least from a practical perspective. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I don't know what the engines say. Uh, so, of course, he took back. Knight c1, f6, takes. I was expecting bishop f6 hanging onto the pawn. Mm -hmm. But, like, okay, I understand that he wants, he wants to activate his, his knight. But I'm not sure it was worth the pawn because after after he took, I wasn't too sure where his compensation was. I was, I was just a little confused. So I think this was uh, the moment where he could have potentially activated his pieces in time. He missed a bit with the move queen to d7. Uh -huh. Bishop to g6 seems yeah. to have been the better move. Okay, and then knight f3. That was my point. Knight f3 and knight f5. Okay, um, bishop f4. Yeah, and. Uh, 
probably just go queen to e7 perhaps right now. Ah, okay. I guess e7 is a better square. It's a better square, right. Yeah. yeah. Because but still, he played the move queen to d7. It made a lot of sense, right, to activate the rooks, right? Yeah. Nevertheless, you managed to find, en to find enough time to get your pieces yeah. into play right now. Yeah. How did you assess it at this point? Uh, at this point, I wasn't sure because my h5 bishop is, is a little loose. Mm -hmm. But then at some point, I think after maybe knight g3, I realized I'm more or less winning here, in, in my opinion at least. Yes. Because yeah. I mean, his, his attack is dead, and my knight on e5 is a monster, and I have an extra pawn. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, let's keep yeah, up some... with the moves. I think another fun moment came uh, towards the conversion phase when uh -huh. you played this move g4 knight g3 queen to f2 uh -huh. rook to g7 i you had this uh, brilliant move queen to f6 which you spotted with the idea of knight f7 knight h6 oh knight f7 knight h6 <laughs> oh 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 yeah that's just uh... that just finishes the game the queen is lost it was just geometrically very pleasing uh, okay yeah, yeah. I mean, what I did is completely winning, too, because the side is... And just to interrupt you for a second, we do have a massive result in this one. Rochelle Wood did win her game against her good friend, Jennifer Yu. Let's go back to the game. And uh, you did take on G3. This is winning as well. Yeah. Very easily winning as well. David, congratulations. A big victory against the rating uh, favorite of uh, the event. Uh, how do you feel right now? after six rounds. Thank you. No, I'm very happy with this game. You know, I was minus two going into this round, and that was, that was pretty bad, you know. After getting hit by a train in round one, I haven't really <laughs> found, hadn't really found my form, but, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm really happy because this is my biggest scalp in quite a while, you know, by rating. Beating a 2600 is always nice, <laughs> but especially, you know, in, in these circumstances. Like, I understood that I had a target in my back and he wanted to take some risks. But, you know, now that's part of chess. Still three rounds to go. Maintain the momentum yeah, right now, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yes, thank our, you. Our congratulations, David. And more results are coming in. Uh... Well, Andrew Hong did win his game against Curry Saif. It was a very, very lovely game. Back and forth. But it was of... <laughs> back and forth. Yes. So that was, oh, uh, Carissa <laughs> missed opportunities. Unfortunately. And other, uh, three decisive games already in the juniors, yeah. by the way. And a draw between the two Igors. Yeah, beautiful. And let's see, anyone else? Oh, Jennifer? yes. Oh, yes. Jennifer Yu, my pick. She had four out of five going into today's round. Rochelle Wu had three out of five, but Rochelle wins. What a massive and, victory. Uh, they, they both, and for Sophie, this is like a dream come true. Like, well, they're, they're, Talia is, is still. That is true. Uh, Talia <laughs> has a chance and likely to go uh, uh, with the victory yeah, over that Alice. Makes me, By the um, way, uh, he mentioned, David mentioned that uh, Christopher. Yes maybe winning and I I thought it was going to it, I, I thought mean, at one time it was closer to a, a draw but now it just looks winning this night ending just looks like it's just over uh, the last move was g4 g5 he's just played the uh, black Christopher trying to activate uh, that poor king yeah well it's not that it's driving away this night so you can go knight f5 check and take the pawn then you'll be two pawns yeah. or uh, as mentioned, it's these uh, pawns on the wings. Before How do you call them? Uh, the, the pants? The running pants? How do you call them? Yes, I've sir. heard that. Um, I've never used that. Uh, I just say, you know, the outside pass pawn That's or too, yeah. the A or the H pawn. But knight f5 check, king c5. Before we move too blues. far away, I just want to mention that um, uh, Talia is supposed to, it will be playing um, Sophie in the last round. Exactly. Yes, so that that's could be, gonna it. be uh, whew, It's going to be heated. Yes, that is it. King c5, and now it's going to be a race. Uh, there's no race. There's no race. You take on b5, I go to g2, keep connection with the pawn on f4, and then I just push my pawn. I love that move, knight g2. Uh, it's strange how very often the knights are not on good squares on the fee and shadow squares, meaning g2, b2, g7, b7. But in this case, knight g2 eyeballs the pawn on f4, just gets out of the way of the h pawn, 
And knight g2, nice move. Love that move. And by the way, I think maybe even knight f3 instead of uh, knight g2. Taking advantage of the fact that your knight actually, I don't see a good way to get to f2 or g3. Or h1. And he's played knight e3, stopping. <laughs> knight stopping g2. knight g2. Yeah. And I think it kind of... Uh, Can I still just go back knight f5? And just yes. Question? Or knight f3. Yes. Beautiful. To support the pawn push, right? Right. So if we go knight f5. Yeah. Uh, white is definitely going knight f1, yeah. right? Uh, just to, uh, in order to cover the pawn. Uh, now we're thinking that, well, we could run with the king up the board. That would I, be nice. Or... I was just concerned. Can I just play knight d6 and just dare the devil? Dare the devil. So the idea is that takes... Now, now what did you call them? Running pants? I, I haven't... I'm trying to remember <laughs> how you call these oh, guys. Oh, I do remember reading something like that in the Wreskis Endgame book about... But what, don't um, I go king e5 now? About a bishop trying to control both pawns. The, right. The, the running pants, yeah. I don't know why you call them running pants. Because I have no idea. I remember reading that. Me, it but just clicked, yeah. Yeah. I have heard that or read that before, but... But... <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, but we'll I, I like knight f3 just because means. you need to get the knight to f2. Right. right? So take on b5, and h4, knight to d1 maybe, but... Christopher has... Oh, let me just refresh my... By the way, the juniors... Very man, decisive. They don't want to draw. I Why? tell you, every <laughs> round they swing for the fences. Um, knight f3. Ooh. And uh, we have the woman of the hour with Christian. Let's go for it. Rochelle, a uh, big victory for you against one of your good friends, uh, Jennifer Yu. Now, how does that feel? We had a discussion here on the panel. How do you feel after you play against your best friends? Um, I mean, like, I, like, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, um, it feels good to win, but at the same time, like, I um, sympathize for her. So, like, because I know if it were in my shoes, I would not be that happy to lose, so... Absolutely a difficult uh, moment, but still, that takes you to four out of six. A very respectable uh, result for you. Let's take a look at today's game. Take us uh, through the critical moments. It did feel like she surprised you out of the opening. Was that the case? Um, I mean, I think, I don't think she was expecting um, E5 after C4, actually. Um, I think that we're we might have both been out of theory. I'm not sure because we both started thinking pretty early on. Mm -hmm. um, and did you remember this line? Did you study this line with your coach? Or? Not really. <laughs> um, I think I looked at it really quickly, and the, because like I was looking at like a lot of things. Was, she plays like many things as white, so I didn't like really focus on one thing in particular. I just like reviewed a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Queen to e two, and she was. Uh, really putting a lot of pressure on the king side. Did you feel that way as well? Um, Were you concerned at all about this pawn push? I was a little bit concerned about g4. Like, not not here, but like eventually. Uh, I don't think I should have played b6, actually. Um, maybe if I just like went bishop d7 immediately. Because I didn't like, I didn't really have a solid plan here. I wanted to possibly put my bishop on b7 and go c5 eventually. Mm -hmm. And um, get the bishop to c6, right? Yeah. But, like, I feel like it never really works. Like, if I move my bishop to the, um, to b7, she has, like, knight f5 stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's actually really annoying to deal with. And this was the critical moment, I think. Um, not bishop to b7, but how you uh, played in the game. Bishop to d7, and now she played this move. Knight to b3. We were a bit surprised. Yeah, I was surprised too. Movie. I thought maybe she'd go knight f3 and then knight e5. Um, and that was, in fact, uh, the best move in the position. Yeah. Um, I think maybe she was like scared of stuff like bishop g4. Ooh. And then, bishop like, it, it probably does not work, but it's like, <laughs> it's kind of worrisome, to be honest. Like, if you take. Um, knight takes... No, it's definitely a move. Yeah. Um, like, knight takes g3. I know I would be a little bit concerned if I were white here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, there's a lot of knights around yeah. the white king. The okay, so, um, after she played knight 
B3. I played C5 because um, I completely forgot about bishop takes F6 immediately. I, I thought she was going to play like bishop E5, and then I was going to play rook takes E5. Um, and I thought that position would be like interesting. Mm -hmm. You're definitely getting a lot of play for uh, the yeah. exchange. But yeah, I just completely, like, right when I played it, I was like, wait, can't she take my knight immediately? But c5, in fact, was the best move. Wait, really? By far, mm -hmm. in the position, yes. So take on f6, g takes f6. And this position already, the engine was saying that it's favorable to you. Did you oh. feel that way? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I thought I was, like, um, trying to defend at this point. Like, I thought that instead of taking on e4, she might play queen h5. Mm -hmm. Um... I was kind of worried about this position. Wait, but do you have knight takes g3? Is that a move? Um, I thought king takes. Rook takes e3. King f2. And you don't have queen takes f4? Is that not well, enough? It looks so Bishop dangerous, though. Bishop f3. Bishop c6. I mean, can't she go like bishop queen g4? Queen g4 maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's enough. Maybe rook to e8 doesn't give you uh, enough compensation even there. Very scary stuff yeah. even, uh, in this position for white. So let's go back. She took on e4. She decided to eliminate that knight. Yeah. And uh, I want to take you to the moment after bishop takes h3. I was not sure about bishop takes h3 <laughs> at all, but like... What was your concern right now? What um, was the, the move that you were concerned about? I was a little bit concerned about g4. g4, okay. I, like, I, I didn't see anything after it, but I was like, this is kind of scary. <laughs> um, Definitely looks scary, but actually G4 yeah. was fine for you. Now, yeah. the only move for her was, in fact, king to h8, yes, e5. Did you spot this move? I and if I bishop G4, G4, knight e4. No, I didn't. Well, like... Now, I think I thought I had like queen takes d1. Yes, yes, queen takes d1. And now the question is how is this endgame after knight takes f6 and uh, queen takes d1. And it did seem that white has enough compensation after knight takes e8. Maybe not even compensation. Yeah. Still, wild stuff. And she played this move f5. Did she just simply miss bishop takes f5? Did you? No, she definitely saw it because she spent a lot of time there. That's um, what we thought, but. It didn't make a lot of sense <laughs> because now after bishop takes f5, you just defend, yeah, yeah. and you're two pawns up. I mean, so. she was in like heavy time pressure, so mm. I don't really blame her. Let's keep going, and after that, smooth uh, conversion, at least that's how it felt for us. Rochelle, big victory for you, four out of six. Sophie seems to be going to six out of six. Wait, really? What yeah. will it take to catch uh, with that lady? <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I don't think that really depends on me. I think that depends on her. <laughs> Do you still have to play with her? Or no, I already, already... I already lost. <laughs> Got it. Well, Rochelle, congratulations. Huge victory for you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Our congratulations yes. as well, Rochelle. That's very, very nice victory over a tough competitor. Yeah. Um, Talia, again, uh, she really looks like she's got a dominating position in, at any time. And I think it's going to happen very soon, by the way. You, pawn, you scoop, pawn, up, pawn. scoop up that pawn. And again, the, this pawn, this construction of the pawn on a4, the bishop on b3, is keeping these rooks tethered. Uh, you, you, you would love to play rook c1 and get your rook behind the pawn. But unfortunately, any time you do that and allow push, the pawn push. to get to a2, yep. It, th there's nothing to discuss. It just goes to a2, the rook will go behind, and it will be a, a, a coronation. So, okay, so king it, f1, what you played, what's, how, how, do you, how do you do it? Did, is king f1 on the board? Yes. Okay, very good. Can I just go king g5? King g5. It's okay, let's... Um, oh, excuse me. I don't think I, I did it right. I apologize. Let me just, let me just get king f1, king g5. Sorry. Let's go king e1. Right, rushing over and scoop up the pawn. So now you scooped up the pawn. Do I have Jack? Uh, King? Well, I'm thinking about exchanging the rooks, the bishops, with Bishop Ooh. to D1. Okay. 
So and now maybe I can start with King D2. King D2. Even, even though King D2 is uh, allows Rook C4. Uh, but let's check the camera of Christopher Yu because I do have a feeling we're going to see a resignation very soon in this one. Oh, that's oh. three pawns to the good. <laughs> that, 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 that's... Uh, Not boy. only that, but your knight is stuck on H1. Oh, goodness oh, gracious. dear. Dear, dear, dear Yeah, I me. think we're going to see a resignation, guys. Yeah. And Christopher Yu is surging right now. He drew that game in the second round, and after that, four victories in a wow. row to take him to five and a half out of six. Wow. This is just incredible stuff coming from this young man who is surging through the rankings at only 15 years of age. He's close to 2,600 Holy right God. now, FIDE yeah. rating. That is just an incredible performance. And Truly. Alejandro called it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have to give it to, to, to Alejandro. I don't often do that, but <laughs> he called Nobody, it. Nobody uh, willingly uh, <laughs> recognizes uh, Alejandro's genius. He, he felt that Christopher is due for a big result, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now. He's playing confident chess. He doesn't make mistakes, and he's taking his opponents to school. And by the way, move f5 I really like because the knight on e4 is making, uh, the Japanese word is tosuji, a kind of a domination over the knight on h1. Nice. You, the, 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 I like the, that. Yeah, yeah. tosuji, the knight on that, that h1. That's why practically whoosh. Exactly. And two extra pawns. I'm a little bit surprised that Justin is even playing on because the move f7, f5 is a he really... He a few more minutes to completely come to terms. Right, right. Yeah, that, that's the way that goes. By the way, there's one game remaining. Guys, guys, no, no. After... For, don't forget about the rule of the set. We need to see the pain. <laughs> we need to see the resignation. Oh. Uh, we, right. Guys, don't move away from the resignation. That, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Some cruelty going on there. <laughs> By the way, uh, I see, yeah, Mishra, yeah. excuse me, but Balaji is a clear advantage. Uh, uh, Balaji. Oh, knight to G3. Well, well I mean, that's a resignation, uh, that, right? Isn't right. that a resignation? Yeah. Come on, just what, what, what is this? Just my trade and just get my king in there and exactly. my cat could do this. <laughs> my cat. We're, we're, we're playing Grandmaster Chess here. Yes. Come on, Justin. <laughs> right. Uh, you, you know, that was like the old Soviet joke. Uh, the old Soviet joke is the, 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 the man goes to the beach where he plays his dog chess. And there's the ah. resignation, there's the resignation. Ah. Uh, fist bump there. Yeah. An As king of six. You know that's bump. it. I kind of like the fist bump more than. Handshake. Uh, yeah, yeah, the handshake, the fist bump. Well, congratulations to Christopher as he continues his winning ways. Five and a half out of six, Wonderful. putting his signature on uh, these uh, U.S. Junior Championships. Sorry, just to, to finish the joke. So the man goes to the beach. He plays his dog chess, and all the beach goers go and look, wow, this is fantastic. This is incredible. Look, the dog is making the moves and he's playing chess very well. And the man gets upset with the beach goers. He says, w w why so brilliant? I'm leading three to one. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! No boy. Well, the, Sorry. The chess club did know somebody. There was like a dog that could actually like, I don't, I don't remember the exact details. It was the, like one of the dog that could. I've like, heard know. of chicken playing tic tac toe chess. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think it was just like something on the, something with this owner on the stream. It was kind of fun. I can't remember anything. I've seen these I've days. seen a lot of cats play with chess pieces. Yeah. But as the players have reached their time control again. Four out of four decisive games in the juniors. They are swinging for the fences. We're going to take a break, and we'll see you on the other side. Welcome to the chess capital of the United States. The St. Louis Chess Campus in the heart of the vibrant Central West End has established itself as a premier global destination for chess and is comprised of two unique nonprofit institutions. 
The Chess Club and Scholastic Center of St. Louis is recognized as the top chess facility in the world and plays host to all major tournaments, including the U.S. Chess Championships and the Sinkfield Cup, one of the strongest chess tournaments globally. Tournaments are broadcast online to more than 150 countries, led by an expert commentary team of grandmasters. The Chess Club is an educational organization committed to promoting the game of chess, with a specific focus on bringing the benefits of chess to children throughout the St. Louis area. Research shows children who play chess exhibit improved analytical skills and increased confidence. The Chess Club is highly engaged with the local community, bringing scholastic chess programs to more than 100 schools, providing hundreds of classes each week. Directly across the street from the Chess Club is the World Chess Hall of Fame. This one-of-a-kind cultural institution invites visitors to experience chess in imaginative ways and is home to the U.S. and World Chess Halls of Fame. Cutting-edge exhibitions feature rare, historic chess artifacts paired with world-class art. Innovative programming explores the intersection of chess, art, and culture. Visitors can enjoy interactive programs designed around the exhibitions and monthly music in the galleries. The World Chess Hall of Fame is nothing you expect and everything you love. Three different galleries and a premier gift shop highlight the culture, history, and creativity behind the game. Come visit, play chess, leave enriched. To learn more about the St. Louis Chess Campus, visit stlchesscampus.org.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our coverage of round six of the three U.S. championships. The girls, the juniors, the seniors. And we have seen some really decisive <laughs> blows, Dorsa. Right? I don't know. But the players really seem like they... So after the rest day, they're ready to go. Really rip-roaring. And in the uh, junior section, I think we've already had four decisive games. The women's has featured a huge victory for Rochelle Wu Ooh, over yes. Jennifer Yu. That was a big victory for Rochelle. And I'm seeing a winning position in the game between Sophia and Ru Yang. Now, if Sophia wins, she will be scoring a phenomenal I, six out of six. I agree, That's just yes. like, wow. She, and there you see her so focused and intent. She knows it. <laughs> and you exactly, she knows it. And uh, wow, what a, all you can do is just kind of tip your hat and say, very, very well done. Um, and I think we yes. did just see a result in Nick Defermian's game versus right? Dmitry Gurevich. I think Nick just resigned. Oh. Right, is yes, he dropped, he, he was two pawns down in a rook and pawn endgame as he realized, oops. And in fact, Mr. Gurevich. Have, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Gurevich. Nice. Although we've had two draws in the seniors, the three remaining games all look to be vic to be decisive. Uh, you just mentioned Nick going down, but it looks to me like Joel Benjamin is going down, oh. as well as Gregory Kaidanov. Gregory started with a yeah. huge advantage out of the opening, but Shabalov has fought his way back. Actually... Oops, sorry. I, uh, when we get a chance, it would be lovely if we can go a little deep. Like, I, I feel like we're just kind of, um, I can't actually remember that game at all. <laughs> I think we just that kind of brushed from, upon it a little here and there. No, that was this Bishop F4. Yeah, uh, yeah. In the, oh, yes, yes, uh, and then but, we stopped. We, we, we left it after the opening. <laughs> and so, yeah. Uh, would you like to start with that, or would you like to stay with the ladies for a little bit? Sure. I'm just saying that we, we, we have, uh, t to my eyes, a completely winning position for Shabalov. All right. He's uh, material ahead, and, well, these two pass bonds should, should be decisive. Uh, so, And I'm thinking that uh, Joel Benjamin is uh, losing. Uh, the whole point was in this position, what huh. Maxine has done is forced a queen trade, essentially. And if uh, Max had calculated right, his idea was just to bring his king up the board, shoulder Black's king, and then uh, move towards the B pawn. Uh, that was why we saw G5 by Joel. So Joel's hope is that uh, he could use his H pawn as a distraction, but I don't think that's yeah. going to work. I don't think so. Um, I mean, uh, I don't think. Uh, can I just take trade queens and just bring the king in? Sorry. Uh, uh, after pawn to g5, can I just do queen takes f4, pawn takes f4, just king walk to the other side? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? I don't really see. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, even on the well, let's go. Let's just see what the. All right. What the outcome is going to be. I think Joel is losing, but uh, you have to... Now, there's no way that this is exactly. a race, yes. right? Like, there's nothing to... But no. even and if it's not over. just king d4. Exactly. It's over. Uh, you, your, your one weakness will be protected by the rook on b3. Queen takes f4 looks like an easy win for Max. Uh, sorry, the ladies... Still four games going. Oh my! Oh my! Yes. So, but guys, a very important Talia game in that winning? one. Let's take a Which look one? at what Talia is doing because, oh no, to me, it doesn't look convincing at all. Oh no, my girl, why? She Wait, didn't where? win the pawn on h5. Oh. No. Well, why not? Good uh, question. <laughs> but she, her king was on f6. All she had to just come g5, just eat it. Uh -oh. um, no, it's not convincing at all. Uh, but, okay, how, how do you actually have any advantage right now? Like, what do you take I, on b3 with? I, I take with huh. the rook. Oh, well. That's fine. Um, but now I go rook a2. And I go check. That's okay, I take. Check. I go king d2. Okay. 
Rook B4, King C3. I think that's just three? King C3, Rook B3, and we force a draw, right? Um, just checking for a moment, just a second. Okay, that's fine. You want to invade? I do, I do. No, 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 no. I, I won't allow you to do that. Yes, okay. Right. King B3. Well, I go King B3. Uh, I'm sorry, After Rook, Rook B2. B2. Yeah. You, oh, you're going to give me F2, okay. Even though maybe, no, 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 uh, forget about it. Yes, sir. Uh, I apologize. I go king e1. Okay. Yeah, e1. and then uh, d4 check, right? D5 king, check. King e5, d5. King e4, d5. Yes. That's what I mean, yeah. Yes. And if this pawn were gone, then there'd be something to discuss. With this pawn still on the board, draw. This is a draw. Very easy draw. Whoa. Talia, very strange decision not to win a pawn that was on offer. And uh, she did make a move. Let's see, what did she take back with? Let me just uh, refresh She took with board. the pawn. A <laughs> takes B3. But now, once again, let's bring the king. Let's bring the king in. King Absolutely. King, put the king. And this rook, <laughs> I know it's a long, long way. But still, you start thinking. <laughs> you start, hey, the, 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 these thoughts go through your head. Like, hey, if you're not going to take my h5 pawn, maybe I'll take your h3. On the other hand, Talia has a plan, right? I mean, it's pretty convincing. If she could ever get her king to f3, uh, that would be I, huge. I dare say, then what? Like, then I'm there. <laughs> nice. I've arrived. Thank you. I've arrived. Uh, I guess it's king e2, king d5, king here, though. And also, by the way, I can also hit you. No, I yes, I can hit you with a check. That's actually <laughs> <Looking> a pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually a pretty uh, checkmate. Sweet, and same as the other one. Uh, exactly, Sweet. a reciprocal checkmate. Okay, <laughs> interesting. So how is that endgame? So let's say rook d5, rook a5, rook b5. Let's keep going in that. I, I I wouldn't actually want to trade queens. I would probably play oh, king b3 myself, king d3 myself. And now e5, let's say. E5? No, it's, it's, it's very unpleasant, but I don't think... E5, or... Wow. Just... Well, Ooh, all okay. right. we, we have a man that wants to get involved right He's now in uh, the, the analysis. <laughs> Winner of uh, today's round, Dmitry Gurevich, is with us. Dmitry, welcome back Thank to the show. A uh, big victory for I you. I wasn't hoping to be back. <laughs> 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 well, you are, and you are in uh, extraordinary fashion, actually. First, let's take a look at your game, and then we'll get to the analysis of that ga end game as well. So let's start with your game. Tell us, what were the critical moments? The critical moments was when he played f3. f3. <laughs> it was a critical, mo <laughs> a critical moment, because Nick never played this move, as far as I know. He always played bishop c4, and he was great in it. He beat me a number of times. I think I beat him once or something. Uh, and um, he uh, was one, you know, I loved Sozin when, I, when Fischer started playing it, started playing it I, I really liked Sozin, like many, many young guys at that time. Uh, and I played it for both colors, uh, uh, Sozin is, is an opening. <laughs> it's but a fun F3, opening. Yeah, F3, F3 uh, was a difficult move for me because I always took on D4 and played G6. I, I think I was lucky to beat uh, Lazaro Bruzon years ago when he, when he was world junior champion, when he was, in, was already good. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it worked out. And then I kept doing it in lower rated tournaments, and, tournaments, and it was successful. But uh, it's not a good position, I think. And, and recently in Chicago, when the kid Arsal Gardesi, uh, he's low rated, but he's very, very bright, talented, he uh, crashed me in that position. <laughs> so I thought, I'm not going to do it again. Uh, I want to learn. But I didn't learn it properly. I, I knew that uh, it, it's two moves, e6 or e5. I much rather play e6, my, it's my style, but uh, e5 is a better move, probably, more, uh, you know. Reliable, so so. And so you then, decided to go with uh, objective bit, precision, more or less. So I, I didn't study it as enough. It's usually you, you don't do enough. You know? So, uh, but I felt the position is okay. And then I remember a little bit. I, I knew two great guys. Uh, I was working with Victor Korshner, and I was I can even say that arrogant thing. I was friend of Mikhail Talt because he had thousand friends, thousands mm -hmm. of friends. So I was one of those. I mean, and um, in 1988, I saw Tal. 
seven times, times in four different countries. So sure. I was very fortunate. Anyway, once I know that Tal beat Korchner with some line, is very late in life, not, not in the beginning, with A5, Bishop, B5, Knight, A7, something like that. So it was something which I, I remember, oh, I was thinking about two of my favorite people, two of my favorite chess players, and I might even get to this type of position. So I, I was OK. It was OK. And then when he didn't do that, I thought, well, that gives me more chances, probably. That I'm not sure. I know that Nick also did not a big special in this position. But he's a great Sicilian player, so I thought uh, he's, he's you know, in better shape. But that was OK. Was okay. So Still, it, the best thing you can uh, expect in these positions is a I fight. I was very happy with this position. Because it's I thought, a fight. Yeah, I thought that this is it. If, if, if for, you know, I thought if he doesn't take, I'm very happy. If he plays bishop f2, I was going to play bishop g5. Mm -hmm. Where the idea is he fought and all, all this kind of tactics to, for black. So I thought if he takes a pawn, which I expect, yeah, this is e4 like g4, knight g3, something like this. Mm -hmm. Takes mm -hmm. takes queen h4, so it looks good. So and uh, usually I get this kind of positions in Kinzig and with White, and I have been a lot of trouble. So you know the same. Anyway, so I was very happy with this position because uh, if you can get something, yeah, yeah, this is it because you have a square and one pawn. And thank you. I give you. Forget I, about the pawn. Yeah, yeah I pay, pay the material. price. I don't mind. I mean, <laughs> this is at least I can play. So at some variation, for example, uh, after Bishop f6, uh, this is a line. Uh, uh, after bishop f6, he plays uh, bishop d6, it's a force. Sorry. Uh, queen b6, uh, no, I, I, what would I do? Oh, uh, yeah, I play bishop, something like queen b6 check, c5, knight takes c5, so it's it's working for black. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, but he played this move, uh, rook to f1, let's keep going, yes, sir? Uh, uh, you know, I thought this is it. Black is uh, what do you say? Rook of one? No, no. Let's keep going. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. B6, rook B1. yeah. No, this is fine. If bring the rook, rook A to E8, Black achieves his goal. Uh, this is. I didn't realize it's a blunder right away. I knew that my position is fine. Yes. And then I, it's more as I saw. I couldn't believe it. What is it? Bishop which one? Bishop Bishop takes takes Queen yeah. F2. Yeah. So, so this is a bad position. It's probably lost. It doesn't mean I'm going to win it. <laughs> but objectively, uh, it, it is. It is a, a good position. Yeah. But I don't think you relinquished the pressure at any moment in this game went on to win. Well, I know that it's tactics for white. If I do something wrong, as I usually did in the past, <laughs> a lot of things. Oh, you do, you do make one mistake, one little yes. mistake. Yes. That's it. Situation changes. You yes. don't have too much time, and you blunder. Mm -hmm. Happened to me millions of times, so... You're I, still careful. Oh, oh, of course. No doubt about it. it, it, it. You know, this is a moment I saw this variation. Yeah, I made Queen G3 just in case. One more, one more move, why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> just in case. And this I saw the end game. Because I realized I might have something better, but I should be so fortunate to have this. So end game is supposed to be winning. And, and then I thought I can do this, I can do that. I can go for King Pon Engim in some variations. And mm -hmm. why do I do that? Because King Pon Engim, sometimes it's that miracle draw. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. or two. I'm, I'm it's a, all about the calculation in those end games. I, I am a chess, chess teacher uh, teaching Very this thing. Uh, and this is King Pon Engim, there's some miracle draws. And you don't, don't expect. To do uh, to win because you have extra pawn. I mean, yes. this, this happens. But this is a very good question. For example, King F7 is one of those end games. King F7 instead of King F6, yes. and then uh, uh, Rook takes G3, King F7, uh, then Rook takes G3, Rook G6, uh, exchange, and um, probably. And this is winning position. I mean, 99. 99 but sometimes 90, it's a draw. Yes. Well, 90 percent. But who cares? I mean, I have one end game. That's a Rook and end game. So why should I? Uh, even uh, think about it. because King Pon Engim is easier. No, uh, sometimes it's not. King Pon Engim is, I uh, tell my students always, it's always some, some a miracle thing. You never know what will happen. It, 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 it's always an adventure. Yes, yes, because it's very concrete. You know, it is, you, uh, the guy has a queen and he beats you no matter who you are, Marcus Carson, <laughs> or not 99%. So <laughs> but so, two pawns in a rook and game, in, well, in this position, you know, that was too much. Rook and Engims, two pawns, no guarantee. Yes. It happens. In some positions, especially classical rock and uh, my students just had a rock and points uh, C and A or uh, H and F. It is in between. It's kind of position uh, which the top second top player in the world, Paul Keres, he wrote a book. He but thinks this is a mistake. So mm -hmm. the world champion says about the second or third world player that he makes mistake in this thing. But means how complex it is. Yeah, I have my own stories. <laughs> so, but this is, it's a one position, yeah. Dimitri, uh, a great result so far for you. You're getting closer to those leadership positions. I How do you assess your chances? Are you thinking about it at all? Absolutely. Is it too early? 
Uh, oh, it's not even uh, not even a question for me. I have to play uh, three players, and uh, I mean, uh, two two players are legends. You know, one is great player. He's not professional, but he's also a very strong player. So I'm not even thinking about it. Well, <laughs> you are a legend yourself as well. So keep the momentum, keep the energy going, and okay. we'll see you in the next few rounds. Sure, it will be, will be exciting for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Our congratulations to you, you, Dima. Very, very nice. Thank you. Yes. And uh, as we see two Beautiful wins, graphic. two draws, but we're expecting Joel Benjamin to go down against Max Delugi so that it will be three wins in uh, the seniors uh, there as four. And Ooh. because Larry Christensen drew, it kind of opened up the door essentially for other players to join him. So we'll see if Max can reel in this victory. But because of Dima's win, he's tight with Larry. I have to say, I love the hat. I know, the it's hat so, is great. so cool. I mean, I wish I could pull off hats. <laughs> yeah, uh, when, when I played in uh, the US Championship in Key West, we all had those hats. Aww. Because Key West, you know, you oh, gotta, yes. in the hot yes. sun, you gotta yes. have a, Gotta have a hat to keep you cool. Do you recommend it, Yasser? Do you recommend Key West? Oh, definitely. It's a, a, a gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, Never and, been. Uh, and I and I did the drive. I I had a From, flight. From uh, Miami. Yeah, to, I had a West, flight, yeah. but I I wanted to drive on those bridges, ah. and it was really amazing because it's like you're in the middle of the ocean. Oh, it's like my. ridiculous, and the bridges are miles long, and. You drive across the bridge in the middle of the ocean. It almost is a surreal feeling. I loved it. That's such a well. Now that I can legally drive, well, it, there we go. Now you. you know what. To, where Excuse to go. me, guys. Yes. Is Alice Lee better right now? Oh no! There is Italian a pawn woman. to the good. Talia played rook b5, and now rook takes b3 came as a shocker Instantly. on the board. Uh, this she, is a cold shower, and White is just simply going to be a pawn up in the ensuing endgame. Wow, you're right. You're right, she's blundered rook on, she could have played rook on the six, rook b6 to b5, and there would have been, that Alice spotted the opportunity. Well, that, I mean, you were winning the whole game, and right now, rook you're fighting B3. for equality. This mm -hmm. is a psychological situation take, in which yeah. you don't find yourself very often, and when you do, you need extreme mental resilience to get over it. Right. Because with only five minutes left on the clock, this is going to be a difficult defense. Oh, my goodness. When you, you again, because you're carrying the baggage of, I was winning the whole game, I was winning the whole game, and then you really, really start kicking yourself. Mm -hmm. And usually mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it isn't, it's like you're not just, you don't make just one mistake, it comes in yes. bunches. I have to ask, um, as a chess well, legend and <laughs> that <laughs> let word me look is like I, you, 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 yes. you, usually that means like you're dead and dusted. Oh. And there's a nice little brass <laughs> pack. This is a legend. Uh, yes. What, what? What? What's your question? Uh, as a well, um, uh, as a chess uh, grandmaster. Yes, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, and well, someone who people look up to. If your one of your students was in Talia's shoe and you know right. had advantage and then. Poof, and it's then gone. yeah, then let's say it just keeps going downhill, and right. she ends up, well, God forbid, losing. Right. How would you try to like help them out after the game? I I would cry alongside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because there's just no other way of putting it. You just, I mean, it's just oh, terrible, boy. and you just go, ah, we've all been there. Yeah. And of uh, chess players, uh, especially experienced grandmasters. Uh, it, it, I, I remember uh, when I had done some martial arts, and I said, well, why do they call it a black belt? Why, why, why do you have a black belt in martial arts? He says, well, it, all that means is that you've worked so hard, your white belt has turned black. It's got all <laughs> nice. the dirt on it, right? And that's I what I think that. a grandmaster means. So, you know, you have chess mastery, but the more blunders, the more mistakes you've made, then they give you more titles. Nice. <laughs> you know, like, and if you've lost a thousand games, you know they're going to call you a super genius. <laughs> Good to know. So 
it you you just have to take your 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 lumps of coal and that's what this is right now Italia uh, has to defend an awkward position from a winning position but we have a special guest yes. in studio we're going to jump to Christian we are indeed with Alex Shabalov after a crazy game against Kaidanov. Alex, you are on the back foot from the beginning. In the opening, did he surprise you with this move bishop to f4? Were you aware of this trend? Uh, on the contrary, I, I know this move very well. I played it with white oh. as, uh, as recent as Chicago Open. Uh, and uh, I know exactly what white is uh, looking <laughs> for. And, uh, I was looking for the ways to avoid the uh, standard position after uh, d6, knight takes c6 and c4. And c4, yeah. Yeah, and then I know very well that you have to play e5, bishop b7, bishop b6. And at the right moment, uh, very important to play a5 for black to not allow white to play b4. Uh, but that position is really, really hard to break through, especially against Gregory. So I was looking for some creative way to make it a little bit more complicated, but I think the cost was too much. <laughs> yeah. The cost was definitely high. Yeah, the, yeah, it didn't look good. I mean, 97 already, uh, yeah, well, what can you do? <laughs> and uh, the game developed, well, definitely felt like it's going White's way. He was managing to develop his pieces while you were still struggling to find the best yeah, placement. Yeah, still I didn't really see the direct way to I right. think here a big moment came mm -hmm. where he could have played the move bishop takes e6. Did you consider that this move? Uh, yes. And he takes e6 and just simply defend the pawn with queen d3. Oh, really? Yeah. Just seem. No, I mean, if that's the way, then it's, it's not human. Not know? easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just like. Yeah. And just bank everything just on the attack. Just to give up the bishop and play a quiet move? Yep. Nah. Yeah. And then go f5, g4, g5, h5. And Okay. Just say that I have the attack yeah. while you don't. That's, I mean, I guess. yeah, I believe you. <laughs> but not easy. Definitely not no, easy. No, no. That, that, that really didn't, didn't occur to me that that's the way. But now, now I see why. Yeah. Also, B4, B4, if you put a queen on mm -hmm. E7. Yeah. yeah. No, obviously, yeah. Not, not a good one. But he decided but, to play the more natural no. C5. And took, yeah, here I was more or less. Uh, I calm down because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, white doesn't have a direct attack anymore. Position stabilized, right? Yeah, so... So you are feeling pretty confident at this point. Yeah, I thought I put my bishop on c4 and then I'm not at the risk to lose. And then I will, you know, try to wear him down a little bit because... Uh, yeah, I think h... I, I don't know, in, in the game it felt like a h5 was a... He loosened up himself while well, he gave me g5 square for the bishop. Mm -hmm. And uh, if pawn would remain on h4, I would have trouble like activating my bishop. So. To find some way to make progress. Yeah. But I think. Maybe bishop e6, h6. but. h6. Um, Still, things were quite complicated. Really? You can I thought here uh, I was already like winning, but. Uh, Yes, I think up to, uh, after this, yeah, the critical moment. And we had so many games, uh, crazy games going on that we mm. lost track of yours at, at one point. Now, were there any critical moments uh, that you felt you spotted during the game? Um, no, obviously, yeah, I think uh, H5. That was H5. the moment when I thought that he uh, went too far. Yeah, the pawn remains on H4. And he makes it to move 40. It does not allow me to activate my bishops. I don't think black can break through anytime soon. But uh, after h5, it's just surprisingly hard to defend pawns anymore. It's like uh, the rooks don't have too many squares. Um, so, yeah, to me, I felt like h5 was a mistake. h5, the victory. critical moment. Alex, uh, big victory for you with the black pieces. Now you're getting closer to those <laughs> leadership positions. Only half a point behind Larry and uh, Dmitry Gurevich. Yeah, it's get, getting hot. And uh, getting hot. Dmitry Gurevich, a very surprising, you know, um, factor. Yeah. So we'll see how he fares in the, in the last two rounds. So 
Uh, no, I'll take my chances too. There we go. Congratulations once again, guys. Any questions for Alex? No, just uh, our our congratulations, Shaba. Uh, yes. Nice win. Looks like uh, well. Uh, keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yes, yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> And uh, where would you like to take us, uh, Doris? Well, let's take a quick look at the one remaining game for the Legends. Yes, that would be Max uh, versus Joel. Uh, he's two pawns up. And just yeah, because well. <laughs> the base pawn could be defended so nicely after rook d3 and rook uh, c3, I thought that white was just winning the game. That, uh, Still kind of feels winning. I yeah, assume too, just rook c2. Yeah, too many pawns, uh, extra pawns. I want. Or, or that? Or, uh, or just push them, baby. I would. <laughs> this is a little work. Uh, yeah. Remember what uh, Dmitry Gurevich said coming in. He mm -hmm. said, "Sometimes you have these winning rook and pawn endings, and you transpose them into winning." king and pawning games. Only problem is sometimes there's a miracle mm -hmm. in the king and pawning games and you don't win it. <laughs> uh, any miracles here, Christian? Well, I don't think so. No. no. <laughs> there's no uh, miracles happening I, in that one. I understand f5 will be met by rook check. I get that part. Whoa, yeah. whoa. The evaluation bar. Sorry. What happened? Did I just saw the evaluation bar jump for me. Sorry. That no, was a, king to c4. Yeah. Uh, I think it's I the easy thought, way did out. I make a blunder? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, but, uh, no, it's okay. all about the, uh, the king's uh, and pawn's endgame, right? So rook, right. king to e6, right. how do we feel about that? Do we go king to c5 and allow black to take on d7? Rook takes d7, we take, and king to d5, and is there... F6? F6, and then king to e4, and how is that endgame? Exactly. It should be winning, right? For sure. Yes, it's winning because yeah. we get to f5 and then we will have another bullet with the move f4 to force the king to go either to e7 on. or g7. Yeah. Right. Uh, just thinking, how is it? it you yes. get some crazy positions king to e4. like this mm -hmm. where I want it to be white's move so I can play f5 check, right? Uh, but you don't no, get I, I, you, you know don't what get I mean. That. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna make a bad move for just a moment. Sorry. So I can just set up the position I want. Eh, I'm doing it very badly. King I apologize. Uh, golly, boy, did I do this badly. <laughs> No. Uh, yes, sir. How many I know, triangulations I know, I know. do we need here? Exactly. <laughs> I wanted to get to this position to say that maybe F5 check would be. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the soul trick. I, I think it's still winning, though. I just even think. this is uh, if this is still losing. Then uh, there's I, not I even so. a trick. I, I think so. Just king, king e3, king f3. Yeah. Okay. This is still winning. And so then, then I push the pawn and yeah. go all the way to f6, invade via g6. No, there, well, there's no hope. Should Max win this game, then I'm thinking there is going to be a three-way tie for first. It will oh. be. Yes, it's going to be Max, Dmitry Gurevich, and, and Larry. Larry Christensen. And Joel wow. Benjamin is going to be having a disastrous event, I have yes. to say. Exactly. Indignation. Nothing to be done. Wow. Okay. Three wins in the seniors. And what's going on in the Talia game? Have we um, have we seen oh, some... I feel uh, depressed about this one. I know. It was like she was really... Uh, She's under pressure. pressure right now. And I have to say a difficult moment right now because easily... Oh, that's not the Talia game, right? That is the Sophie Morris Suzuki uh, game in which she does seem to be breaking through. But this one right now, a big moment because oh. you can take on h5, right? Can I? Right. And, and let's then wait e4. to see whether she's going to go for it. Take it, take it, touch. <laughs> You're almost there, girl. Just... But that's not a great move. Ah. This is what the point I'm trying to make. Oh. If you do she's take on h5. e4. After e4, she Rook will G5? be suffering that endgame. Rook g5 and then king, king to e3. e3. Mm. That's not going to be an easy endgame to defend. So the right move actually right now is to go just simply rook to a1 and go back. But that's not easy. So just hold. Just hold. Just wait. All right. But this is not easy. Yeah. She will yeah. take on h5. Very natural, very human move. 
But now after F4, well, with now, three F4, minutes E4. and 20 seconds on the clock, E4. and she plays and, it yeah. immediately. E4 immediately. Yeah. Rook G5 is the only move, right? And then mm. comes King E3 with the yeah, idea of King, King F4. E3, it's, it's starting to be but quite what tricky. what else would you do? This might just be losing. Yeah. Exactly. You might be able to uh, maintain equality. So, for example, rook to g5, king to e3, and then rook back to h5. You know what I'm thinking? Okay, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Very difficult, by the rook way. Very, h1 very difficult. takes and then rook back, yeah? So, rook g5, king to e3, and rook to h5 back. Now, why is that the only move? Because I want to meet whenever you put a king on f4, so just... I, we, teleport we the king the to f4. Yeah. I want to have the move rook to h2 at that point. To we attack, to counter answer. with an attack on the pawn on f2. If I don't have that, then my position collapses. Maybe uh, you can show it on your board because all we're seeing is the live board. So all of that analysis you're saying. Uh, yeah. Yes. So this is what I'm seeing right now. Rook to h5. Right. Now you can take, take, and then king to f4. Whenever we get to this position, yep. I need to be able to play the move rook to h2. Mm -hmm. Clear. Anything else, and the rook capturing on f5 is going to be game over. Because Disaster. then also you're losing the pawn on g4. Agreed. And the rook on f5 is going to defend the pawn on f2. So you have to be ready at this point to play the move rook to h2. And even this is not very clear whether you hold or not. Nevertheless, it does seem like you're getting quite close to that. Okay. Difficult moment for these two ladies right now. Well, especially for Talia, who once again, she has been playing for a win this whole game from the beginning, from right. the opening phase, and right now she's on the back foot. Right. And with oh only boy, oh one boy. minute and 30 seconds <sighs> left, guys. Right. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a nervy moment. But we were also looking at rook g5, king e3, mm -hmm. uh, and that felt very good for Alice, too. Like, really winning chances. That's it. That's, that's, that's the moment, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again. King e3, and then you have to go back. g5, king e3, this would be losing well, king and pawn endgame. That's a losing king and pawn endgame, exactly. So yeah. instead, of, uh, instead of pawn takes pawn here, maybe just rook back to h5? Rook, rook to h1. Ooh. That gives up the f5 pawn. I don't think that's the right decision. She played rook h1? Rook to h1, just giving up the f5 pawn, just like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I, I, I don't see it. I, I don't think that's, that's the That feels like a big coming. gift. Take, take, take. Rook f6 coming. Is she thinking of h5, h4, trying to reduce all the pawns? Um, we might be at a table base very quickly. She's winning right now. She is winning. She's winning. This position is already winning. What a turnaround for Alice Lee, who's had a very like awkward a, tournament. All these boards are going whoosh, <laughs> whoosh. Spinning. And what's crazy is for Sophie, her two nearest rivals would both lose. Oh, wow. With four, with three rounds to go, she would be... Almost two points clear two of the points field. Two points clear of the field. Wow. That's a huge advantage. She can basically clinch the title tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yes, if she does win Jennifer Yu. <laughs> she plays against Jennifer Yu. If she eliminates another contender, right? and Rochelle Wu or Talia do not win, I mean, th this is over, game over. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And she's putting the finishing well, well, touches well, right well, now. Let me just bring that game into our screen. Oh, Somehow we are in a queen so pretty. There's still pawn some. ending. But not too much to discuss here. It's all about the A train express. I love that. The A train. <laughs> the A train. I mean, it's going I'm fast. Use that. Thank you. Yeah, You've been it's watching going... uh, the boys, yes, sir? Yes. <laughs> yes. You like the A train. <laughs> uh, the chess bras, uh, 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 Twitch. Uh, uh. They, the, Aman is playing in the uh, Canadian Open. Oh, good the, for I know, I know. But boy, I tell you, uh, now we, 83, and this is it. I, I'm seeing so much excitement about the Olympiad in India. So many people are is, uh, ready to go. Right. Right. I mean, how cool! And there it goes a3. Her next move is going to be like queen a1 check, followed by queen b2 check. Queen b2 check. Followed by a2 a1. The, yep. Now that's I exactly have a... it. Whoa. H4. Check, check, A2, and coronation. Guys, what, what a dominant performance. 
It's really, really S remarkable. Stellar. Just simply stellar right now. The unstoppable uh, Sophie Morris Suzuki. She's getting ready. She's dancing <laughs> in her <laughs> chair. Like what, what, what is happening? Boy. What is I happening mean, there? <laughs> right? Well, I see. Uh, could be nervousness, could be low time slash. B3 check. Yeah, okay, that, that was, that was pretty good. I mean, just the push the pawn next. Right. Queen B2 check and burn, push, push, push. Yes. A2. Yes. Let's go. A2 makes a lot of sense, followed by Queen to B2, and there's actually nothing you can now, do about Now, help me out it. here. Um, Sophie's rating, she is... Her invitation rating? I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, I, I mean, when... When I mean, Christian gonna... <laughs> was telling us about yeah. the gladiators and all the things she's done, I was looking at her successes and not really looking at her uh, invitational rating. Maybe we can get that information Let for me. you. <laughs> all right, so queen to b2 now. She definitely did not come in as the she, rating uh, favorite. Came, no, she That's came true. into the event as the seventh. Oof. Seventh seed. By rating uh, seventh seed, yes. <coughs> wow. That makes her victory all the more extraordinary. And all she has to do is push the pawn right now. I just feel like the move queen b3 was, okay, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm, oh, I, I'm, I'm splitting hairs, but. You oh, are, you are but splitting still, hairs. But still, I mean, <laughs> you know. This is resignation time yeah. for age. Right. That's fine, that's going to be one check. <laughs> and in the meantime, I'm actually going to checkmate you Can with I two queens. Can I just eat that exactly. with the pawn? Can I just take pawn takes pawn? Forget why? about it. No, no. Queen <laughs> D8, why give your opponent a Just reason play to play Just play A1, H6, and don't touch that pawn. That's right? all you have to do. Do well, not touch H7. that pawn. Oh, yeah, that's kind of cute. If king takes, then queen and shit, queen and short, checkmate. Oh, right. boy. Oops. Go king H7, followed by checkmate with two queens. Right. Very nice. And she's looking for that second queen. Is she going to take it and put it on the board? Yes. Yes, there's. Yes, there's a queen on the board. Nicely done. And we expect H6 that after h6. Check. King h7. King h7. Then it will be time to resign. She will hide the king. Right. Beautifully done. And this might be resignation yes. time. Six Good out of six. For Sophie. Wonderful She's playing job. for a Caruana tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Can she do it? So we have a hat trick. That's three in a row. Ah, so what's four in a row? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I think um, Ronaldo, uh, <laughs> the football player, soccer player, uh, had four in a game, but I don't know what they Quattro goal? I mean, to help me out here, uh, Christian. I, I, I have no idea. I, yeah, we, well, uh, uh, Caruana. I, 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 seven a in Caruana a row. Caruana is a seven in a row, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get our ace crack producer, Tom, to, uh, to, to, to uh, tell us. And we have a guest. Let's Back go to Christian. For it. We, we do indeed. We are here with Maxim Dlugi after another dominant performance with the White Pieces. Maxim, congratulations. Big victory against Joel Benjamin. And that takes you to the lead. A yeah. co lead. Co lead, yeah. How mm -hmm. does that feel? It feels good. It always, it's always tough to play Joel. I mean, we played so many games. It was it's such an enormous 40 plus years of chess uh, you know, <laughs> that uh, I, I always feel a little nervous playing him. Absolutely. Uh, Let, let's take a look at the game. Yeah, absolutely. Joel game. doesn't feel like he's in his best shape. Did you feel yeah, that so, way before the round as well? No, I, I think, uh, I think he, he didn't know the, the line, actually. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting because I didn't expect him to play the Ragozin, but, but then he didn't know the line. I actually played this quite a lot, uh, and I loved... I, 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 was trying to emulate Magnus Carlsen, who had this beautiful setup once of the bishop e2. I think black's supposed to be bishop e6 instead of queen g6. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he castled, and then uh, after like place a6, which is also, I think, the book move, he played against Aronian. He played rook fc1. 
And that was such a beautiful concept because the concept was that he's going to go bring the queen back to d1 mm -hmm. and the queen, bishop, and knight will be taking care of the king's side while the two rooks and the knight will be doing the minority attack or some attack on the queen side. And I, it, it was just lovely. He won that game, but then, you know, of course, black found ways to deal with, you know, timing g5 correctly, all this stuff. It's about, it's basically equal again, but, you know, very balanced and complicated. But uh, he didn't know this, and so he, he was trying to make this work, but this just doesn't work because, mainly because the knight actually wants to go to d3. Perhaps you also surprised him by the fact that you didn't play your usual London system. Yes, it was a big... Uh, I, I, big I, decision. A big decision. No, I actually was preparing against uh, his normal Bogo Indian, and that's where my big prep was. And, uh, yeah, and I decided not to play the London first time <laughs> with White. In this in, tournament? In two of these tournaments. Oh, wow. <laughs> I played four <laughs> London three years ago. But, okay, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I used to play chess before. You, you know, need a change. Before yeah. retiring. <laughs> so, you know, I, I do know some lines. But, um, yeah, here uh, it was interesting. I mean, there, uh, well, yeah, queen b1 and queen b2, those were the choices. But, yeah, this clearly is not great because of knight takes pawn. And there's a knight e2 check in between this oh. whole thing. And so... I, uh, my advantage will We evaporate. didn't even uh, see this one. We were actually looking oh, at really? rook b8, rook takes c6, mm -hmm. and just... Uh, I think no, there, there was actually a cool line that he could have tried, but it, it didn't work uh, for... Rook takes b7 and bishop takes yeah, f3. Yeah. No, there was, there was a cool line. He could, instead of queen d6, I think he could have tried uh, uh, a6 instead of queen d6, right? Last move. So if he... And this was a line that was important. Rook c1, a... No, no, not queen... Not, uh, rook... Okay, a so yeah, a6, a6 first. Okay. queen b7, uh -huh. rook b8, rook, uh, yeah, queen takes c7, and rook c8. The idea is he wants to play bishop c4, but now I have immediately the very nice move, queen f4, mm. <laughs> and on bishop c4, bishop e4, bishop e4 followed bishop by bishop d3, yeah. yeah, and that, that was kind of like a clincher. So... <clears throat> Yeah, when I saw that, I'm like, okay, that's... Knight, no, knight no. on E1 is doing great work. <laughs> <laughs> the two extra pawns should, should be okay. So, uh, yeah, so he played queen D6, rook C1, queen back to B1. Yeah, and, and now, yeah, now this is typical Joe, like finding amazing chances, like, uh, uh, in, in really bad positions. Um, and, 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 and just to interrupt you for a second, we did get a result in this game between Alice Lee and Talia Cervantes. Alice, Alice Lee, Lee won the game. with an wow. unexpected victory wow. against Talia Cervantes. Wow, what a game this was. Wow, well done. Let's keep going. Yeah, so the key is to protect the C4 square. And now, so now I was wondering how, uh, uh, how to play rook a3 or queen a3 at the right time. Like the rook on a8 can't move because of those moves. That's why. Uh, so I played, uh, what did I play, h3 maybe? H3. Yeah, and, and Joel immediately starts using that. I mean, it's amazing how, how with like five minutes left, he finds motives. Mm -hmm. And of course, rook g6 is the idea. So now I played a very tricky move, queen c2. Very, mm -hmm. very tricky. This was like, this is my, his punishment for being in time pressure. Because now <laughs> knight f3 works in all lines. It, of course, on queen h3, there's queen takes g6. Oh, very and, nice. And, and, uh, but the problem is how to deal with knight e5. So logically, you'll play knight c4, but after knight c4, I would just take the knight and play knight c4. e5. Yeah. And then game yeah. over. So, so he plays, yeah, and, and again, on queen h3, always queen g6. So he has to play, so he plays queen d5, but then rook c5. And again, the same tactic of queen f3, queen g6. Um, Everything just falls into place. Yeah, so, so this becomes really, really bad. But amazing how he, yeah, h4, I don't know, yeah, I was, I don't know, there's so many, I mean, obviously, instead of h4, I could have played... Uh, f4, maybe? Well, I could have played f4. Um, yeah, I could have played f4, but, okay, but no. Then I think he, there are a the, lot of ways. h4 the, doesn't spoil the advantage Yeah, h4, by okay, h4, yeah, and now, well, yeah, e, instead of e4, of course, I could have played queen d2. Uh, and and forced the trade on, but then knight c4, knight takes c4, rook c5, and then and I mean yeah, it's I, not I'm over up a yet. pawn, but it's not over. It's not know, over because yeah. I'll win the pawn with queen d4, but but you know, still room for uh, for an error. Still room, yeah. still a mm. lot of so I was trying to make it without room, but I couldn't I couldn't make it happen. Yeah, here, it, yeah, yeah, this is a bit 
Yeah, now I it think, gets uh, silly for me, I think. I don't know. Silly, but you still kept control of the game, and after yeah, that... Yeah, here G4, he, Joel, Joel, Joel uh, criticized me. Was for, shocked by this move, maybe. He <laughs> was criticizing me for playing G4. I mean, he knows how I love pawns. But, but uh, actually, I didn't play G4 to, to just to stop the eating of the H pawn. I stopped F5 this way. That was my idea. Uh, I didn't uh, want F5 to happen. So I played G4 for that reason. I also didn't think that with the rook so passive, the queen alone can do much. So I don't know. Maybe. I have I no know. idea. I, I think it still maintains yeah. the advantage. All right. Still well. maintains the advantage. I don't think you lost it at any point in All the right. game. Well, that's, that's good so. news. <laughs> and uh, and then, uh, then, of course, at the end of the day, we traded queens. Max, uh, congratulations. Big victory for you. Uh, you're in the co-lead right now, going into the last championship rounds. Three rounds to go. Yep. How do you feel about your chances? I mean, Are you thinking about the title level? I'm not. No, I'm going to play each game. You know, I have two blacks out of three, so I'm every and strong opponents. Everyone's strong here, so um, I'll just enjoy myself like I've been doing last six games. So. Go get your rest, uh, get the energy up for uh, the last leg of this tournament, and Thank we'll you. see you tomorrow. Okay. Thanks. Congratulations, uh, Max. As we have more results, uh, Dorsa. Well, Max did win, Joel Benjamin. Three-way tie for first in the seniors. Uh, help me out here. Is there a regulation if there is a three-way play? Playoffs. Nice. I don't know what they are, <laughs> but... <laughs> nice. Playoffs. And Sophie did win um, Rui Yang Yan. Yes, and uh, she's for six. perfect six. Whew. Can she make it a Kariwana? <laughs> <laughs> You like that answer. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Alice Lee came out of nowhere. She was just so dead busted. I, I mean, mean a, a complete domination. Talia not I only let say, it slip. I was she looking did... at the, the ratings because I was wondering about Sophie's rating. And uh, oh my god, Alice Lee's rating is so high. Uh, three, uh, she's 23.48. Exactly. She's the top seed. So yeah, she won. Good for her. Exactly. <laughs> and then Ellen Wang at draw. This was an interesting game because I was going back and forth on it and I did We didn't think... pay enough attention to yeah. it. We were looking at the games so between the, other... the tournament leaders actually yeah. was what had our attention. Yeah, this was another wonderful um, back and forth game. And how many games do we have left? I want to say two. Good question. Uh, two games. Gracie and Zoe, they're still hard at work. Wait. Uh, White has an exchange up, but... I... Two pawns I, for the bishop. I, I, Hazel. I remember I looked at this game maybe like 10, 20 moves ago, and it just felt like it was about to. You just felt like the king was in danger. You know, there were a lot of fun things happening, but hey. So, how do you feel about this current position? Draw. I yeah. love the fact that the bishop is patrolling this diagonal and it has an anchor square. Yes. Uh, Keeps the a6 and the fact that we've got some some passers Maybe king over h5. yeah Start king h5 him. and uh, I I don't th oh what eh, should still be all right I guess no bad 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 habits in end games you have to learn to play actively sorry but we do have our tournament leader yes with Let's Christian go for Sophie. Sophie, we are at a loss of words here in the studio. You're just playing brilliant chess and the results keep on coming. How do you feel right now? Oh, I mean, I'm doing better after like six rounds than I've ever in <laughs> this year than I've, ever, than I've ever done this tournament. Like my entire life, I think I played like three times before. And my highest score was like five out of nine <laughs> wow. previously. And now you're six out of six. Now, what are you doing in this tournament differently than your usual preparation, rest. What's different that makes you have such a high score and play such brilliant chess? Um, well, I think the first thing I do different is um, I actually brought like a physical board with me to help me prep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so um, I get like I get the I get like the actual muscle memory. Like I think it's it's working very well. <laughs> this is my first time doing it at an actual tournament, by the way. And it definitely worked very well today because you actually got a huge lead on the clock in the opening phase. You were blitzing out your moves. How did your opening preparation go and when did it finish? Uh, finished after like h4 and then my opponent played bishop f4 which like I, I looked at it in like a different position but not that position and then I was kind of on my own. 
after Bishop to F4, uh, without revealing too much, what was the main line here? Um, you don't have to answer F2, it. Queen to F2, I think. <laughs> queen yeah. to F2, okay. Yeah. And then what was the continuation here? Like H3. And then some craziness ensuing yeah. on the board. Excellent. So she played Bishop to F4. This was the surprise. How did you assess this position right now? Like, what were the nuances and, and the details that you were looking at? Um, well, I thought it was like probably equal at best for me, honestly. Yes, and knight to a2, and you play this move h3 after quite uh, some uh, thing. Now, after the move h3, what were the candidate moves that you were looking at? Um, like here, uh, I was looking at, B I was actually kind of more afraid of knight b4 for white, actually. Knight b4, mm -hmm. and this was the move that we were considering as well. Perhaps the, uh, the engine actually really liked the move knight to b4, at least giving white a slight edge. But she played the move g3, and then you responded with this vicious <laughs> sacrifice. Bishop takes e4. <laughs> Were you happy to see the move g3 and allow you to do this? Yeah, but then um, after f takes e4, I had a like panic moment, I guess, because after knight g4, I realized that queen e2 was possible, mm. um, which I didn't see in my calculations. But then, even here, like, Actually, I still have rook takes c5, queen takes a6, and rook takes c1, and I don't know, and I, don't, I have no idea what's happening. Um, so I was actually really hoping, like, why I wouldn't play queen e2. Um, but actually, like, the more I looked at it, the more I thought, this is maybe fine for me. And it was. The oh. assessment actually after rook takes c1 is 0, 0, 0. <laughs> uh, but still, white's position very difficult because of the king, right? Despite the fact that you have a lot of let's say, uh, material advantage as white, still the king is very weak. And uh, in fact, it wasn't easy at all to play for white right now. Now, let's go back to the game's position. She played the move queen to c2. And after this, it, it just felt like you're taking over. Did you know that you're better right now? Um, I suspect it was like just a position. I just didn't know if I was better or not. I just thought like this is an acceptable position. I and can, I could play it, I guess. Oh, at this point, it was just a dominant situation, and she played this uh, weird move, a4. Just uh, not necessarily trapping her own knight, but not bringing the knight into play as fast as she was supposed to. Were you surprised by her decision? I was surprised by a4. Um, I, I, I understood it, though, because, like, I'm, my plan is to play rook c2, knight before rook c3. Um, well, that's one of my possible plans. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, there's like a few things to calculate, like with knight takes a6, and I think I was playing like queen a5. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then... The knight uh, gets stranded on, yeah. on a6. Yeah, the knight's stranded. But like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I was expecting like bishop takes h3, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she did not take that pawn on h3, and well, it was too late to pick it up after that. And, uh, it felt like after that, the conversion was quite smooth on uh, your part. Sophie, uh, big victory for you, six out of six. Tomorrow you're playing for a Caruana. Do you know what that is? Oh yeah, um, I, I forgot I forgot what Caruana score was, but it was like the Singfield, 2014 Singfield Cup. 2014 yeah. Singfield <laughs> Cup, seven out of seven. So tomorrow you have a big <laughs> chance to do that. Congratulations and take a look and admire your line score. Just simply brilliant. Congratulations, uh, Sophie, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Our congratulations as well. Very, very Wonderful big game uh, tomorrow for... Yeah, playing Jennifer Yu. Playing Jennifer Yu, who lost today, as did Talia, which gives uh, Sophia a two-point lead in the girls with three games remaining can jennifer stop this runaway train or do we see a cariwana that's a very good way to ask tune it in, <laughs> tune in tomorrow uh gracie sorry you were asking what games we have left we have great we have beautiful. gracie and zoe and uh i think we gotta go to dagupati mishra because that is the one that could potentially influence the standings mm. right now, and they both are under, uh, well, 
Wonder one minute for Balaji and one minute and 40 seconds right now for Abimanyu. From, from what I saw in the last few moves, they've just been shuffling pieces like that. Right, so I expect right. the draw to come up. Perhaps there's no way to make any more progress. Now the bishop on c4 mm -hmm. has to stay there, defend the pawn on b5, and it doesn't seem like you can get to that knight on f8. Yeah, the king the and the knight are doing a tremendous job defending. Good. The rook, and the, the rook and c, has to stay on c7 to protect the c4. The king can just go back and forth. The knight can potentially go to h7 at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one just seems... But be careful. If you go to h7, don't go king g7 because then that could potentially oh, yes. allow me to go uh, f8. Even then, can I just take with the king and then pick up the bishop on c4? You can, yes, yes. And may maybe even that is, is enough. Yeah, this kind of feels like it looks scary, but I, I think it both players kind of know. I think yeah. we're just going to see a repetition right now. It doesn't exactly. seem like Balaji thinks that he can do anything anymore at this exactly. point. Actually, I thought he was close to winning earlier i'm a little like bit surprised that the a pawn is somehow missing like right oh, about yeah, here right. i was kind of thinking well don't you just play you know rook to uh f6 and trundle your pawn up the board keeping in mind that you you might have a b5 b6 so i was really surprised to see that the a pawn was missing actually and i didn't quite see how he maybe it accidentally got knocked yeah i got knocked off the board there you go rook takes a4 that's how he did it and mishra was just i have to say Italian. that f pawn looks uh, so threatening kind of but strange. we have a guest as we'll keep an eye on this game we are indeed uh alice congratulations a uh, big victory for you and a difficult one at that it felt like you were on the, the defending end for the duration of the game how did you feel and how do you feel right now after this victory yeah so i think um the opening like it kind of neither of us knew exactly how to play so i'm not sure how that went but uh, later she was kind of able to outplay me and then she got um, that queen side uh, the A and B pawns on the queen side. Um, but it wasn't so easy for her to convert, so I was able to trade off the bishops, and then uh, she missed uh, that I could do rook takes b3. And after that, um, it was kind of hard for me to play, I mean, for her to play. So right now you are feeling that you're a bit on defensive, but still having some chances for equality. And we were surprised that after this move f5, and you got your king to f1, she did not go for your h5 pawn with the king. Did you expect her to do that? Were you surprised that she didn't go for it? Yeah, I was expecting her to take on h5 and then like later play b4, where I don't think I really have um, counterplay, and then she's just up by um, a pawn. Mm -hmm. uh, but she decided to bring her king in, I guess, um, to uh, help with the queen side. But uh, then she allowed me to do bishop takes b3, and here, uh, she's forced to do a takes b3 because I think if rook takes b3 then rook a2. Um, so after a takes b3, I kind of have a blockade. Um, but That's what we thought as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah but we I, did, I thought that I was still had to defend here. <laughs> did you see this uh, moment, this idea of rook takes b3 from afar? Were you hoping that she's going to touch that rook when you gave the check? Yeah, so when I played rook a5 check, um, my hope was that she'd do rook b5, um, the, rook, the rook on b4. If she had done that rook, then I think I would have gone rook a6. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then she can't move her king, and the rooks are still kind of um, awkwardly placed. So now it just feels like you're getting close to potentially a perpetual. Pretty yeah. much a uh, repetition. And she played her move rook to be. How did you assess your chances of winning at this point? Did you feel like you have good chances to, uh, to take the full point home? Yeah, um, so after I was able to play e4, uh, I wasn't sure whether it was winning or not, but I thought that I had really good chances because uh, her clock was much lower and because I can um, press uh, and play this position without uh, any risks of losing. Absolutely, and there was, uh, well, a smooth conversion after that, uh, also accelerated by the fact that she was so low on time at this point. Alice, congratulations, a big victory for you, and we're looking forward to see you in the next few games. Thank you.
Wow, our congratulations, Alice. It's wonderful to see. Unfortunately, we've got two games left, but because of what's going on here at the St. Louis Chess Club with all of the remodeling and things, they're kicking us out. <laughs> <laughs> they're simply kicking us out. But uh, let's go to the standings with two games re remaining. Dorsa, do the honors. Well, Who's oh in God. first? Oh, well, who is not in first? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We have three legends tied for the first place. Gurevich, uh, Chris, oh my God. Christensen. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Maxim Belugi. Yes. And in the ladies section, oh, we don't have that yet. But we know. Oh, the sole read the, uh, <laughs> Two leader. points in the lead, actually, uh, is running Sophie. Running away. And the, uh, the juniors, again, have one game. We expect that game to be a draw. It's really hard to imagine any any other way, to be honest. Exactly, <laughs> but, exactly. But eh, blunders are... I'm but going to call that one. A a draw. Draw. It's going to be a draw. Yes. But we really have to give a shout-out to Christopher Yu because he's doing, he's doing so phenomenally well. Come on, yes. five and a half out of six. Only at a, overshadowed by Sophie's perfect score, <laughs> but look at that score: wow. five and a half ahead of one and a half points ahead of Andrew and Mishra. Final thoughts, Christian, as we get ready to get kicked out for all the drillers <laughs> and would be uh, well, housekeepers. Guys, <laughs> the leaders uh, in the junior sections are creating some separation, and that fantastic six out of six by Sophie Mori Suzuki is just simply incredible. I, I'm lost uh, for words uh, about that performance. And I have to say, Christopher Yu is not very far behind. Five and a half out of six against such level of competition that uh, he is meeting right now is just incredible. And the situation and uh, the leadership is heating up in the right. seniors section. Three leaders as we go on to the last three rounds. Guys, we're going to have fantastic chess and battles in all three sections. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Dorsa, good to call the action with you. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your day. We will see you all tomorrow. Good night from St. Louis. Bye. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.